What's up guys? It's yo boy on the sensei. Welcome to What if a martial arts master was reborn as Choji in Naruto? Part 2. Like, share, and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story. Link in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Chowji, POV. The silence was awkward. I don't know how to describe this situation I and Shikamaru were deadpanned. Seeing us, Naruto was not able to explain his circumstance and was panicked. No no no. It's not what it's like. You've misunderstood. This is, it's okay, Naruto. We won't judge you. I cut him mid his speech, we decided to left and forget things. We better pretend that we saw nothing. Then to be haunted by the ideas of our friend become a tall boy of an old man. We didn't see anything, you can continue your thing as I said. I tease a misunderstanding Naruto desperately shattered as he trying to convince us. We refuse to answer and quickens our steps. No, don't get us involved in your weird play. As we walked out, just then, the white-haired old man suddenly flickered in front of us. Hold it, boys. He stretched out his palm and showed his unhappy face to us. Crap, what we got ourselves involved in. We hastily jumped back and took defensive stances. We will fight back to protect our chastity. What do you want, old man? Who are you? I'm sorry, we're not into that kind of thing. Hearing us, that old man creepily smirked. A frog suddenly appeared, and that old man stood on top of it. He took a weird stance that looked like those kabuki actors often do. Haha, <laughs> thanks for asking. I am the Mount Maiboku Holy Master Hermit, also known as Toad Senin. I am Jureya-sama. As he has done did his weird performance, he crossed his arms in front of his chest and proudly declared, Yes, I am a pervert. No, a super pervert. But I'm only into women, the fairies with jiggling mountains on their chest. Okay? We're out of here. At least that was the plan. Before we're able to step out of the onsen, that old man Jureya suddenly manhandled us and threw us into the onsen. As receptive as we were, I did a somersault and landed on my feet, while Shikamaru shifted his position while he landed on a crouching position. We both landed on the water and we used our water walking technique to stand on top of it. He's strong we both looked at each other surprised by the old man Jureya's prowess. With just the prowess that he showed us, he regained a bit of our respect. He's really not one of the three legendary senin for nothing alright? Old Mano, Jureya Sama, can we spar for a bit? Everyone was a bit surprised by either my sudden change of attitude, and or me suddenly challenged the Toad Senin for a spar. You have to ask someone politely if you want to request something from him, am I right? Okay, since you already know who I am and yet you still ask for a spar, then I have no reason to refuse it. But, excuse me for a second Jureya-sama then turned around, he told Naruto to remove his clothes. As clueless as he is, Naruto just did what he was told. Raise your hand up above your head. Naruto wondered and showed a face full of questions regardless. He obediently raised his hand. Five part unseal. Jureya-sama hit Naruto on his stomach with the top of his five fingers. Alright, kid. Try to walk on the water again. Naruto grudgingly stood and walked to the edge of the onsen. He carefully tried to regulate his chakra on the sole of his feet. Lo and behold, he finally managed to do something I was able to do when I was seven years old. Truly brilliant. Now kid, let's do our spar outside. As we near the edge of the village, we went into the forest outside of the village. I and Jureya-sama stood ten feet apart, while Ino, Shikamaru, and Haruta watched from the side a bit far away. Okay, show me what you got. Jureya-sama waved his hand, beckoning me to attack first. I did just that and threw a smoke bomb onto the ground. Smoke started to fill the area and impede our vision. Quickly, I did several hand seals in succession and released my first attack. Katen, Enden. I shoot several flame bullets at Jureya-sama's direction, then immediately summoned a clone to rushed at him and engaged him in close combat. While I jumped high on the air to prepare my next attack, Jureya POV I was told by Saratobi Sensei that a kid was able to forcefully deactivate Orochimaru's cursed seal. He told me that Chaoji was his name, an heir of the Akamichi clan. All of that snake's cursed seals were not a joke. I tried to decode it in the past only to meet with failure upon failure. I can only resort to layering it with more seal to enclose that curse seal to stop its activation, yet a kid did what I was not able to do. And now the said kid was standing in front of me, and we're about to spar. I'll guide him slowly in this spar, after that I will question him about what he did with the curse seal. Okay, show me what you got. Just as I said that that kid threw a smoke bomb followed by flame bullets. Met child play. Hari Jizo. I channeled my chakra to harden my hair and shape it into spikes, in which each strand was as sharp and as hard as metallic weapons. I used my hardened hair as a shield and to discourage opponents from attacking me. Up up up. The flame bullets collided with my hair and dispersed after. Amidst the smoke, I saw a silhouette charge toward me. Hair opting to do a frontal assault. The silhouette turned bigger 
then changed into a sphere ball eye shape that rushed toward me. Right, he's an Akamichi, Doton, Nidueheki. I quickly summoned two walls out of the earth to pin him in place, which it did. Hari Jigoku. Then I followed with a barrage of hair needle to attack him. Even before I did my victory pose, that kid poofed into smoke. Clone. Then where is he never mind. As the smokes recede and I lifted my head, I saw that kid. Or, I should say, kids. I did a quick count and there were 12 of him. Those 12 him stood at 15 feet each, and not stopping at that, they all wrapped with fire. There were 12 fire giant around me ha now I remember. This is the terror of an Akamichi imagined in a battlefield a horde of giants came and wrecked your armies. That was the thing that our enemies had the honor to experience in the past. And now, it's my turn well, shit. Tenen Kaijin. Yes, yes, Wrapping Flame Giant, a nice name. But that techniques were ultimately just a clone wrapped in a fire. Katen. Taju Kayu Enden. Ha! Eat this. I summoned 12 dragon-shaped flames to attack them all at once. Forward. Did you think that's the end? Doton. Yomi Numa. Well, no. I changed the ground beneath us into muds, which we could sink into. The mud was infused with my chakra to make it sticky, thus able to ensnare them and preventing them to escape. Boom, it hit. Now, how is it, kid? Wait, kid. Crap, I'm too entranced. His technique really made me relieve the wartime. I was too engrossed in it. My eyes darting around. I was trying to spot him. Crap, crap, crap. Where is he? What's his name again? Yes, Chaoji. I, Chaoji. Are you okay? Just then, I felt a pair of hands grab my feet, and that hands dragged me into the earth, leaving only my head above the surface. Damn, I am fine. That kid appeared in front of me with a goofy grin. I used a substitution technique and appeared behind him, kicked his knee, and smacked his head. Damn you, prick. He clicked his tongue and looked annoyed. Or, kid, you're dozens of years too early if you want to defeat this great Toad Senen. But his endurance was really something else. I then flowed a part of my chakras into his body to check his condition. Stay still. Hum what? How could it be? This this is a Seninka, a body that permits the owner to garner natural energy passively. Did I just meet a heavenly genius? A hidden gem. Kid be my disciple. I refuse. Bah. How dare he? Why do you refuse? Let me tell you, you have a body that called Seninka. It's able to naturally gather the natural energy. I can make you a sage. A sage. I unconsciously shouted historically, my breath quickened from excitement. A Seninka grants you a general increase in your physical capabilities such as your strength, speed, stamina, reflexes, perception, and durability, along with improved power of your jutsus. Plus, as you garner natural energy, it helps your body to optimize its growth. In other words, you can eat all you want, exercise all you want, train all you want, and natural energy will effectively convert your food into energy, help to slowly mend your wound, and passively improve your body. It's all a boon. I laughed out of excitement after my little sermon I was sure that he will beg me to be my disciple. Now one, two, three. I lowered my gaze and saw that he silently gazed at the sky, and I saw his eyes were dead. Weird, did I say something wrong? Oi oi, they called me a freak. And if I am a freak, then what are they? Naruto was a gape, he can't believe his own eyes. That was escalated quickly, and that was a fight of another level. It was so different and exceed all of his knowledge. Fire giants. Flame dragons. Damn, it was so cool. Would I be able to do that too? Naruto's eyes sparkled, he was so entranced with their fight. They are monsters, don't compare yourself with him, you will only get depressed. Shikamaru sighed as he leaned on a tree. Beside him, Ino took two tickets from her pocket, and she nervously held it on her hand. Does he always able to do that? No, of course not. Shikamaru glanced at Naruto widely. Since we're small, he was always the one who obsessed with training. Some people said that he was a training maniac but I prefer to call him a genius of both talent and hard work. Then I will train as hard as him, no. Harder than him. I will be a Hokage. I can't be weaker than him. Naruto clenched his fists, a fire was lit in his eyes. Shikamaru just sighed, he shook his head and grumbled. Suit yourself. In a hallway inside the Hokage's office, Asuma approached Kakashi with a smile on his face. Yo, Kakashi. I finally found you. Can I ask you for a favor? It's like this in front of me is a large forest area in Konohagaka that is associated with the Senja clan. It contains a giant tree that is surrounded by a pond and a playground. It's called the Senja Park. The place was famous for, well, a dating place. What am I doing here? Well, it's like this yesterday. We're on our way home after my spa with Jijiya Sama. Once suddenly Ino asked if I want to go with her to the Senju Park. Well, as I was in a devastating mood because of Jijiya Sama, I readily agreed with the notion that the three of us went there to refresh our stress mind from the Chunin exam. And here I was, wearing my baggy clothes, uncombed hair, and with Ino holding her handbag. As we walked side by side seeing people's having the time of their life. As for us. We awkwardly walked in silence, although we're often talked, but never once were in this kind of situation. So, um, your dress looks nice. Um, thanks. You also look nice too silence, what should I do? What should I say? This is why it's hard to go for a date with your best friend. Bah. Oh, for the love of spaghetti. Just go with it. Oh, that's a nice flower. Where? Yes. 
I pointed at a flower at the roadside, we crouched and take a good look at it. Those flowers had six petals surmounted by a cup or trumpet-shaped crown. Those flowers are generally white or yellow. White, some orange and pink variants in it. These are daffodils, they grow in spring. But even during winter, it keeps its beauty and never losing to the cold. A strong flower that patiently waits for the hope of spring. Eno smiled sweetly as she gently caressed the flowers. They are truly beautiful, aren't they? Yeah, beautiful. Um, hey Eno, I was wondering. Do you had an extra heart? I tilted my head to the side. Here we go, finger cross. Of course not. Why are you asking me that? Eno was confused, she was a bit baffled at my question. Here we go, ah, uh, why am I so nervous? Because mine was just stolen when I see your smile, Eno giggled as she lifted her gaze toward me. Then she realized the meaning behind my words, and she blushed. Heck yeah, a bit corny, but one point for me. Hey anyway, let's go to other places. How about we go shopping? And how about getting you a new haircut? Eno still blushed, while I smiled foolishly. My face went beet red. Done. Okay, let's go shopping. Hey, anything you want to do, let's use this shopping trip to ease this awkwardness. Your hand looks heavy. Here, let me hold it for you. I kept a straight face as I held her hand. Score. Damn, I think I'm getting better at this. Eno suggested that I should get a new haircut first before we went shopping. So to the barbershop off we go. Or not. Eno took us to the hair salon, and she requested for a specific hairstylist to do my hair. It seems that she's a regular here after we're out of the hair salon. I looked at the mirror. Damn, I really look nice. Although still a bit long, my hair styled a bit to the side, with my bangs slightly covered my right eye without hindering my eyesight. Two, we went to do a shopping spree after that, she bought us two identical necklaces that looked like a crystallized water drop. Mine was brown, matched with my hair color, and Eno's was bright yellow. I had to admit that she really was fashionable, maybe the one with the most knowledge of fashion. Or it's just my ego do the talking. I won't argue that she's indeed looked pretty with that necklace on though, but not that she's not pretty without it. It's just I can't explain it. Anyway, she's pretty. That's what matters after we were done shopping. Most of the awkwardness was gone. It was mostly because she became more talkative than ever when we're shopping. And she gave me way too much fashion advice for me to remember. The time flies by. It's already afternoon. And the sun was almost set. We had our dinner in a sushi stall nearby in the commercial area. Then we're on our way home. Of course, like a good gentleman I was. I escorted her back home first. Maybe being fat is not the only way in life on our way back, we had a great conversation about today. We usually also had many conversations, but today just felt different. It's really nice when someone looking at me the way I look at a chocolate cake full of longing and desire, so... What are you doing here, Sandy boy? What the heck today almost become a perfect day. And he just needs to suddenly pop up and confront me on our way home. I don't know what was his purpose for approaching me like this. But I know that he already in my bad book. I want to know what is a friend really is. My eye switched whether he's stopping people's in the middle of the street only for asking that kind of question. Why don't you asking for a direction instead? It'll be easier for me to answer. Anyway, deep breath, let's get this over with. Okay, calm down. Me. I closed my eyes and looked at Eno and imagined Shikamaru. A small smile showed on my lips. A friend is someone who understands your past, believes in your future, and accepts you just the way you are. Gara stared at me. It's starting to get a bit creepy. I think that the one that fits those criteria only mother. Sans moved from Gara's gourd and gently stroking his cheek. Thank you mother, everyone just so mean to me. And the way they looked at me were only filled with either indifference or fear. Gara turned his body and walked away. His face showed contentment. He's weird. Eno unconsciously held my hand again, which I softly firmed my grasp on her hand. Yup, he is a weirdo. We continued our walk and finally arrived at her home. She gave me a kiss on my cheek before we parted. That one kiss that made me grin for the rest of the night, and made me even more thankful for being able to live up to this point. Then I went home and slept with my hand still touching my cheek. Our youth finally, we're able to meet. Hey, who is that? I looked at my surrounding. Where is this? Worry not, my friend. You're inside your own mindscape or your subconscious if you prefer to call it. As for who I am, you can call me Murasaki. I am what you called Zero Tail. You do remember that you killed a man named Shino, don't you? I swept my vision still looking for this one that called itself Murasaki. Yes, I do remember. What about it? Where is it? Or rather what is it? What is Zero Tail? Don't bother searching for me. I'm but a weak consciousness. My body is still sealed. When you killed that Shino, a sliver of my energy seeped into you together with bits of my consciousness. That Murasaki then told me his story. Yes, he is a he. He told me about the reason he came to be everything and the reason he called me friend. Apparently, he had access to my memory, although only to a limited extent. He felt that he understand my past. He accepted me for who I am. And with that, he trusts my potential. And he believed my future was destined for great things. Apparently, he was also a part of the reason that my physique was mutated as he called it. He unconsciously trying to gather natural energy to heal himself, which made my body that had an abnormal yang affinity to mutate into a physique that able to garner minuscule natural energy by itself. 
A thing that amazed him was when he absorbed the duck chakra and negative energy. My body naturally turned them into natural energy, and for the harmful part, my body turned them into cholesterol which burned when the natural energy flowed in me. He took a term from my memory and called it a life hack. Honestly, I was baffled. From his story, if that was true, that the dark chakra was an energy that corrupt him, a being that almost achieved a sagehood, and I converted into cholesterol and burn it just like that, the heck wasn't that too overpowered. The night finally passed. It seems that last night wasn't just a mere dream. Murasaki, the Zero Tales, was really appeared inside my mindscape. His whole explanation about natural energy and some stuff was another thing for me to look into. For now, I've got to be prepared for today. This morning I and my teammates were supposed to be present at the waterfall site in the Nara Forest. I don't know what for though. Maybe some training or another lecture. Who knows? I woke up at 4 o'clock before the sun showed itself to the land. I did some light stretching before I ate my breakfast and cleaned myself inside my makeshift jacuzzi in my courtyard. At half past 6 I met with Shikamaru then we met Eno halfway. We slowly took our time together and grabbed some bites along the way. What? Who said I can only have my breakfast once? Don't judge people based on their amount of breakfast, okay? All in all, we arrived at the promised place 10 minutes before 8. And yeah, at 8 o'clock peoples magically appears out of nowhere. Either that or they just that good at hiding their presence. But, I was wondering about some oddities this time. First, there were not only Asuma Sensei was the Jounin here. But there were also Kakashi-san, Gai-san, and Kurunai-san along with several of their Genin students. Later I also spotted Churiku-san seated on a rock below the waterfall. Okay kiddos, we're gonna do a joint training here. My team, Team Kakashi minus Naruto, Team Kurunai minus Hanata, and Team Guy with only Tenten. In the morning we'll gonna do some Tajutsu training, the nature transformation at noon, and your custom individual training after that. And yes fellas, we're gonna do this until the day before the Chunin exam. So, prepare yourself. Asuma Sensei took it upon himself to explain things for us. It seems that the Tajutsu training will be led by Gai-san. While the nature transformation split per their elemental affinity, wind with Asuma Sensei, lightning and fire with Kakashi-san, water and earth with Kurunai-san. As for the individual custom training, they were made either to sharpening our greatest weapon, and or turning our weakness into our advantage. Yukijutsu with either with Asuma Sensei or Kakashi-san, Jinjutsu and Chakra Control with Kurunai-san, more Tajutsu with Gai-san, and surprise, Churiku-san was here to train those who interested in the barrier technique, and the Senzoku no Sai, or the gift of the Hermit's Chakra. Sometime after our lunch break Churiku-san demonstrate his barrier technique, and an example to use the gift of Hermit, which was to my surprise, has similar properties with the natural energy. Or were they the same thing with different names? Hum. Further test was needed to prove that. I followed his instructions to try harness the energy in the surrounding. A.K.A. A natural energy to gain enlightenment to ascend A.K.A. A reach the sage mode. I prefer the term from Jujiya Sama than Chiriku's term. It's too religious for me to understand. And the feeling of harnessing pure natural energy consciously. Like drinking an iced cola on the hot summer day. It's refreshing, to say the least. Let me explain our training a little. Firstly our Tajutsu training. It seems that Gaisen was another person with an admirable passion to walk his own path. The Tajutsu path. He's someone that passed the border of a maniac. He's beyond that. And he hammered us with the body training basic with his own standard. That's a new level challenge for me. He tunes our training according to our physical ability. With no surprise that he gave me some weight for me to wear. Yeah. I know, this is amazing. The others. Well, their feet turned soft like noodles. After a short break we continued with our nature transformation. With me being the only one able to do the nature transformation to a satisfactory level, and Sasuke to a beginner level in the fire nature transformation. The rest. It seems that they were drilled in their clan's technique of some sort, so they're not good enough yet in the nature transformation. Regardless, Kakashi-san always had a fresh idea for me to improve myself. For example, the idea of improving my own armor technique with a technique called Isla, No Yoroi Rock Armor, Doton, Koka Jutsu Earth Release, Hardening Technique, and Doton, Domo Earth Release, Earth Spear. He's really not called the Thousand Copy Ninja Kakashi for nothing, his arsenal was really full of wonder. It's too bad that he can't utilize them all to their peak performance. And lastly, we trained to hone our own specialty. I got a double class with Gaisan and Churiki-san. I love the time I spent with Gaisan. It made me realize what I was originally good at and left behind because of my own fascination with new things. And he also made me realize that there's always sky above the sky. Why? Well, different than the morning session with him taught us the basics, in this session, he taught us his technique and gave us battle experience, and it's wicked. Awesome. He wiped the floor with us, although yes, I was one of the best fighters in my past life, Gaisan perfectly blend the use of Chakra and his Tajutsu. And to be frank, I dare to bet that with the many wars going on here, his battle experience surpasses mine to a degree. Don't compare the war between the two worlds, okay? One with the hot weapon, and one with the cold weapon. It's clear that which world had more push to hone its Tajutsu more. My past world was more tilted to develop its weaponry than fighting technique. With Chiriku-san, 
I and Shino were the only ones interested in the hermit gift. I because of my curiosity toward its similarities with the natural energy, and Shino because of his bug reaction when they were exposed to the hermit gift chakra. And as for his barrier technique Eno along with Sakura attempted to learn it from him. Though along the way Eno and Sakura decided to more focus on the medical jutsu. A few times we visited Lee in the hospital, while Hanata-chan was already recovered the day after the preliminary ended, and was grounded inside her claim compound. It's made me worried that Lee hasn't shown any sign of getting better, though his smile was as radiant as always. With that, a full month passed. Two days before the third exam, those who still had to participate in it were told to rest. And rest I shall, submerged in my favorite pizza. Yes, I made pizza and made it known in a restaurant. And it's Pia Plus' favorite one on the menu. It was because everything goes right with pizza except the pineapple topping. All hell pizza. All that left was cola. I miss cola. Meanwhile, on the way between Land of Fire and Land of Wind, laid a corpse of a man wearing a white robe with a wing kanji written on top of it. He had auburn hair, dark eyes, and was usually depicted with a very stern look on his face. Around the corpse, gold dust could be seen scattered and shone gently under the sun. On the corpse's chest, a sword could be seen impaled deep into it. Beside it, a pale man with a black long hair was stood with an eerie smile plastered on his face. Coo coo coo, with this the plan will go smoothly. Orochimaru stretched his hand out and grabbed the corpse's face. Soon the face of the corpse was no more. Shushigan no Jutsu. As the wind blows, Orochimaru's figure was turned into a dot on the horizon as he walks his path into the land of fire. A month passed and the date of the third exam finally arrived. At the dawn before the third phase of the exam begin, the road in Kanoha was already packed. In one corner of the road, Chaoji could be seen walking through the crowd with a box of chicken porridge on his hand. He took a long way around the crowd and went to the hospital to talk to his friend, Lee, to cheer him up before the exam. Get well soon Lee, we'll spar soon after, and I bet you're gonna be impressed with the new trick I learned. They exchanged more talks and pleasantries before Choji took his leave and flickered through the roof straight toward the arena. Along the way, he saw Hanata and Naruto in the training ground. He let them be because it's rare for Hanata to muster up her courage to talk to her crush. Minutes after, he arrived at the arena and stood along with all seven other remaining participants. On a risen platform, the third Hokage of Kanoha was seated along with the Kazakiage of the Suna. Saratobi Hirazan, the third Hokage stood with his hand clasped on his back, and announced the start of the third exam, with a loud exclamation. I thank everyone for coming to the Chunin selection exam that holds in Kanoha. We will now start the main tournament matches between the eight remaining participants who made it through the preliminaries. Please stay, and watch until the end. With that, the first match of the tournament was announced. The referee stepped into the arena, and two participants were left on it. Go, Eno. One of the participants, a lean young man with brownish hair, cheered from the spectator area. He waved his hand as he focused on one of the fighter on the arena. Yamanaka Eno vs Ichiha Sasuke no POV. Today is the day. I stood amongst the other participants, and silently shivered when staring at them. Focus, Eno. Focus. You have already trained hard. Even if you don't believe in yourself, then believe in your training. The Hokage declared that the tournament round to start, and I was the first. Just why oh why and finally the others left the arena and the participants that left on the arena were only I and Sasuke. I saw his menacing gaze, and couldn't help but doubt myself once again. Can I do it? I used to like Sasuke not only because of his handsome appearance and the mysterious air he exuded, but he was a genius and a hard-working boy. He was strong and always getting stronger. Go, Eno. I glanced at the crowd and spotted Chaoji among them. He grinned foolishly as he cheered for me. His loud shout attracted many attention from the crowd, but he didn't seem to care. Seeing him so spirited, I can't help but let out a chuckle. He's one goofy idiot, all right. But he's my goofy idiot while wait, what am I thinking? Focus, Eno. Focus. Unconsciously, I was comparing Chaji and Sasuke, and I now sure that which one was more important to me. I, I will talk to him after this for now. I have to give my all to be able to stand proudly beside him. Yes, I won't be a burden. Fight, Eno. Fight. For your future. Third POV. The first match, Yamanaka Eno of the Konoha fighting against the Chiha Sasuke of the Konoha. The rules are the same as before. Now get into position, get ready fight. Eno stood a few feet from Sasuke. They stared at each other in the eyes. As the referee gave them the signal to start, Eno threw four smoke bombs, while Sasuke immediately formed a hand seal and launched a fireball toward her. The fight mostly happened inside the smoke screen, and frequently flashes of jutsus could be seen from it. Minutes passed before the smokes recede, and the arena was clear for everyone to see. On one side, Eno looked bruised, and blood could be seen on the corner of her mouth. Her nose also slightly bent in an unnatural way, clearly broken from a hit. You coward. Wait till I shove a ginger in your ass. The same young man that cheered for Eno shouted hatefully at Sasuke as fire ignited in his eyes, literally. Meanwhile, several exchanges later, Eno was seen half kneeled on the arena, behind her. Sasuke's left hand was seen dangled, his elbow joint was dislocated, and it slightly swollen. His eyes were red with two magatamas were seen slowly spun in his eyes, his right hand was holding a shuriken that he held close to Eno's neck. I give up? Eno reluctantly gave up as she was bitterly clear that although she trained hard, she saw with her own eyes. 
that this heir of the Ichiha had trained like he tried to kill himself. She tried her best, and this was the best that she could muster in a competition. She can't use her clan's technique as Sasuke was too swift for her, as her technique needed a second at least for her to concentrate fully. And Sasuke with his Shuringen, did not let her got that second to unleash her technique, he threw a Shuriken, Kunai, and Jutsu to harass her. To put it simply, he was a bad matchup for her. The winner is Ichiha Sasuke. As Sasuke declared as the winner, both of the participants were taken by the medic to be healed. As the reparation team restores the arena to its former state, the replay of the fight played on a big screen on the side of the arena. The audiences were full of admiration for both Ino and Sasuke, as their fight was so intense and filled with some cool looking technique. Especially Sasuke's flashy fire technique which earned many gasps from the spectators, coupled with Ino's pretty appearance. The replay was attracted the attention of many eyes amongst the crowd. The tournament went on, with the next match was announced by the referee, and the participants stepped into the arena. Gara vs Akamichi Chaji. The eyes of the spectators were again glued on the screen, as the name of the next fighters were shown on it. The second match, Gara of the Suna vs Akamichi Chaji of the Kanoha. Get in position, get ready fight. How's the preparation? Everything is already set. When that sand monster starts his rampage is when we start our operation. Two masked figures nodded at each other, before silently blending into the crowd of spectators. Chaji POV Ino's fight was intense, although it's a shame that she lost, her performance was still exceptional. Though after I win this fight, I'll kick that emo's ass for breaking her nose. Ah, dang it, my jaw still hurt from cursing out loud at him during the match. Not long after Eno's fight, I was called into the arena. I took a deep breath as I prepared myself, looking at the bustling crowd. Somehow made me feel nostalgic. I felt like I was back in the Iron Fist tournament, except this tournament was not as bloodthirsty as it was. I stepped into the arena and showed a tiger hand seal to show respect for my opponent, then took a low stance to prepare an assault. Have you find someone to call a friend? I asked him as I remembered his question a month ago. Gaara nodded at me and said with a stoic expression, Yes, mother is my only friend. I wondered what he really meant by that but I just shrugged it off as I focused on the current task at hand. Win. Fight. As the referee declared the start of the fight, I flickered in front of my opponent. My fist was swung before it stopped an inch in front of Gara's face with a sand shield. Retracting my fist, I followed with a roundhouse kick onto his stomach. Surprised with my sudden burst of speed, Gara launched himself backward as his sand absorbed most of the impact. Sabaku no Yari. Gara countered with an attack of his own. He waved his hand as soon as my kick connected with his sand shield and formed a sand spike below me that intent to impale me down. Not stopped at that as I jumped to dodge the spike, a sand twister formed and bellowed on the field. Katen, Keen Senpu. I formed several hand seals and released an attack of my own. A fire then erupts around my body in a spiraling manner, which is then launched towards Gara like a tornado. The arena turned chaotic as sands and fires danced on it with great fervor. My sight was slightly affected, but soon I stopped to focus on it as I felt the ground below me turn soft as it turned into sands and tried to trap me in it. Nope, I won't fell for this kind of trick. As soon as I felt it, I flickered my way out of it and jumped high up in the air. I somersaulting and launched a kick downward onto Gara as the momentum carried me down. I enlarged myself into a 15 feet giant. The fire and sand hell was dispersed before a cloud of dust risen after my foot crashed into the arena and stomped Gara down. Boom from his fight with Lee. I speculated that his sand also had a limit. So, if his sand can cope with his speed, what about my weight? Through the screen on the side of the arena, I saw a dome made from sand stood solidly shielding him from my attack. I shrank myself into my normal size, then keep a few feet distance from him. I stared at the sand dome. A few spider crack was formed from my attack, but was quickly mended. Hum, not enough. Huh? A ball of sand that looked like an eyeball floated near the dome. I threw a kunai to it as I guess that was a sort of reconnaissance technique. I took a glance at the audience and saw that they were Jura Gabe, including the Hokage himself. I chuckled internally at that. All of the spectators fell into stupor as the fight escalated so quickly. The examiners were all stood guard and already erected an extra barrier to protect the audiences. The referee also went to the side as the fight was too intense and dangerous. Crack you were here, the dome cracked and revealed Gara and his maddened face, his eyes reddened, and he grinned like a psycho. Ha 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 ha. Mother wants your blood. Oh no did I hit his head too hard. He ha 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 ha. Mother wants your blood. I saw his eyes redden, his smile turned crazier, and his laugh became more hysterical. This guy his head must be beaten really hard. Did I caused it? The arena grounds were all slowly turned into sand. They were all raised and condensed into one giant monstrous arm with four claws that reached into me trying to grab me with it. Sooner no Kaolin. I jumped away to dodge the claws, and leaped high to stay away from the sand on the ground. Another monstrous arm reached to me. They're not fast but their sheer size made them a bit hard to dodge. I didn't turn into a giant as well, because it'll make me an easy target for him to reach, with this limited space turned into a giant without sufficing firepower, was not a wise thing to do. Die, then the mother will be happy. The attack intensifies, with me occasionally launched a few attacks of my own, that still wasn't able to penetrate his defense. 
I tried a fire technique and earth technique into jutsu, but none bore fruit yet. Do I have to use it? Really? Well, it's not like it was my trump card or anything, but die, 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 die. Gara continued to turn the arena into a sand field, and constructed more of those monstrous arms, his whole body also now covered with a weird shaped sand construct. It was shaped like a raccoon. Was that a kind of armor? Die for mother. Be a sacrifice for her. Anyway, seeing the situation getting worse. I can't be dilly-dallying anymore. It seems that my plan to take it easy wasn't the best route to take, so I took a deep breath, and I circulated my chakra internally, and flowed it into my brain's left hemisphere to remove my mental inhibitions. Came in, open. Whoosh my head felt clearer. I feel that as if the surrounding moved in a slower motion. What surprised me was different from before. I saw a reddish-brown chakra converged in a spiral manner with Gara as the center. Well, that's a new one that's a Biju chakra, huh? This voice Murasaki. Spot on, kid. I was surprised, but still... My body keeps moving to dodge all of Gara's attack. I was wondered, how could Murasaki do that? And as if he was reading my mind, his voice answered. I'm able to talk to you because you removed the mental barrier in your brain, and a massive amount of chakra was presented here for me to stay awake. I brace okay so, he is a Jinchuriki. Yes and from the look of it, he's in a berserk state. You're smart oh, goddess Fortuna, the goddess of Forun why do you hate me? Don't panic, kid. If you're able to lock him in place and touch him, I can help you to knock the Biju inside him again. I brace, I was dumbstruck, a speck of light was seen at the end of the tunnel. There's hope, so all I have to do is lock him in place and touch him. Yes, for a few seconds or minutes without further ado. I took another deep breath, and tried to move the few amounts of natural energy inside me, and circulated it in the first two of eight gates path. Yes, that's my current limit with natural energy. I still lack control. Kaiman, open. My body rejuvenated, the scratch on my skins were all mended. In this state my physical strength increased with the added effect of re-energizing the body, thus enabling me to rapidly recover from exhaustion. Not only that, in this state, I also was able to do a thing that I always thought nearly impossible for me to do. Katen, Kintai, I was able to internalize my nature transformation with a few techniques like the Earth Spear technique and the others as a reference. I was able to create this technique. Originally, this technique should burn my body from the inside out. But with the natural energy circulated rapidly while I was in this state, the harmful effect was out of the picture as long as I didn't force it past my limit. Sparks of fire lit in my eyes, and a bluish red flame rose from the tip of all of my 20 fingers and toes. My outer clothes and shoes were all burned and turned into ashes, leaving only my inner armor as my top and especially made leather pants as my bottom. The sand that nearing me were all turned into vitrified sand. Sand that has been heated to a high enough temperature as to partly or fully melt the silicon dark side or quartz, that is the main ingredient of common sand. And each step I made on the ground now was leaving a burning imprint on it. With this flame body stayed on, I bent my knees and zoomed in in front of the Rakim Gara. His response was just a swung of his arm to repel me which I easily evaded. Slow all of his minute movement did not escape my observation. He was so slow in my eyes, he might as well cook me a chestnut with his sand. One my fist was blasting through his layers of sand armor easily destroying them with sufficient effort. Another fist followed with enough speed to hit the unprotected area, before the sand armor mended itself to normal. Creak a sound of fractured ribs was heard. ESK, like music in my ears. Anyway, he's a Jinchuriki, and a wound of this caliber won't stop him. Heck, he'll recover in no time. With that thought, I spun my waist and gave him an upper kick that blasted him into the air. I immediately leaped high following him. In the air, I gave him another kick that once again blasted him downwards. Even before he touched the ground, flames already condensed in my fist with a precise swing. I hit him with another attack. Katen. Hi Ken. A pillar of flames descended in the middle of the arena. The flame pillar mightily stood for a moment as it showed its glory, and might to all of the spectators, which they still agape and lost in the moment. Although it took a lot of words to describe all of that happened in less than a minute since Murasaki talked to me. After that, I reached the down Gara with disbelief clearly seen on his face. I grabbed his face and looked him straight in his eyes. Nothing personal, but it will be bad for both of us. If you go berserk here thus with the help of Murasaki, a colossal amount of malevolent chakra absorbed into me, rejuvenating me with more than my already lost chakra. I close my eyes as I savor it. It tastes a bit spicy, juicy, and kind of tastes like taco sudados but the chakra tastes were a bit sandy for my taste. Wait, I can taste chakra now. After Murasaki confirmed that the Bijuru already lost its control, I glanced at Gara, his eyes open, as he looked like he was lost in high ashfuck. Disgusting. His face reddened with eyes upturned, his mouth opened, and his tongue out, coupled with drools out of his mouth. An ahagao. Two by instant, my leg kicked him hard, and he was blasted and embedded in the sidewall of the arena. 
Yes, with that Ahagal face still on. The winner is Akimichi Chaoji. After the referee declared me as the winner, the audiences were all exploded in cheers. Their shouts and claps were all deafening, more than the soccer supporter when their favorite player scores a goal. I went to the bathroom and asked Murasaki about what happened, and why Gara had that kind of reaction, but not with Sasuke. Luckily, he still has the energy to stay awake and answered me. Kid, the one that you called Sasuke before, probably just had the dormant natural energy sealed inside him, so it's just like draining his blood. While the earlier Jinchuriki had his Biju Chakra flowed inside him and already mixed with his body. I braced so it's like that, I took the malevolent chakra that went berserk from every crook and cranny of Gara's body. But I didn't know why he was feeling. Ugh, ecstatic. What do you feel when you first tasted the natural energy inside you? It was kinda refreshing first. That kid earlier might be tormented for his whole life by the malevolent chakra wreaking havoc inside him. Second, the chakra of the Bidru was way denser than natural energy. So add ticklish sensations into your refreshing feels, and multiply them by a few dozen times. That what he felt. I brace shit I hope he didn't turn into a gay then something clicked inside me. Hey, there are female Jinchuriki in the Kumogaka and Takigika. No. Third POV. For the love of the father, what did I just see? Saratobi Hirazan, the third Hokage, was seen falling into a daze. Before the loud cheers of the audiences woke him up. Oh no, I must act quickly before Danzo snatch him. He then clapped his hand to summon an Anbu and gave him an instruction. Hirazan took a quick glance at the Kazakij and smiled in a mysterious way. Quite a shocking performance, isn't it? Meanwhile, the peoples from the Hidden Sand Village and Hidden Sound Village were in a loss about what to do. Their original plan was to attack during the panic and confusion caused by Shukaku. But Gara, the host of the said Biju, was quickly defeated even before he was able to transform into his Biju mode. Thus made their plan thrown out of the window. Currently, Gara was knocked unconscious, and there was not any sign of Shukaku taking over. And they decided to postpone the plan and waiting for the instruction from their Kazakij. Unknown to them, their operation was already known to Kanoha, and it was their own people that leaked their information. A month ago, Kakashi was asked by Asuma to help him to train his Genin student, and proposed a joint training. Seeing that he did not have any reason to refuse, Kakashi accepted. Besides, Asuma promised to give him his book collection, which almost got confiscated by Kuronai. That offer immediately made Kakashi accepted Asuma's joint training request and to give Shikamaru a few tips about sword art. So, Kakashi was on his way to buy a few wooden swords for training, after he took care of the spy that almost took Sasuke away, and reported to the Hokage. Now, the sun was already set, and the moon was shyly hiding behind the curtain of clouds. On his way, he saw his fellow Jown and Jekko Heiate was fighting against a man wearing a sound village forehead protector and a black mask on his face. Seeing that Heiate was beaten badly with a large wound on his shoulder, Kakashi rushed immediately. He lifted his forehead protector, and his left Sharingan was there for the world to see. Kakashi silently used the chakra scalpel on his right hand, as he flickered behind the black masked man, and stabbed into his back. To Kakashi's surprise, his attack passed right through his opponent, and the said man was turned into smokes, literally, only to be reformed above him, with his kunai out to stab him. With a swift hand sign, Kakashi substituted himself with a nearby rock as he took Heiade away, and this time, he used a flashy technique to attract the attention of the others, as he had the advantage of home ground. Kakashi gathers lightning onto his left hand, and the high concentration of electricity produces a sound reminiscent of many birds chirping. And with the electricity gathered in his hand, the dark surrounding was lit. Shidori. With a bright flash of light, Kakashi zoomed into the Black Masked Man, which like before turned into smokes and flew to the side. But to the Black Masked Man's surprise, when he was already reformed his body to counter-attack, on Kakashi's right hand was an almost transparent sphere, with the size barely bigger than his palm. Kakashi spun his waist and slammed the chakra sphere into the Black Masked Man's body. Rasengan. When that sphere hit him, he was blasted away and he was forced to flee because of his injury. Unfortunately for him, Kakashi's reinforcement already arrived. As Jiraiya was coincidentally was in the nearby brothel to do his researches, he was the first to rush to help. Thus, with a swift combination, they gained on the Black Mask Man, and knocked him unconscious to interrogate him later. But when they took his Black Mask, Kakashi was surprised to see a familiar face under it, or at least one with too many similarities. Yamato. They decided to immediately go into the Hokage directly, after they gave Hei to the next arrived Anbu to be taken into hospital. Jiraiya went in first, then he gave a sign to his sensei, that immediately understood that he wanted a private conversation, he took the black masked man with him, and told Kakashi to fetch the head clan of the Yamanaka, Inuchi, under Hokage's name. Jiraiya sealed the room with more Fuenjutsu, and knocked out cold all of the root operatives that he spotted. Why are you letting them spy on you? Hiruzen side then smoked a little. I let them know what I want them to know. I don't want to act step by step for this issue. Danzo must be dealt in one swift motion, and now is not the right time yet. Thus after Inochi arrived, they started to read the Black Masked Man's mind. From that, they were able to know the whole plot about the Sand's betrayal, along with the Sound and the Clouds funding. But besides the first two, the Clouds' involvement was not able to be proven. From the Black Masked Man's mind, they also found out that his name was Tenzo, and he came from a reclusive clan named Aburi. Hiruzen glanced at Kakashi, 
which Kakashi replied with a nod of confirmation. The Yuri clan was a clan that massacred by Orochimaru a few years back, with only a single survivor that Kakashi and Yamato saved. After knowing the full story, Jiraiya's mind spun rapidly and came into one scheme, acting ignorant and be prepared for the attack. Because they need to adhere to the peace treaty, least the cloud found an excuse to start another war, and to gain the moral high ground to gain more benefit. But, for that to happen, their movement and involvement need to be unknown to all, except for their selected few. Thus, once again through the night, Kakashi was tasked to fetch the head of all noble clans, except for the Achiha, plus the head of Nara clan and Aburi Yukimi, the sister of their captive to coax Tenzo for his corporation. The chain of events made by the flap of the butterfly wings continued, but it's yet to be known what kind of storm it would make. Thus, back in the present time, inside the exam site where myriad of peoples gathered to watch the Chunin exam, Kakashi was seen leaned on the side in the spectator area, while covertly eyeing Baki, one of the Sans Jaunin, with a shuriken twirled on his thumb. The Hyuga was responsible for watching the north side of the village, while the south was tasked to be watched by the Aburum. The Akamichi was stationed on the outer wall as the assault team together with the Nara, and the Yamanaka was to maintain the village barrier. In one of the spectator areas, Tenzo's eyes were cold as he gazed at Orochimaru. He already knew the truth about his clan's massacre with more than one proof and he was thankful to both Kakashi and Jamato to save his sister. And now he demands revenge, as the saying goes, blood calls to blood. The gunpowder already thicks in the air, waiting for the fuse to be lit before it exploded. Today, blood was destined to pour like rain. Today will be marked as the day of tragedy. Orochimaru, POV. This this is what I have always been looking for. The strong physique, the firm muscle, the natural affinity toward natural energy, the amazing chakra pool. I have to get it. No matter what, he's going to be my next vessel. Unconsciously, a strange grin stretched on my mouth. Fortunately, I was posed as the Kazakij, and my real expression was covered by my skin mask. The failure of Gara to incite chaos was thrown to the back of my mind. The priority has changed. This Akamichi boy going to be the top in my priority. As for the attack, all that left was to lit the fuse. Then take him amidst the chaos. It seems that I need to push the trigger myself third POV. The tournament continued as the arena was fixed by the various Chunin examiner. Nara Shikamaru vs Aburin Shino seeing the names shown on the screen, the referee called the fighters to get themselves ready on the arena. After both of the fighters gave respect to each other, the referee once again declared the start of the match. Third match, Nara Shikamaru of the Konoha vs Aburin Shino of Konoha. Get into position, get ready fight. Just as the referee shouted at the beginning of the match, both Shikamaru and Shino flickered from their position. Shikamaru was out with his new katana on his left, and Shino was with his tanto on his right. They clashed in the middle of the arena, exactly in front of the referee. The surprised referee was immediately once again went to the side to avoid disturbing the flow of the match while clicking his tongue. Both of the fighter, Shikamaru and Shino, were already familiar with each other as they often trained and spared together. They too took Kakashi's and Asuma's lesson about Bukajutsu. Not stopping at that, they too were the genius of their clan that already surpassed their predecessor's record at their age. Each of their idle hand was forming a hand seal to invoke their clan technique. Cage Surudaha. One mushy cane no jutsu. Two shadows converged behind Shino and threatening him to pierce his body clean into two. But before that could happen, Kakechus flew rapidly from Shino's body and fly in a dome shape at high speed thus repelling Shikamaru's attack, and force him to step back. As he jumped to avoid the Kakechus, Shikamaru threw another attack at Shino, one that he knew that Shino hated it. Katen, Katen, Goka Masitsu. Three Shikamaru needed chakras inside his lungs, then converted them into flames, and then expelled it from his mouth in a massive stream of intense flames. That set the area ablaze, engulfing Shino, along with his Kakechus in a veritable sea of flames. Beads of sweats formed on his forehead, Shikamaru's chakra pool was not large, but he had an exceptional control. Still, this technique took a great toll on him. As Shikamaru scrutinized the place where Shino stood before, suddenly a silhouette zoomed in rapidly toward him. He tried to dodge, but a hand suddenly grabbed his ankle from below. Who his solar plexus was hit followed by another impact on his cheek, Shino was seen with his fists stretched and his skin darkened. His long coat and glasses were no more, as he did not have the luxury to completely avoid the whole of Shikamaru's attack. Doten, Domu 4 most of his kakechus were burnt, and he was pretty annoyed at Shikamaru. Fortunately, he took Kakashi's advice pretty seriously. His just-in-case sermon was what made him learn Buki Jutsu and a couple of life-saving techniques, including this one, to save his ass when his insects were rendered useless. Shikamaru who was hit by Shino, albeit surprised since he didn't know Shino had this technique, he still smiled in spite of his bruised body. Silently, his hand rose and he clenched his fist. Got you, thrifty tongue. Kijezukami no Jutsu. Five the shadows under Shino suddenly materialized and latched onto all of Shino's limbs then became as hard as steel. With a smirk still hung on his lips, Shikamaru dash with his katana was already in motion to slash diagonally from the bottom left to the upper right. Clang the sound of steel meets a hard surface rang, as Shikamaru's katana only able to slash Shino's clothes and inner armor, leaving his body unscathed. Unknown to Shikamaru, while using the Earth Spear technique, the user had his defensive increasing to become as hard as a diamond, if utilized at its peak. 
Oh, Shy apostrophe Shikamaru readily crossed his hand in front of his chest to shield him from the incoming punch from Shino, who, just as Shikamaru anticipated, Shino's fist was slammed into him. Luckily, he was able to jump back to avert the damage. He clicked his tongue to express his annoyance, his eyes squinted, as he threw any notion of fair and square out of the window. Screw it. I'll just do it my own way. He threw a flashbang to the ground and dissipated his flame technique earlier. And when the vision was back to normal, he was nowhere to be found. Shino was wary from his observation in one month. Between the trio, Chaoji was the most direct in combat. Ino was the most annoying with her technique messing with the mind. And Shikamaru? Got you. Was. The slyest and stealthiest. With his extremely cold and ruthless mindset, extremely smart brain, and his tendency to take the most efficient route in everything mission related. Just as Shino heard Shikamaru's whisper from his back, it was already too late. Thin lines of shadow strings were already put him in place with no room of movement with each of the lines was as sharp as razor and as hard as steel. Sure, his skin now was able to protect him with its toughness, but he can't free himself and can only wait for his demise. Shikamaru moved to his front his slow and relaxed step, summoned a block of rock to act as his chair, and seated in front of him with his jaw leaned on his palm. You know, nothing personal from me. It's just the order to do a flashy battle kinder not suited to my style. So Shikamaru left his word hanging as he shrugged his shoulder. Let's just wait, which one lasts longer? Your chakra or my patience? Shino's back was drenched with cold sweat. His earth spear technique was just learned less than a month ago, and it took a substantial amount of chakra to maintain. And from the look of it, Shikamaru's technique did not require chakra to maintain, only to perform at the beginning. Take your time. I'm in no hurry. I call this technique the Kumo no Nintai, or the spider's patience for a reason. Shikamaru then took a book that he borrowed from Kakashi, and read it with a stoic expression, while ignoring the stare of the crowds. On the spectator area, Asuma smiled wryly. He already thought of this possibility. With Shikamaru's lazy character, there's little chance that he'll act like a performer. Almost all of the techniques that he learned he took it to another level for the maximum efficiency, and for him to integrate them into his style. From all of the genins that participated in the joint training, Chaoji and Shikamaru were the only ones that refused to learn more technique to his arsenal, and instead, they opted to create their own techniques that suited them. He felt Koronai nudged him as she told him that the Hokage stared at him from his seat. Asuma turned his head and showed his old man a cheeky smile. Yes, he's my genin student. Do you want him, old man? He, what can you offer? Asuma knew that with his genin's performance, his old man bound to ask for them, probably for them to join the Anbu. He had nothing against that, but for Chaoji, he had another plan prepared for him. And he already asked the Akamichi clan's opinion for it. But still, that air of Aburum really went beyond my expectation. He then looked at his student relaxed attitude on the arena, and took a deep breath. Just what kind of monsters did I create? Orochimaru, POV. The winner is Nara Shikamaru of the Kanoha. Boring. He's strong, yes. But nothing special, just strong. Nothing, no special Kekai Genkai, no special physique, and no special bloodline. Just your old lame Nara techniques with some twist. I did not come here for that. After the match over, I gave a small box to my adjutant, the disguised Kabuto with several instructions. My hand already itchy to have that Akamichi boy as my own, Kukukukuku meanwhile. Saratobi Hiruzen's eyes were already shown with incomprehensible light. His old face was not able to hide his joy. In Shikamaru's style and execution, he saw his father's style in it. His father, Saratobi Sasuke was a legendary shinobi. A respected and feared one by all of his enemies and allies. In the warring era his presence alone was able to make the war postponed to avoid his involvement. Not many know the fact that the first Hokage, Senju Hashirama and Achiha Madara, were once respectfully called his father as their mentor. Tears threatened to fall from his eyes as he held it with a smile that both expressed his joy and resolute decision. Danzo, my old friend, if you're trying to take this one from me, then I hope you're able to forgive me in the afterlife after I'm done with you in that instance. Out of excitement, the Saratobi Hiruzen took a leap of faith. Gone was the kind and amiable Hokage as he reminded by his father's teaching, and replaced by the prime Hiruzen that once shook the world, and made himself known as the Professor, and the second coming god of Shinobi after Hashirama. The tournament continued after Shino surrendered and Shikamaru declared as the winner. The arena was once again fixed. Meanwhile, in the spectator area, many of the audiences were still giddy, and talked about the previous fights. As most of the spectators were just non-Shinobi nobles and merchants, all they knew was Kanoha was stronger than before, with their genins able to do what they did in the arena. They did not entirely wrong, but no one was bored enough to correct their assumption, as their goal was to showcase their strength to attract more clients. Hayaga Niji vs Yuzumaki Naruto after the arena was once again fixed, the fighters of the next match were called to the arena. Hayaga Niji of the Kanoha vs Yuzumaki Naruto of the Kanoha, get ready fight. The fight went on mostly like it was in the canon, except it was clear that Naruto's movement was more smooth, and his assaults were more intense than it should, it's clear to everyone that knew him before that Naruto became a bit stronger than before. As Naruto and Niji's fight was ongoing, Chaoji was on his way to the medical ward with Shikamaru to see Ino. When they were on their way, 
They came across a man with a bandage covering half of his face, and the mark of Sanagaka on his forehead protector. That bandaged man was also on his way to another ward, probably visiting someone in there. Minutes passed and they arrived at the medical ward. There they saw Eno and two peoples that they did not expect to see. Beside Eno's bed was Lee in his wheelchair together with Sakura behind him. They were having a nice conversation until they noticed the duo's arrival. Ho ho what we have here Lee. Good job my friend to get a girlfriend. Chaji smiled teasingly at Lee and Sakura, while Shikamaru just letting out a chuckle. Hearing Chaji's teasing, Lee was grinned and gave him his trademark smile and a thumbs up. I tease not like that. As for Sakura, like a banshee she was, screamed out of shame in the medical ward. Looks like the Emesuke already lost his two top fangirls. Shikamaru whistled as he teased everyone in the room. Lee and Sakura snapped their neck to see Eno. Sakura then grabbed Eno's hand excitedly asked. Who? Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. With a star in her eyes, Sakura flailed Eno's arms, totally forgetting that Eno still had her wound. Fortunately, she was already healed and just need a rest for a while. Seeing Eno blushing at her question, Sakura's brain immediately processed as she readily pointed her finger at Chaoji. It's you, isn't it? Are you Eno's boyfriend? Chaoji confidently nodded. He crossed his arms in front of his chest. Well, she's the moon and I'm the sun. We're made for each other. Feeling proud with his words, Chaoji sagely nodded. But, aren't sun and moon will never get together. One shone in the day, and one in the night. But, it's true that they complimented each other. Shikamaru mocked Chaoji for his words. Are you saying that you and Eno will not get together? Ah, a hand suddenly flashed and smacked Shikamaru's head. Don't make me look stupid, okay? Well, you got my point. She's mine, yes. Then Chaoji and Shikamaru exchanged more banter, while the rest just laughed them off. Chaoji then took two scrolls from his pocket and handed them to Shikamaru and Eno. Huh, what is this? Chaoji looked at them in wonder, has the training make you silly? That's your birthday present. Yesterday was the birthday of Shikamaru's, and today is Eno's. They are storage scroll, your gifts are inside. Take a look. Happy birthday. They then remembered it's September 23rd. At the other ward, the man that crossed with Chaoji and Shikamaru before was seen in front of Sasuke. He knocked the ambus that stood guard in that ward and revealed his true face as Kabuto to Sasuke and offered him power to avenge his brother. He then tweaked with his curse seal to let Sasuke taste the power he mentioned before. Though after that he put Sasuke unconscious, Orochimaru needed him to come of his own accord. Though he did not care about Sasuke as much as before. Then Kabuto put his disguise once again before he went to Gara's ward. In there, he saw Gara watching birds through the window. Kabuto then asked him about Shukaku, then put him sleep, then invoked Shukaku to take over. Sans started to gather slowly in Gara's ward and converged in his body. Seeing that the plan worked just fine, Kabuto went back to report to his leader, Orochimaru. Before that though, he handed the snake summoning scroll to two operatives from Sanagika and instruct them to invoke the scroll near the Kanoha's south gate and the north gate respectively. Each of the operatives then immediately went to their respective assigned place. Unknown to them, the scroll not only would summon a snake, but will also reverse summon them to the said snake's place, Ryuchi Cave, as an offering. How's the preparation guy? The schools, hospital, and various vital places already protected. The civilians' evacuation already underway, though it went slowly because of a few issues. Kakashi was giving various commands to a few Jounin. They were the ones that Kakashi chose to be the core of the operation to intercept the joint attack of the Sand and Sound. Unlike his usual self, Guy was serious and his face was stoic. To others though, this was the usual guy they knew when he was in an important mission. Asuma. All the Chunin already told to guard the perimeter of the arena. Some squad already tasked to be the line to connect the outer and inner defending forces. The trap already set, were waiting for the rats to show their ugly heads. Asuma twirled his trench knife on his right hand, he was a bit too eager to intercept their attackers, and show them who is the boss. Yamato. All marked. Yamato cracked his fists, he too was eager to beat their enemies. On top of their objective, Yamato got a personal beef with Orochimaru, as he was the reason for him went through various tortures in the past. Yes, it was stated that Root was the one held accountable, but he was not stupid enough to not know the dealings between Orochimaru and Danzo. And if he knew that, the Ho could surely know what he knows. Good, everything already went as planned. All back to the position, our targets are the Kazakija's retainers. As Tenzo was Orochimaru's left hand, he knew almost all of his deed in the past year and his plans in this attack, including him replacing the Kazakuj. Thus, Kanoha was not in the dark about that. In Eno's medical ward, after they finished their talking, the trio Eno Shikacho plus Lee and Sakura decided to watch the fight and cheer for Naruto. On their way through, they bumped with a man from Sunagaka. And by the twist of luck, three almost identical scrolls fell. Eno then hastily bent and took one of the scrolls and hugged it. She loves Chaoji's gift, and she's gonna treasure it. Eno then opened the scroll to check whether it's really her or not. She did not want it to be swapped with Shikamaru's. Or worse, with this unknown man. The winner is Yuzumaki Naruto. After the grueling dozens of minutes, Naruto finally won after Niji admitted his defeat. Yes, Naruto won most mostly because of his talk no jutsu. 
Although he lost, Niji smiled as Naruto did change the way he saw the world, and inspired him to forge his own fate. The referee then declared the first phase of the tournament has already ended, and there will be half an hour rest, before the second phase will begin. Together with the few dispersed crowd, some of the sand and sound operatives were blended to go to their own assigned place, before their operation started. Though, before they were able to get far, an explosion occurred, surprising everyone, Kanova and their attackers alike. On the northwestern of the arena, the place where the medical wards built was mostly devastated, and on it was a large brown snake with hundreds of feet long. Following the appearance of the snake with the screams of panic from the villager, followed by a deafening beastly roar that echoed through the village. Yi Yi Nuo Chao Ji POV Happy Birthday. I can't help but sigh, they even forget their own birthday. Well, I won't blame them though. I saw they were trained with all of their heart and soul. In the past month, they really gave their all especially every time the Jounans praised my achievement. Shikamaru opened the storage scroll I gave him, and took a book wrapped with papers from it. On the paper was written open when you're alone. This book is the limited edition of your favorite stuff, with Jijia sama sign that even Kakashi-san did not have. And you know that he's a maniac. Shikamaru readily put it back inside the scroll, and gave me a fist bump to express his gratitude. The others did not even bother to ask him, as their attention was pulled with the thing on Ino's hand. It was a trans transparent sphere crystal with three small stalks of flowers inside it. This this is a rainbow ranunculus seeing her dazed. I let out a chuckle, and the others hearing me chuckling, gave a weird stare towards me. Are you sure that's the rainbow ranunculus? Sakura gasped, she was in disbelief. Rainbow ranunculus was a very rare and very expensive flower that only grows in a special environment in the land of flower country. But that's expensive like very expensive for you. Yes, it's expensive for me. I need to use my allowance for three months in advance. But that's it. Sakura and Lee gave me even more weird stares. What? I'm rich. Sakura gulped. She knew the price of this flower. It's a half million ryo per stalk. That's to say, one and a half millions for the three of them. It means that Chaoji's monthly allowance was at least a half million at least. Meanwhile, Ino stared lovingly at the flowers. These colorful, swirly flowers, also called buttercups, they symbolize luxury, charm, attraction, and radiance. Give a bouquet of these beauties and you'll be letting the recipient know. I am dazzled by your charms. One, I love it. Thank you Chaji Ino tilted her head and smiled in happiness. Worth it totally worth it to allocate half a month of the profit from pizza sales to buy these. What? Yes, I lied to them. I did not receive any allowance again ever since I gave the clan the pizza recipe. Since the 20% of the profit from it were mine, that's an internal matter of the clan. So I just made up some excuse. But of course, Ino and Shikamaru knew that since I brag about it in the past to them. Okay, enough with this. Let's go to the arena. That foxy blondie should be fighting against that Niji. I clapped and invite everyone to watch the match together. Remembering Niji's circumstance, I saw Ino side as she recalled her attempt to help him. Meanwhile, inside Gara's ward, a special unit of Anbu appeared a few minutes after Kabuto tweaked with Gara. They immediately took him to the abandoned district on the outer area of the Kanoa, where all the citizens already evacuated from there. This way, they can let him rampage all he wants while helping them demolish all of the abandoned buildings there. After that, Kanova would be able to righteously claim more benefits from the Suna, since a part of their village was destroyed by their Jinchuriki. Your Jinchuriki destroyed a part of our village, so pay up. What? You don't want to pay. Then we'll take some of your territories. That's the gist of the Hokage's plan, of course. There were more to it but too complicated to be listed. Inside Sasuke's ward, Sasuke was knocked unconscious by Kabuto. No long after, a man wearing Ambi uniform appeared and approached while stepping on the unconscious body of the Ambi guard. That was attacked by Kabuto. Unfortunately for him, before he was able to reach for Sasuke, his Tenketsu's point was hit. Thus, it made him unable to do anything including using his chakra. From his back, Hayugako was seen after he took his mask off, he was among the attack by Kabuto, and play dead when attacked by him. The rat already has taken care of Operation Possum finished. Ko then saw the downed Anbu hit several of their own Tenketsu points. Not long after, they were back on their feet. Although it's true that they were attacked by Kabuto, they hit their own Tenketsu points to show that they're dead, while still able to move at a moment notice. Not hesitating in the slightest, Ko took the mask of the one he called a rat and pulled his tongue out. The root is expected. Thank you for standing guard for us, Yamato-san. The wall then flashed before a few seals appeared and disappeared on the side wall of the ward from there, Yamato surfaced, then nodded. He checked on Sasuke and applied more seal on his cursed seal. Please take him to the bunker along with the other and stand guard there. Yes, Chaoji, POV. We're on our way onto the arena, everyone was chatting happily along the way. Ino was so happy and she's skipping instead of walking normally, and Sakura looked at her enviously. Shikamaru was also apparently was giddy to read the book that I gave him, and he kept held the scroll in his hand as he gazed at it from time to time. Though I knew that what Jujiya sama write, cannot even be compared to the illustrious art in my past life. Pukaya. Just then, a man rushed toward our direction. From his attire and the sign he wore, it was clear that he was from Sunagaka. In her carelessness, Ino skipped in front of him, and they both clashed, which made Shikamaru who was behind her also fell on his butt. On the far side of the room, I saw a man wearing an Anbu uniform ran toward here. 
which I concluded maybe he chased this person that bumped with us. As I want to stall him, I saw Eno took a scroll from the floor and opened it. And to everyone's surprise, Eno suddenly vanished just like that leaving a poof of smokes behind. Then a humongous snake appeared a few feet apart from us. The others were startled apart from me, which still trying to sense Eno's whereabout. Eno, where are you? Snap out of it Chowji, she was probably reverse summoned to where this snake was before. This sudden event threw me into disarray, usually. I tried to rein and control my emotion, as I knew that the teenager phase was the most unstable phase in life. But, for now I let the anger take over me, and fueled by my worry, I let it out. I let it take over me as I stared hatefully at the snake, and the man from Suna. The first two gates of the eight gates were released, and I entered the flame body state once again. In my fit of rage, I concentrated all of the flames at one point on my right index finger. I double jumped towards the head of the giant snake. Boom it swayed its head back and forth as it destroyed the ward's building, and tried to break free. The snake has quickly concentrated its attention toward one heat source that it felt threatening me. I stabbed my finger into space between its eyes on its head and my finger pierced through its thick skin and reached its skull which instantly burnt. I let the flame loose inside the snake and burn it from inside out. A little more than a second later, the snake giant figure was turned into ashes and blew by the wind as the building already destroyed. Shikamaru which was protecting Sakura and Lee was agape, but he quickly snapped back into his sense. Shikamaru, do you know how we can take Eno back? Shikamaru quickly processed all the information he had and frowned. I'm not sure, but maybe we can ask someone with a snake contract and go there ourselves. As far as I know, Orochimaru of the Senen and Anko-san were the only ones known to have the snake contract. Anko-san is it? Okay, as I was thinking, I decided to just look for Anko-san. It was impossible to ask Orochimaru to cooperate, so she's the only silver lining I had. Shikamaru, you take Sakura and Lee to the safety. From this we knew that something bound to happen. Maybe an invasion of some sort. Thus I leave without looking back, leaving my three friends and an unassuming Amber behind. Boom many sand and sound operatives were scattered and attacked Kanoha Shinobi. Chaos ensued as neither side was ready as it was out of their script. On the far side of the Kanoha, Shukaku was let loose as it started to take over Gara's body. Yamato along with several Ambu squads was stood guard on the scene to control the Bidru when needed. In the arena, several Sound and San Genins and Chunins were immediately neutralized by the Ambu and taken as captive. The Jounins also quickly gained by the several Kanoha Ambu, which quickly devolved into a disadvantage situation for the Sound and Sand. Four peoples from the spectator area appeared surrounding the platform where the Hokage and the Kazakage seated. They were forming several hand seals before they erected the Shishi Engine, or the Four Violet Flames Formation. A barrier made from purple flames erected surrounding the place, and those four forming, extend secondary barriers around themselves, making breaking out even more difficult, and protecting themselves at the same time. Four Jounins of Kanofa immediately rushed to attack the four peoples that erected the barrier, cracking it on the process. Isuma, Kakashi, Guy and Hei launched their own attack to destroy the barrier. Inside the barrier, Hiruzen was confronted by Orochimaru, which already took his disguise off. Hiruzen, which already in his battle gear was seen holding a black-colored staff on his hand, was staring menacingly at his former student. Now, what is your ploy this time, kid? If you can't explain it properly, then don't expect me to hold my fist back again like the before. Kukuku, you're still in a high spirit I see. Sensei, the two stared at each other in silence. No one moving as the battle went on in their surrounding. Chidori, Hien, Dynamiku Akashin, Haiken, Sukikij. Various attacks were launched and finally, the outer barrier was cracked not long after it was erected. The four peoples from the sound that erected the barrier were known as the Sound Four and they quickly manipulated the Violet Flame Barrier to cover them from the incoming attack. The barrage of attacks was continued, alas, the attacks were all swallowed by the violet flames, then vanishes just like that. From the far horizon, a bright dot quickly zoomed in into the arena where the main battle proceeds. After it was close enough, peoples could tell that it was one of the Chunin exam's participant, Chaji. He was looking for Anko to ask for a way to look for Eno, and it's crystal clear that he was in no mood for any delay. So, seeing a barrier erected inside the arena and covered a sizable portion of it, Chaji thought of the possibility of Anko was inside it. With a quick flash, he rushed toward it, and just like that he passed the barrier, surprising friends and foes alike. How? That's the Violet Flame. Impossible. Chuoji who was ignorant of what the Violet Flame formation was just continued to look for Anko while thinking in his head. You call that a flame. Meanwhile, Anko was assigned in the outer wall of the village as one of the guards that keep the Yamanaka that maintains the village barrier safe. Where is Anko-san? Where is she? I didn't know where to start, also didn't know that she could truly be a help. But, I didn't want to let that sliver of hope gone. I recalled that she's one of the examiners, maybe she's in the arena. Without thinking much further I sped up my step and flashed into the arena. I saw a purple colored barrier covering a large part of the arena, and as I rushed towards it, the barrier shattered by the Jounins. With my mind in less than a calm state, I brashly rushed straight in. That could also be attributed to the fact that I did not feel any threat from the second layer of the barrier. In fact, I felt that I can rush into it without any problem. And I did. How? 
that's the violet flame. Impossible. I heard some shout, which I choose to ignore. But I can't help but think that they're delusional. That's a flame. I can't feel any heat at all from it. Maybe it's just a strong illusion. Inside the barrier. I saw the third Hokage, Saratobi Hiruzen and an unknown man. He was pale and looked like a corpse with an androgynous appearance. He wore the Kezekiya Jatai coupled with its hat. The unknown man set his gaze toward me, and a creepy grin showed from his mouth, disgusting. Hokage Sama frowned seeing me and flickered toward me. He stood in front of me with his back facing me. What are you doing here, kid? Maybe, I should tell him. He's called the professor for a reason after all. Thus, I briefly told him about Eno's incident earlier, and a frown got deeper on his face. Emma, okay, okay, you owe me one, kid. I was surprised seeing the staff on the Hokage's hand changed its shape and talked. It no, he turned into a monkey with a tall and menacing physique. Emma was his name, his body, and his tail were covered by white fur, which protruded from his sleeves and pants. Emma has long unkempt white hair that reached his back and long sideburns and a goatee. He wore a black suit with mesh armor underneath, over which he wears a sleeveless kimono shirt with white fur trimmings, and markings reminiscent of tiger stripes on it, which is held closed by a red sash. Thank you. I felt a bit relieved when Enma, the Monkey King, himself rushed into the place where Eno was reverse summoned, which he assumed was the Ryuchi Cave, and she promised to bring her into safety. I just hope that he can make it with Eno's safety at least a bit assured. I was able to think calmly again, albeit with a massive worry weigh my chest. With a poof of smoke, Enma disappeared. And the place where he stood now was another monkey with a similar appearance as his. Though the newcomer looked younger, leaner, and more playful, compared to the menacing Enma. Yo, Wuhai here without further ado. Here is informed a hand seal, and Wuhai turned into a golden-colored staff. I'll replace my pa for a while, rest assured I'm more useful than he is Kukuku. Nice just nice. My attention was taken by the unknown man chuckle. I assume that he's an enemy from the way Hakajasama shows some hostility and vigilance against him. You're more interesting than I thought. That man scrutinized me from head to toe. I felt that I was naked from the way he stared at me, which was why I instinctively moved behind Hokage-sama. My body shivered from his stare alone, he's dangerous. In more than one way, Orochimaru, stop with your creepy stare. Hokage-sama reprimanded him with a stern gaze. Yeah, go for it. Hokage-sama, show this all it, he's Orochimaru, that Orochimaru wait wait wait, his Kezuki Jatai the snake earlier I quickly connect the dots and came to a conclusion, this bastard was attacking Konoha, he worked together with the Suna, and he's the snake Senen, unconsciously, I coldly stared at him and let out a massive bloodlust, which surprised the Hokage slightly, but he just showed a small smile on his wrinkled face toward me, Kukuku, don't don't stare me like that, I might not be able to hold myself, the smile on Orochimaru's face bloomed and turned into a weird grin, his body shivered, and his hand flashed as he formed several hand seals. Ah, Kuchius. Edo Tensei. Three coffins summoned by Orochimaru. One just then, as the three coffins were surfaced from the ground, a white blur flashed and struck at Orochimaru's back. Unfortunately, that snake bastard got a good reflex, and able to avoid the attack. But the white blur did not stop and continued to strike at the coffins, destroying them in the process. A big shadow suddenly loomed over us, and a giant-sized toad landed on the arena. The white blur flashed onto the top of the giant toad and stood on top of it. He took a weird pose and shouted, The great Jureya is here. Worry not, Sensei. The snake will be chopped clean. Orochimaru looked pissed. He jumped, then bite his thumb and slammed his hand to the ground. Kuchius no Jutsu. Manda. Bam, another giant-sized snake slithered and immediately struck the toad as they apparently recognized each other. Seeing a snake, my eyes twitched. Something inside me triggered. My worry resurfaced once more. What if Emma did not make it? What if I stopped thinking and looked at the true perpetrator of this shitty things, Orochimaru and his snakes? So what if you're huge? Did you proud of that? No, the true meaning of colossal Cherubika no Jutsu my body enlarged literally turned into a mountain-sized giant with around 150 feet height. Though I can't maintain this state for long, half a minute at best, I will use that half fucking minute to make a snake skewer. And to do that, I need fire, and that's what I have. The snake Manda comma and the toad Gamabunta comma, along with everyone in Kanoha, was surprised with the sudden appearance of the colossal Chaoji on the arena. For comparison, the toad was stood at the height of my chest. Though the snake was still larger overall. On the side, although surprised, Orochimaru and Jureya had their fight uninterrupted, while the Hokage once in a while helped Jureya to attack Orochimaru. He seems vigilant and did not want Orochimaru to slip away and pull more tricks on them. Meanwhile, Gamabunta was constricted by Manda. I hurriedly rushed and hugged Manda's head, twisted it, and did a German suplex to it. Yes, the toad was still constricted. Yes, I didn't care. On Manda's neck, a burnt ring could be seen after I hugged him, not letting it rest. I jumped into the air while still holding its neck. Maybe from the pain or by the sudden pull into the air, the toad was released from the snake's constrict. Along the way, I keep concentrating on the flames on my arms. And at my highest jumping point, I twisted my waist through the snake into the ground, and released the same attack that I did to Gura at the tournament. Katen. Hi Ken. This time, though, I poured all of my chakras, and only leaving the little bit for me to stay awake and still dandy to be not a fish on a chop block. The whole arena was engulfed in a flame pillar, 
The evening sky turned bright with the golden crimson light. I did not think about the consequences. All I wanted now was to vent all of my anger, frustration, helplessness, worries, and grief in this one attack. And heck, it was very satisfying. I know I will get more than if all words warning after this. But for now, just let the world burn. The Hokage Sama. I was sure that he'll manage. He's the Hokage. No. Jiraiya Sama. Nah. Except for Kakashi-san and Shikamaru. No one will care. I know perhaps I will regret this later. But I'll just let the future me handle it. So burn burn. Burn baby burn. Hua ha 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 ha. Shikamaru POV. I currently was above the bunker after getting Sakura and Lee inside. I was slashing the Shinobis from Suna and Sound left and right. I worried about both of my best friends, and I hate the fact that I was helpless and can't help them. Just die you maggot. I pierced them, slit their throat, and cut them all with both of the shadows and my swords. The battle raged on. That's when I saw something. A huge toad appeared above the arena, and could be seen even from where I was. Followed after that was a snake way bigger than the toad. Seeing a snake made me grip my teeth. I hope they're all safe. I need more strength, but... How? Recalling Kakashi-san, it's clear that took a foreign body part and transplanted inside me was not the best choice. I need to know more methods. Two, the sky was started to darken. The sun was about to set. But suddenly I saw my buddy, Chaji, turned into a giant. I clenched my fist. I can't let him walk alone in front of us. In the sky, Chaji took the giant snake with him and slammed it to the ground. Then the evening sky was lit. It was like the sun was back to show its radiance. But everyone with any eyes could tell that it was not the sun. It was the flame pillar that reached the sky, as if it was connected to heaven itself. Fuck, he finally lost it here isn't POV what the fucking fuck Eno POV. It's been minutes since I suddenly arrived here I don't know why. But it's definitely because of this scroll. I've tried to activate the scroll again, but to no avail. I started to get nervous, where's this anyway? It's so dark it's so damp I spread my chakra to check the surroundings. But it seems that it's an empty cave, and the only way out I could find was up above. Should I try to escape? But, what if Chaoji and Shikamaru arrived here? Should I wait? For how long? This cave environment gave me creeps I I should try to fend for myself. I gulp my saliva, stay strong, me, fight. I focus my chakra on the sole of my feet and try to walk on the rocky wall of the cave. One small step out of this situation, a big step to wet my mental state. Here we go. I stepped on the wall. The first step was okay. Here we go the second still fine. This gave me a confidence boost. What did I fear? I did this more than I could count already. Thus, I scaled the wall nearing the end of the rocky cave on my 500th step. No, I counted my step, not because I was scared or something. I also didn't know that 857 seconds already passed since the last time I saw my Chaji okay. I miss him already. Where's this anyway? Chaji, I want to pinch your cheek. Hick tears welled up in my eyes. I can't help it. Okay, don't judge me. Humans always fear the unknown more than anything. Dummy, I'll let you snuggle on my chest if you arrived here now. I finally arrived at the end of the rocky cave, and finally finally, I've arrived at the bigger cave outside of it. It's so frustrating mommy. I want to go home where should I head to? I took a deep sigh and tried to calm myself. No, Eno you shouldn't panic. You're a strong girl. Fight Eno. Hiss I froze hearing a loud hiss. I jumped back into the cave I came before and went all the way into the bottom in my panic. What was that? Oh no, it sounds like snake. Was that a snake? I climbed the wall once again and spread my chakra into the bigger cave, my face paled. There's a big life signature not far from the cave where I was at, and it's getting closer here so wow, what should I do? Think what would Chaoji do in this situation, right? He would rush out and beat the snake senselessly. No use. I did not have his strength nor his prowess. What about Shikamaru? He will assess the situation, pull the worst possibility, and be prepared for it. What the worst could happen at this time? The snake found me and a fight occur when I was in an unstable mental state. What can I do to fight it better? A course. The first is to clear my mind and stay alert until the danger passed. Then how can I fight it with a better chance to win? Know its strength and weakness. What was its strength? Hum. Wasn't snakes detected their prey through their forked tongues, which they flick in different directions to smell their surroundings. That lets them know when danger or food is nearby. Thank god I remembered most of Shikamaru's mumbling when we're at the library then how can I avoid its detection? Of course with I raising my scent and lowered my body temperature. Suotan. Suhachi one I summoned a stream of water and filled the bottom of the small cave with water until it reached my ankle. Suotan. Sugika I used a technique that allowed me to fuse with water even in water as shallow as a puddle. Though it made me unable to move at all as long as I maintain it. The positive thing about this technique was this technique need a minuscule amount of chakra to maintain. This was a trick I learned from Kakashi-san. He said that this technique is often used by Shinobi from Kurigika. With this, it shouldn't be able to track me through my body heat and scent. Then the next issue. What was its weakness? The only thing I knew about snake weakness was the fact that they're cold-blooded creatures, and had less resistance against cold temperature. I did not have anything to use that information, what should I do? The silver lining was only the possibility of me being discovered by the snake reduced significantly with me temporarily fused with the water. The question was, 
Should I wait for help to arrive? Or should I fight for my own survival? Whoop 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 huh? What was that? Chow G P O V pant pant pant. That felt fucking amazing I felt that my accumulated stress melted away just like that. Maybe I should do that more often. T as I landed on the ground, a hand smacked the back of my head. What the fuck are why Hokage Sama was furious when he saw me landed on the ground. Then he realized where he was, he immediately coughed and once again reprimanded me. What do you think you're doing? Do you want to kill me and your allies too? He looked at me sternly. I saw the rage in his eyes. Then oops. Hearing my reply, his whole face twitched. I recalled something and turned my head to look for that snake's remains. Then a hand vice grabbed my head. What do you mean with just oops, Brad? Stop looking away. That snake already to summon along with the toad. And Orochimaru was escaped, thanks to your flashy attack. And now he was chased by Jiraiya. I just clicked my tongue because I don't know how to respond. Should I say fortunately or unfortunately that they survived? Still, that snake escaped. Huh? Hokage-sama, is there any news from Enma-sama? With his vice still gripped my head tightly, he answered. No, don't think that you'll be able to escape from my punishment, smelly brat. Crap here is in POV. For a moment I saw my wife Bawako waving at me from the afterlife. Damn that Akamichi brat really can't differentiate between friends and foes. But, the fact that his prowess was terrifying was true. Still, that cannot void his sloppy mistake. If this was a war and he was deployed, our casualties number would be high from his friendly fire alone. I'll do something about it later, for now. Let's wrap this up. Everything so far already went according to the plan with some change. All that left was the Achibi. Without letting the brat go, I flickered towards where the Achibi was. In slightly more than two minutes, I arrived where the Biju rampaged inside a barrier that was erected by Yamato's squad. What surprised me was, there's Naruto inside. He's cloaked with the Kaiubi's red chakra with two tails on his back. I looked at Yamato with a tinge of annoyance in my gaze, and I saw he gulped before turned his gaze down. Naruto are you there? I shouted to gain their attention. This could be bad if Naruto lost his sanity and lost in Kaiubi's influence. Unfortunately, Naruto ignored my calls and still madly scratched a chibi's body. This would hurt a little for him, fortunately, it's only the second tail. Wuhai, take that blonde brat here. Consider it done, old guy Wuhai, and the son was readily transformed back into his original form. He jumped and summoned three shadow clones of himself, of which all three were floated on the air in a triangle position, as he rushed toward Naruto. Wuhai then grabbed Naruto's tails which should be intangible, and spun him before he threw him into the air between his three clones. Nothing personal boy, Fuenjutsu. Sampo Fuen, three a triangle prism barrier with a green jade color, was trapping Naruto inside it. Then then Wuhai and his clones moved it outside the barriers Yamato erected, as he maintained the prison barrier. After he has done with the task I gave him, I threw the Akamichi brat out of the barrier too. Then I summoned four shadow clones, and then I along with my clones, surrounded the Ichibi, Goten, Durendan no Jutsu. For each of my clones released grand bullets made from different elements which were water, air, earth, thunder, and I released a grand flame bullets onto it. Kaboom, Goten, Durendan no Jutsu. Five elements launched from five directions and clashed in the center. Each element reacted with another and created a big explosion that blasted the surrounding into smithereens. In the center of the explosion, laid a huge sand monster with a shape that resembles a raccoon. When the explosion recedes and the dust settled, the said monster's body was crumbled, and revealed a teenage boy inside it. The boy had fair skin, green eyes, and short auburn hair, for most of his hair was spiky. He lacks distinctive pupils or eyebrows, and had to nuke like black rings around his eyes. On his skin, various wounds could be seen as the result of the attack. Despite the wounds he received, he was conscious and still able to tell his surrounding. Seeing that the boy already neutralized, the barrier on the surrounding was released. Feeling the pain on his whole body, Gara starts to lose consciousness. It hurts Saratobi Hiruzen, the one responsible for the attacks, was looking at the said boy. His eyes filled with pity and grief. But, this was the cruel reality of the world. Not every day was the sunshine and rainbows. Not everything was light and lukewarm. No, the world was not that kind. He just trying to make the world to be a better place in his own way, at least for his people and he was willing to bear the burden of the sins and hatred for it to happen. Take him. Yes, Hokage Sama, Gara POV. Hey Yashimaru, what exactly pain is? Huh, is this I remember this was a few years ago when I was just a little kid, full of naivety, and still believe in the illusion called love. Haha, <laughs> truly I always laughed when I remembered those days. Those days are the worst. I saw myself as a little kid inside a room. In my hand was a photo of my late mother, which she was killed by giving birth to the monster, me. Funny, right? Even since I was born the first thing I did was kill. Ha 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 ha, come on, laugh with me. Ha 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 tsk beside me was a woman called Yashimaru, she's an aunt of mine, and the sister of my mother. She was a kind woman, her smile was bright and warm like the morning sun rays. She was the sole reason that I believe in the existence of love. I watched silently from the side to relive those experiences, to later laugh at my own stupidity. Hun, how should I put it? Pain is, like your body is in an unbearable condition that you feel uncomfortable to and make you are unable to stay in your usual self. Yashimaru answered, she sheepishly scratched her own cheek and showed a confused expression. I can't explain very well, 
but the pain is really unpleasant feeling. Then Yashimaru, I've hurt you before do you hate me? Of course, she is, you idiot. I was annoyed by my little self TSK, naive and stupid. Yashimaru flinched, then she quickly showed her usual smile, and tilted her head to the side. In life, there are times that people will hurt and get hurt by someone. But, it's not that easy to make people hate others from such experience. The little me just gazed down, looking at the floor with somehow a relieved smile. Then does that mean I am injured like everyone else? My gaze back to look at Yashimaru, showing her my best smile. I mean I always feel pain. Although it doesn't bleed, this part hurts so much, my hand reached onto my left chest and squeezed it hard. No, you're different. We are different. Very different. Yashimaru kneeled and took a knife, then grazed her finger with its sharp edge. She bleeds and that made the little me felt horrified. Lord Gara, bodies bleed upon physical injuries, and they may look quite hurtful. But eventually, the pain will wear off as time passes. What more serious are the emotional scars? They are hardest to heal Yashimaru's hand reached and touched the face of the little me. She showed me another smile of hers. Emotional scars, unlike the physical ones, do not have the ointment to make them heal faster. But there's one thing that eases the pain, and it's called love. Bullshit. To hell with love. The scene flashed, and now the little me was seated on the rooftop of a building. I was alone and terrified with the gaze that the people gave me. Me, a little boy that knew no more than nothing of the world, was hated by the entire village including my own father because of my very existence. At that time, I wish that Yashimaru was there and tell me that everything was alright, that everything was gonna be fine my hope came true, Yashimaru really came. Ha <laughs> ha. But, she came with her sharp knife pointed at me, and with her intent to kill me. Her kunais were rained onto me, which fortunately my sands were protecting me from them. I was in disbelief by instinct, my sands launched toward her, and almost killed her instantly. I was ordered by the Kazakij-sama to kill you, but, I could have declined if I want to. She coughed and blood flowed from her mouth. I've always hated you. The one who took my sister away from me. Your mother also hated you. Hence she named you Gara. A demon that only loves himself. You were never loved. Ptui. There's no need for you to tell me that. Chao GPOV hour hours passed since the sand and sound operatives were all neutralized. The sound was immediately declared as an enemy by Kanoha. While the sand representative was invited to negotiate a few terms. Meanwhile. I helped with a few things to get rid of my nervousness. I was continuously worried about Eno. Was Enma-sama able to retrieve her? Oh god please let her be safe. I was absentmindedly lifted a few rubles when I felt a hand was poking my cheek from my side. That instantly made me annoyed. Are you that idle to tease me like this? I was about to bash that person before I saw the one who did that. What I saw really threw my heart onto the clouds of happiness. She was safe. Haha, -ha, she was safe. I saw Eno in her tattered clothes layered with dust and some blood. I threw the rubble on my hand somewhere, and it hit a random tune-in. I hugged her and spun her, you're back, you're safe. Who does the heck care about some blood and dust at this moment? I'm back. She giggled in my arms, and she too hugged me tightly. I whispered in her ears. I love you, and I'm announcing it to the world. Eno was confused, but you just whispered it to me. I doubt anybody else heard it. I grinned at her and pinched her cheek, exactly. You know that you're my world. Eno was blushed after and snuggled into my arms. I love you too, she said with a low voice. Unknown to me. My father and Eno's father were looking at us from the side, and Eno's father slipped a few stacks of ryos into my father's hand, while he was clicked his tongue. Her father gazed at me annoyingly as he cursed under his breath. It was only after a few minutes she snuggling in my arms, she flinched as she heard a loud cough. Ah, father. Her sudden flinch made my awareness back. I awkwardly smiled at Anochi san and saw my father gave his thumbs up towards me. Beside them were the father and son Shikajuo. They raised their eyebrows and grinned at me teasingly. Hello, father-in-law. That greeting earns me a smack on my head from him, and a loud laugh from the others beside Eno. Who the heck are you calling father-in-law? My father grinned widely. I expect a grandchild soon, it's too soon. This time even I was flustered. Here is an POV. Days passed, and it's been several weeks since the negotiation with the sand ended. The conclusion of the negotiations actually benefited both sides in the long term, since I knew that Orochimaru was the one behind all of those attacks, and with the sand admitted that the damn cloud gave them a sum of money to sponsor the attack, I gave them lighter terms. The contents were as followed. 1. The sand will give us a part of their territories near the border of the desert, which they did not have the manpower to maintain anyway. That land was actually had almost nothing on it besides sand and rocks, but surprisingly, the Akimichis bought that land, which that Akimichi brat said, that he gonna bring the Pioneer Town to reality, and make a cowboy culture in this world. One not that I understand his line of thought. The thing that surprises me was that land did not belong to the Akimichi clan. Instead, it belongs to him Akimichi Chaoji alone. I asked him once out of curiosity curiosity, and he answered me with a confusing answer. To an American, there's no kill more satisfying than an overkill, and I'm gonna make this land an overkill source of money. But, no Karen was allowed to visit it. The heck he even meant with that. 2. They will help us to clear the mission that the Wind Daimyo gives us, of course, with 5% of their payment as a fee toward us. 3. 
They have to open a secure trade route, and they have to let us build a business base not far from their village. This term made them eager and excited as they understood our intention, they promised to give us more benefits after that. So far, the ones that expressed their interest to do business in the Sand Village, were the Nara clan, Yamanaka clan, and Akimichi clan through their joint company to build a business district of their own inside the desert, which they called the Rain Base Project, and a few more other classified terms that are too complicated to explain. Their benefits aside, the economy of the Sand will depend on us from now on, thus it could be said that they're a vassal of a sort. The Sand's also gonna nominate a new Kazakij anytime now. I expect a wise leader that will be able to lead his people to glory. If we looked into their tradition, then it's gonna be the Jinchuriki boy, so we gonna do something about his violent tendencies. Besides that, in these passing weeks, I received a letter from the daimyo himself, which inside contained a name list, and what surprised me was the title. The Guardian of Fire Candidates Hum. This felt strangely familiar a day after the Kanoha was attacked. Here isn't POV care to repeat that. I want to either that Nara or Akimichi kid to be in my route. I can shape them into the perfect weapon for the village. I was in my office, in front of me was my best friend brother, and comrade Shimura Danzo. He was demanding that Nara Shikamaru or Akimichi Chaoji be in his organization, the route. I disappointedly looking at him. I was in no hurry to berate him, so I inhale my tobacco pipe and blow a puff of smoke to the side. So the thing that I feared really happened, ha huh, okay Danzo's eyes started to glow when he heard my first word. Why should I give them to you? As I said quote Danzo was eager to explain his plan to mold them into a loyal soldier for Kanoha. Though I cut him mid-sentence with a raise of a hand. Let me ask you this, my friend. Do you think that I'm stupid? I put my pipe on the table and look straight at him in his eyes. Well, do you? Of course not. I quote then do you think that I'm senile? Again, I cut him mid-sentence. I was getting tired of his tirade. Do you really think that I don't know what you did? How you tried to assassinate me? How you take the cousin of Ichiha Fugaku? How about Yamanakafu, Aburam Torun? And about how you assigned Aburam Yoji to spy on Ichiha Atachi in the past to pull him into your route? I look at my friend in his eyes with my eyes sharpened for each question that I threw at him. I know you, my friend. I flickered behind him while leaving an after image where I seated before. Better than you know. Wu Shi Tanto slashed abruptly from my hand and sliced Danzo's right arm from his shoulder, and my kunai stabbed his right eyes. Though he was able to parry the kunai, both his body and his sliced arms started to fade as he appeared behind my back already in slashing motion. So this is Aizanagi. Ha huh, immediately, I bent my body forward to dodge the incoming slash. Then I spring my body back throwing a roundhouse kick onto his chest. Danzo was thrashed and collided with the wall. The forward sprouted on the wall and restrained him. Yamato then came out of the wall with two shurikens on his hand, each that he used to cut the vein in Danzo's neck. My hand blurred forming several hand seals to summon my partner Kuchius no Jutsu. And Medanzo's figure blurred as he appeared in front of the window to escape, unfortunately for him. This room was already sealed by the joint effort of several seal master from Ambu. Emma grabbed Danzo's head with his large hand and tossed him to my direction, which I responded with a blast of fire bullet in dragon shape. Katen, Kayuendan. Danzo's figure was once again blurred as he appeared beside Yamato, with his hand almost reached Yamato's neck to snap it. Unfortunately for him, I already predicted his move and signaled Emma beforehand to guard Yamato. In the small space of this room with no gap to escape, his hope was only to kill his way starting from the weakest link. Emma's hand was stretched and crushed Danzo's two wrists in a single hand grip. This time, I tried to kill him slowly by trapped him inside the water prison technique. This way, with his little number of attempts left, he can enjoy his death more. I'm sorry, old friend. I've had enough, and Kanoha had enough of you thus. The fight continues third POV outside of the room. Kakashi and his old Anbu squad member stood guard. Hayogako, one of the Anbu that once in Kakashi and his squad, was in his full alert with his Byakugan constantly active. As soon as Shikamaru and Chaoji showed their overwhelming talent, Hiruzen already made some precautions. And when Danzo visited him, he immediately took the extreme measure all that was because of he already tired of his old friend's action in the dark. Kakashi sighed as he knew that from this point onward Kanoha will start to change. And the third Hokage was ready to point the fifth in case something really happens to him. Though he got a feeling regardless of the thing happened, the third would still choose his successor. Perhaps it was Jureya Sama. Maybe the other Senen, Tsunadeheim Sama. Third POV a few days after the Orochimaru attack Kanoha, Team 10 were gathered inside the VIP room of the Ikmichi restaurant. They were having a feast to celebrate the promotion of Shikamaru and Chaoji into the Chunin rank, the two of them plus Shino, were the only participants that declared to be worthy enough to become a Chunin. Though instead of upset Eno too was happy for them. Although it irked me that Sasuke countered me perfectly with his skill set, it gave me a wake up call, especially the event after that. I need to be more mature, calm, and learn more things to be able to become a tune-in. They then asked her about what happened when she was away yesterday. She told them about the event, about how she ended up inside a rocky cave, her encounter with the snake, and how a horde of monkeys suddenly pulled her from the water she was in. I thought they were going to hurt me, so I attacked them and was able to hurt a few of them. Though it was only later when Emma Sama arrived with an ethereal-looking white snake, 
that he explained my circumstance. I was still skeptical at that time. It's only when M. Misama showed the image of the two of you separately, when you're defending the village that I was able to trust him a bit. Though the white snake said that I was supposed to be a sacrifice. But she can overlook that if I was able to pass her test. Otherwise, I have to present her another life as an exchange. Thus, Eno told them about the test she took, about how she plunged inside a Jinjutsu world full of various extreme weather and about how she was fending thousands of snakes with various sizes, from her finger size to the size of giant tree bark. She was at a disadvantage at first, but as time passed she was able to adapt. Though, her stamina and chakra were limited, so she tried to gamble. She attempted to control the smaller snake that she already defeated first. Then slowly as she stretched her mind she controlled more snake, and was able to defeat all of them. Though she too was on the verge of death, fortunately, that was all inside the Jinjutsu world. Both Chaoji and Shikamaru marveled at her story. They did not doubt her, since there's no reason for her to lie to them. Plus, she bites her thumb afterward and summoned a small snake on the size of her index finger. Apparently, she passed some kind of test from the said white snake, and was offered to be the contractor of the snake tribe. She was offered several benefits with the exchange of a few things. She said I passed one of the three tests, and if I pass them all, I'll be granted with an audience with the Hakuja Senen. The benefit that they offered was I can make a contract with any snakes that I chose, if I pass their test, though I have to feed them chakra from time to time so I can't take as many as I can, and I can receive any teaching of the snakes to learn their abilities. The white snake warned me that some snakes demand a sacrificial, some demand beast meat, and some demand human. Ding the door was opened and Asuma could be seen slowly walked into the room. He greeted them all, and they continued their talk. Ino also retelling her story to her sensei, asking for his opinion. Well, that's good. The place you visited is called the Roji Cave. It is one of the big three unexplored sage regions, a legendary place that is equally famous as the other two, Mount Mayaboku which housed the Toad tribe, that leads by the Toad Sage, and the Shikotsu Forest, which housed the Slug Katsayakoma, and a few more beast tribes with an unknown sage as their leader. Isuma then explained that though the three places were the only known sage land, that does not mean that there was no other sage land. He told them that he had a contract with the Monkey tribe, though they did not have a sage. They're the most diverse one with the least requirement being the fighting as the test to sign a contract with them. As his old man told him, Asuma explained that originally only those willing to sacrifice anything in their greed for power, come to Roji Cave, while many travelers may venture close to it unknowingly. The snakes of Roji Cave take precautions, so that only those who are deliberately trying to visit it can arrive at it. So, it was her luck that Ino was able to arrive at Roji Cave, and gain their recognition. She already had her summon, so I won't give her an option to chose more. Besides, she still had those pigs. Though at this point they're more like a pet, instead of a summoned animal assumer side. She then looked at Chaoji, then Shikamaru. As for you, Pineapple Head, I recommend either Snake from Ryuchi Cave or Spider from Shikotsu Forest. They align with your style. Ino can help you with asking for the contract with Ryuchi Cave, and I can help you with make contact with the Shikotsu Forest. Asuma picked a piece of steak from the table and ate it. He then spoke to Chaoji, as for you, from your style. I recommend either the monkey, toad, or elephant. I can help you if you choose the monkey, and I can ask either my old man or Jiraiya Sama for the toad, but we'll have to either ask Danzo Sama for the elephant, or visit them near the rock forest at the border of Earth Country and Waterfall Country. Both Chaoji and Shikamaru fell silent and lost in thought, they're thinking things through. Troublesome Shikamaru mumbled as he sighed. There's no need to rush, we still have plenty of time. And though you two already become a Chunin, you should keep your training. Ino, you should also prepare yourself for the next exam. Yes, Asuma Sensei. Ino answered while Chaoji and Shikamaru still in deep thought. They then continued to chat while having their meals. They chatted for more than an hour before a messenger bird came and perched on Asuma's shoulder. Asuma took a small roll of paper on the bird's leg and read it. He then burns it to ashes as he grinned teasingly. Shikamaru, you're summoned by my old man. It seems that you got his interest. He took a moment to think and smiled. I will ruin the surprise. He wants to invite you into the Anbu. Ha! Huh, the last line took Shikamaru and Chaoji out of their thought. Meanwhile, pant 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 finally. I was able to escape. That damn Jiraiya was really persistent on the border between Earth and Fire Country. Orochimaru could be seen resting between protruding rocks that hide him from any plain sight. His pale face was painted with his own blood around the edge of his mouth. Cough that damn foolish pervert. Orochimaru was clutching his side. Behind his clothes, his ribs were fractured, and a few of his internal organ was crushed. Though Jiraiya also did not fare much better, he was brought into the Mount Mayaboku by his summon while he... Although their prowess relatively the same, when in his partial sage mode, Jiraiya was stronger than him by quite a margin. That's one of the reasons why he researched natural energy. Kukukuku Orochimaru laughed, his contracted summon Manda comma, will not help him with this circumstance. Heck, if Manda knew that he was in this state, Orochimaru was sure that Manda would gladly send him to the afterlife. His hand glowed as he used the mystical palm technique to tend his wounded body. 
It seems that I have to change my body as soon as possible, and it would not be possible to get that Akamichi boy in the near future, so it's either Sasuke or Kimimuro. Today was a splendid day at the start of the autumn season, when the days get shorter and colder, and the green flash of the trees became sepia-toned, waving in the southerly wind. The autumn season has dressed the land for the coming days, donning her most vibrant hues. She has swept into the streets and woodlands with a humble boldness that invites the eyes to see more than they otherwise might. The autumn takes her pirouette. Her sweet turn on the stage all around, and the Kanoha was now so blessed to be given such beauty. The cold wind started to blow as the carpet of brown and golden leaves started to cover the soil. Rain which started to pour from time to time wetting the land, and filled it with fresh earthly aroma, the fragrance of homeliness. Days passed and turned into weeks. The death of one of the Kanoha Elder Council's Shimura Danzo was finally announced to the public, it was declared that he was dead a natural death because of old age. In the meantime, Kakashi was tasked to lead the remaining root members, and with Nara Shikaku's help to integrate them with the current Anbu. Shikamaru has already accepted the Hokage's invitation to join the Anbu, and was now trained under Hayuga Ko, together with Ichiha Sasuke in the unit formerly lead by Haddock Kakashi. The Hokage decided that rather than let his hatred shape him, it'll be better if that Achiha errors shape both mentally and physically wise under the strict environment with a little brainwash here and there, before he was told the truth about behind his family massacre. Of course, the Hokage will blame it entirely on Danzo with him pleading guilty in some minor mistake. Until then, Sasuke will be under the strict watch of the Anbu. Jureya was tasked by the Hokage to bring Tsune back into the Kanoha, and he took Naruto with him to train Naruto more along the journey, and to watch the effect of Naruto's and Kaiubi's chakra, blending inside Naruto. Ino was apprenticed under Mitarashi Anko in the Kanoha Torture and Interrogation Force. It was both to learn more about snake techniques from Anko, as she was literally her senior in the snake technique and too found her own path. Meanwhile, Chaoji was summoned by the daimyo himself through the Hokage to the capital city of the Land of Fire, Akiyama City. Akiyama City was a city situated beside a dead volcano on the southern side of the middle of the fire country itself. It was a big city that took a few weeks to walk from the Kanoha. Chaoji along with Aburam Shino and Hayuga Niji was invited to the daimyo's castle, to be selected as the candidate of the new guardian ninja of the Land of Fire. And regardless they are accepted or not, they have to fulfill the daimyo's summon first. The Guardian Ninja was a group composed of 12 skilled ninjas, drawn from around the Land of Fire. Their only task was to protect the country's daimyo, even at the cost of their own lives. Even though the Guardian Ninja disbanded, its former members are still famed in criminal circles, earning them bounties on the black market. Chiriku has a bounty of 30 million Ryo, and Asuma has a bounty of 35 million Ryo. The trio Chaoji, Shino, Niji was accompanied by Asuma, who was a former Guardian Ninja himself. Along the way, Asuma told them what it means to become a Guardian Ninja, the benefits that it holds and the responsibility when holding that title. I will not join the Guardian again, but my friend Shuriku will guide you all, as he'll take the responsibility to screen all of the candidates, then guide you all in your path. If you are accepted, not only your family status will be elevated, which will not affect you much as you all already come from a military noble family, but you'll also be granted a vast amount of resources, and a certain specific privilege of your choosing. Asuma took his cigarette out and lit it before he put it in his mouth. Mine was accessed to buy the strategist item, such as chakra steel and the like by the way. Yes, I used it to make my clan thrive even more. Asuma explained that the fire daimyo has a fickle and indecisive nature, and is easily swayed in his decisions through biases as well as external influences. When situations call for fast, important decisions, he makes his advisors do the whole work. The one who convinces him most is the winner. After he has done with his explanation, Asuma patted Chaoji's shoulder. Have you done to decide which one that you will choose? Asuma's question was replied with a nod from Chaoji. Good, we'll start after we're done with the daimyo. Another week passed, Kinoha was holding the Autumn Festival, and its streets were filled with street food vendors, and were decorated with hundreds of paper lanterns. The Autumn season was said to be the season of hearty appetites, and there's no better place to enjoy it than Kinoha Village. With the Akamichi clan's food specialty, the Kanoha hosts a range of gourmet items, including locally grown agricultural products, fresh caught games, and delicious wine and sake. The festival has several themed venues, each with its own unique vibe, vendors, and dishes. Just then, Chaoji has just arrived at the Akiyama capital city, and Chaoji along with the others which totaled to be 11 people, were now kneeling in front of the daimyo's castle. The daimyo was an elderly man that has small, circular eyes and dark pupils. He also wears the standard daimyo headpiece. His skin was already wrinkled, showing his advanced age. Hum, I summon all of you here to be recruited as the guardian of the land of fire. The daimyo was seated in a lotus position on an elevated chair, his figure was covered by a layer of a veil. If you accepted, you will be trained by the former guardian, Chiriku. You will be treated as a noble, and be assigned various resources that will be more than hard to be acquired otherwise. The night after Chaoji was in his room inside the inn that he chose, in his hand was a letter which was written by Ino. Along the way, 
they often wrote to each other to tell each other's conditions and share their experience through the days. This time though, the content inside the letter made Chaoji giggle, then showed a frown on his face after he read it. Hello to you again, Mr. Worry Wart. Today was the day of the Autumn Festival, you forget about it, don't you? Admit it. You know, I feel both happy and sad today. I met with one of the legendary Senen, Sunateheim Sama. You're jealous, aren't you? You used to idolize her so much back in the academy. I need to confirm something with you. Yes, hers were as big as the people say. But, I will not lose to her if that's mean to make you happy. T the sad part is earlier. The bushy brows Lee was examined by Tsunateheim Sama, and she said that Lee will not be able to recover naturally on his own. He needs to went through a series of dangerous surgeries, either that or he'll be crippled forever. But, Lee will die if the surgeries are to fail. I don't know what to do. And now I can't think of a way to help him. Do you have something that can help? Sincerely, your purple lover, Eno. Chaoji sighed as he worried about his friend, and his brain was churning to find a way to help. Lee Chaoji was silent throughout the night. After he replied to Eno's letter, Chaoji contemplated whether if there's a way to help Lee, or at least to raise the chance of his surgeries to success. Thus the morning after Chaoji approached his sensei and told him about Lee. If even Tsuned Heimsama said it was dangerous to go through the surgery, then its process would be extremely delicate to be handled by others. One thing that I know about a medical expert in our village, is the Nara clan was a clan that possesses a rare and unique book about medical knowledge, that exclusively owned by their clan. Hearing that Choji's eyes were lit, without waiting even for a second, Chaoji immediately wrote a letter, and shamelessly asked his sensei to help him send it to the village using his summon. To his student's request, Asuma just sighed and summoned his contracted summon. Mon, Mon. Chaoji was surprised seeing a seemingly different creature than his sensei summoned before. Asuma's sensei, wasn't your contracted summon was different. If I remember correctly, he has reddish brown fur only, smaller in size, and sounds rather differently. Asuma smiled smugly at his student, he took his cigarette and put it in his mouth. It's him, but my summon grows along with his aging continuing changed. He's a bit special you know Chaoji was partially amazed at his sensei summon creature. He gave his letter to the flaming monkey, together with a few bananas. Yo, little guy I guess I can't call you a little guy anymore. Buddy, can you give my letter to my friend Shikamaru? I can give you bananas for it. Mon, mon. The flame monkey took both the bananas and the letter, before it disappeared in a swirl of flame. Choji eyes were shining. He looked at Asuma with stars in his eyes. There are many of the ever-changing summon on Shikotsu Forest. Then I assume you choose to look for your own summon. Chaoji nodded at his sensei's words. He expectantly waiting for the time he had his own summon creature. Then we go later before we go to the fire temple with all of the guardian candidates. I'll tell Shikamaru later to meet us on the way. Later on, for a few days, the fire daimyo watched as all of the guardian candidates were tested by Churiku. He saw Choji literally aced everything that was tested by Chiriku from body strength, awareness, and many others. Heck, I didn't even try my best. Yet, I aced it all Choji was troubled. He didn't want to be a guardian, because he has to be beside the daimyo all the time, and literally had to use his body as a shield, if the condition called. The thing was, who the fuck he think he is? Why the heck do I need to babysit this old man Choji was pissed? He can't quit it just like that in case he offended the daimyo and it impacted his clan in a bad way. Chaoji eyes trailed, and he saw the daimyo looked at him with a smile plastered on his face, while his head nodding vehemently like a chicken pecking. One phase cleared, and the candidates were to be trained by Chiriku in the fire temple. Though before the group departed, Asuma approached Chiriku, and the two had a long talk. Another day passed, Asuma and Chaoji were on their way to meet Shikamaru. Two days later, the three finally meet in a small village on the outskirts of a bamboo forest. They rested for the night there before Asuma used a reverse summon scroll for the three of them two went to the monkey kingdom inside the Shikotsu forest. Whoa, that's unexpected. Both Chaoji and Shikamaru were flabbergasted with what they have seen. Unlike what was in their imagination, the monkey kingdom was stunningly beautiful. It spanned over a few miles in size with huge trees surrounding it, and acted as a border of a sort. In short, it was a paradise on earth. On the western side of the center of the kingdom, there's a huge waterfall, and rainbows could be seen on top of the said waterfall, making it quite a sight to see. There were many kinds of primates that they saw, chimpanzees, apes, baboons, were amongst many kinds that they were seeing. They all live inside tree houses of various sizes, with some rare exceptions live in caves. Welcome to the monkey kingdom of Shikotsu Forest. A brown furred monkey with a golden sheen on its surface was seen welcoming them. He's Wuhai, the son of the monkey king Enma. Yo, if it's not Asuma boy and his students do you come here to meet with my old man? Wuhai grinned despite his cheerful disposition and his childish antics. He was more than a dozen years older than Asuma. Ho ho isn't it the giant boar? What's your name, boy? Wuhai turned his head towards Chaoji, as his mischievous grin showed on his face, his hand rubbed his own chin, as he swept his gaze on Chaoji from top to bottom, then back to the top again. My name is Igmichi Chaoji unknown to others, Wuhai stealthily concentrating a part of his natural energy, and put pressure on Chaoji. Since he was a mere newbie with natural energy control, Chaoji was not able to mitigate the pressure. Fortunately for him though, Choji's physique was stronger than the average shinobi, so he was able to resist the pressure for a few seconds. Not bad, not bad Kaoji is it? 
Wu Hai nodded as he continued to sweep his gaze at Chao Ji. It's Chu Wo. Anyway, Cao Ji Chan, let's spar for a bit, shall we? Wu Hai patted Chao Ji's shoulder nonchalantly as he disregards Chao Ji's words and lifted him like a rice bag. Yosh, you two come along with me. My old man will be in the training ground right now, and that's the place we'll be going troublesome. Shikamaru grumbled, and Asuma smiled wryly as they helplessly followed Wu Hai into the training ground. They ran for a few minutes before they arrived in front of an open field, surrounded by huge banana trees on its surrounding. When they arrived, Wu Hai tossed Chao Ji on the ground for quite a distance. Chao Ji lamented, he felt that his whole body and his chakra were on halt when Wu Hai tapped his shoulder. One thing that Chao Ji was certain of, Wu Hai used Fuenjutsu too. Though Chao Ji didn't know what kind of Fuenjutsu did he use, Chao Ji cursed under his breath as he swore to never let Wu Hai touch him again. Okay, let's start Gao Ji boy. Why do you want to spar with me? Chao Ji ignored Wu Hai's exclamation and asked Wu Hai after he stood back on his two feet. Chao Ji gazed at Wu Hai irritatingly, meanwhile. Wu Hai was just stood silently checking his nails. Seeing that Wu Hai still had not replied after some time, Chao Ji frowned and said, Hey, I asked you a question. Answer me. Why the heck do you want to spar with me? Chao Ji made up his mind and cautiously moved toward Wu Hai. When Cho Ji was within 10 meters of Wu Hai, he opened his mouth and replied, I am interested in your potential, and I want to check it by myself. Maybe if I deem you worthy I'll let you form a contract with me. Wu Hai said as he picked his ear with his pinky finger, smelled it, and blew it. Chao Ji was surprised and dropped his suspicion. He suddenly remembered something and said, wait for a second, why do I want to make a contract with you? I can help you with that passenger inside you. Chao Ji was surprised with Wu Hai's words. How can he, with that fuenjutsu of yours? Wu Hai grinned as he was satisfied with Chao Ji's shocked face, and he was pleased with his curiosity and discerning ability. Just as he opened his mouth to explain what he gonna do with that passenger inside him, Chao Ji suddenly charged forward. Chao Ji's arms were enlarged as he dashed, and Cho Ji shot forward as if he was mad ball. Chao Ji punched right on Wu Hai's body and caught Wu Hai off guard. Bang the impact of the hit was powerful, and Wu Hai was knocked back and crashed into a tree in the distance. Chao Ji sneered inside his mind as he prepared for the battle. He had decided to take the first step and create momentum in this spa. Don't blame me, you put your guard down. And you said that the spa already began. Kaiha, huh? Well done Kaoji boy on the receiving end of the attack, Wu Hai slowly got up without any injury. His fur releasing a golden glow, which was a natural energy shield that he put on his body surface. Wu Hai's expression was full of joy, and he summoned two golden balls made from natural energies. One ball became a golden shield, while the other ball turned into a golden spear. The appearance was old-fashioned, but one could feel the natural energy in the weapon, showcasing that they were not ordinary weapons. Good, now it's my turn. The battle erupted. Chao Ji made a few hand seals, and four flame bullets were summoned and fired rapidly. Wu Hai raised his golden shield, and the shield released a larger circular light shield on top of it. Ding ding dang dang, all the bullets were deflected by the light shield. Wu Hai chuckled with glee and pointed his spear right at Chao Ji. The head of a spear suddenly fired a golden bullet in an arrow shape. Chao Ji jumped in an instant, and the bullet passed right by his feet. The bullet left clear holes in the trees that were on its path and disappeared into the distance. From this one display, it's clear that Wu Hai's control of energy whether it was chakra or natural energy, was vastly superior to Chao Ji's in any way. Chao Ji jumped to the side and attempted to throw a few jutsus at Wu Hai. Chao Ji was still cautious to get close to him. What if his body was paralyzed again by his Fuen Jutsu? However, all the jutsus that Chao Ji threw were blocked off by the shield. At the same time, Wu Hai summoned another golden ball, which formed another golden spear and threw it into the sky. Fuush a bright golden beam arched in the sky and suddenly rocketed into his direction. So fast, Chao Ji eyes were dilated as he tried to dodge it. But alas, he still got scrapped by the edge of the spear, which made a trail of blood was seen on his left shoulder. Damn. Although pissed Chao Ji tried to remain calm, it was not the first time that he had fought someone stronger than him. Even though he knew that Wu Hai had a terrifying skill in Fuenjutsu, but he was not familiar with any Fuenjutsu. Plus, he's still in the dark regarding Wu Hai's other capabilities. This is the first time I fight with a summoned creature. His ranged attack is stronger than mine. I need to try and get close. Maybe there will be a way meanwhile. Asuma and Shikamaru were watching Chao Ji and Wu Hai spa. On their side were Enma and Flame Monkey, Asuma's contract summon. They were having a talk of their own. I'll let him accompany you. But be careful, there's nothing in this forest that is not dangerous and powerful. Especially you, kid. You're still weak. Enma looked at Shikamaru, and the latter reluctantly acknowledged his weakness. ESK, it's troublesome, but it will not be for long. I will not remain weak forever this is the first time I fight with a summoned creature. His ranged attack is stronger than mine. I need to try and get close. Maybe there will be a way Chao Ji instantly adapted his plan and dove down onto his opponent. Four fireballs flew and exploded around Wu Hai. Wu Hai's shield was affected by the attack, meaning that the force behind the attack was significant enough to do damage to the shield. Wu Hai counterattacked with his golden spear. Chao Ji spun his body to narrowly dodge Wu Hai's thrust as it scrapped his clothes slightly. Cold sweat tricked on Chao Ji's forehead as he went full alert. More exchanges took place between the two until slowly, 
Both of them went into a close quarters fight with various techniques thrown by them. Hum the red and golden sparks dance around the friction between Chao Ji's fire release and Wu Hai's golden weapons. Bang 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 punches and kicks with huge bursts of flames landed on Wu Hai's body. His shield was heavily weakened and it already got dispersed for quite a few times before it was summoned again and again to protect him. Even though close quarter combat was should be advantageous for Wu Hai due to his beastly instinct, Chao Ji had a variety of skills and abilities that overwhelmed him. The two men beast and human did not rest for a second, and the battlefield was soon moved away from the training ground all the way into the surrounding forest as they clashes. Even though Wu Hai had an advantage in the natural energy field and Fuenjutsu, Chao Ji's attacks were too diverse and unpredictable. Wu Hai could not hold back the attacks as he got more and more frustrated. Damn, at this rate I can't hold back more than half of my power. Any more Wu Hai cursed Chao Ji in his mind as he utilized more force behind his every attack. Time to up the game. Fuush Wu Hai's golden spear flashed as it thrust toward Chao Ji amidst the flurry of attacks. Surprised with the change of Wu Hai's battle rhythm, Chao Ji jumped back to dodge the spear thrust and swayed his body to the side while he's at it. Although it seemed insignificant, the extra spear attack while continued to engage in close combat really made Chao Ji suffer in his attempt to gain an upper hand in battle. What's up, baby boy, getting tired already? And Wu Hai's continuous taunt didn't help him either to discern any gap in Wu Hai's defense. On the contrary, Wu Hai's jolly attitude made Chao Ji get more irritated as time passed. As Chao Ji realized the deadlock that he was in, he intentionally left an opening and used his rock covered body part to take a direct hit from Wu Hai. The light of the golden dimmed again, but Chao Ji gained the precious chance to throw a big attack. Chao Ji's body was immediately covered in flames as he concentrated more on this attack. He had decided to end this battle. Katen, seeking Zuki. One flames converged on his fist. Chao Ji thrust his arms forward in a punching motion and in a solid stance to land a more powerful blow to Wu Hai. The flame exploded in a light like a burning sun, and Chao Ji whirled it in the air and thrust his fist forward. Kaboom the earth cracked, and the impact wave exploded onto the side. The earth showed another ferocious crack, and the trees turned into cinders. One more Chao Ji roared. He rushed a few steps forward, used another technique as his body shined, and prepared to unleash another attack. Flames burns on Chao Ji's body as it formed a ring of flames behind him, resembling the shape of the sun. The temperature in the surrounding was continued to rise as time ticking, and it keeps getting hotter every second past. Katen, Nichiren, Tu Chao Ji crossed his arms in front of his chest, and lashed it outward as the ring of flame behind him flew toward the still whirling Wu Hai. The signal of danger was imminent, and deadly the ring of flames flew at a high speed. Nice. Wu Hai was happy instead of being afraid. He quickly stopped in mid-air and leaped forward, confusing everyone except Emma. Just then, Wu Hai stuck his tongue out and revealed a kind of glowing mark. At the same time, at one spot on Chao Ji's body, that Wu Hai hit before was showing the same mark. Haha, <laughs> got you, Horatian, Suichi. 3-0, shit Chao Ji's eyes bulged as he saw his own attack flew toward him as he stood on where Wu Hai was. He hurriedly utilized as much chakra and natural energy as possible to cover his whole body. Bang Chao Ji's body flew away, and he fell to the ground on his back as his whole front side was covered with burnt marks. The technique he pulled, Nichiren, used more than 90% of his remained energy reserve, thus leaving him less than the required amount to protect himself as he took the gamble to attack. Wu Hai approached him with a grin on his face. He then squatted beside Chao Ji as he gawking at Chao Ji's grievous state. You are strong. I knew you're strong and had good potential. But I did not think that you're this strong. I'm still stronger though. Kekaki Choji tried to catch his breath. He tried to stand up again and took another two pills, which turned out to be soldier pills. But choosing to fight me was your biggest opportunity. You made me unleash a bit more than half of my power, not my techniques. I barely used any of them, but I put my gut into those punches. I analyzed the techniques that you used, they're self-made. No. Wu Hai stopped talking and shook his head. They're good, but still way too rough. First, your flame body technique, you can use them to convert yourself as a whole into flames instead of just your superficial body. For example like this. Wu Hai leaped backward and did a somersault before he landed a bit far away from where Chao Ji laid. He took a deep breath and growled a bit, just then, his whole fur set ablaze. No, they were turned into flames, and Wu Hai was covered with flames from head to toe. You did it like this, you turned your body into flames. While instead, you should do it like this next, the flames that covered Wu Hai got brighter and his whole body turned into a flame. His body did not get engulfed by flames, Wu Hai became the flame itself. We, the royal tribe of the Monkey Kingdom, had the innate ability to transform ourselves into something that we understand. My father is the best in the earth and mineral field knowledge. Hence his adamantium transformation is so formidable. While I, Wu Hai, am more inclined toward the fire element. Wu Hai showcased his ability as he flew near Choji who's now draw a gate with what Wu Hai just showed him. Think of it like your henge technique, but we take it a few steps further. Wu Hai turned back into his original form. He once again squatted beside Chao Ji. Although our kingdom doesn't have a sage among our rank ever since our ancestor the first monkey king Sun Wukong was gone, we still proudly stand as one of the hegemons of the Shikotsu forest. Kitsaya Sama still has the most authorities though anyway. I in the name of myself Sun Wu Hai, declare that you Akimichi Chao Ji. 
are worthy to be my partner. Wu Hai stretched his palm out and gazed deeply at Chao Ji's eyes, waiting for his response. Let's form a contract between ourselves. Shikamaru POV. Whoa, their fight was so intense. All I could see was a bright flash of burning red and blinding gold here and there before they rocketed into the forest. The Monkey King, Emma Sama, and Asuma Sensei were following them to watch their fight more closely. Troublesome it's not that I was not curious about my buddy's fight. But it's not worth the hassle. Did you just ask me why? Are you stupid? Let me explain to you, you oxhead. Their speed is not what the current be able to follow. All I could see were occasional blows, clashing sounds, explosions, and rising temperatures. What can I discern? Only a few not so useful things. So, why bother? ESK. See, by the time I arrived all I saw was my buddy Chaoji laid on his back. And that monkey prince, Wu Hai Sama, squatted beside him with a mocking face. Then he suddenly did backflip, set himself ablaze, then squatted beside Chaoji again. Perhaps he has a few screws loose on his head, that's highly probable. I threw a pitying glance toward Enma Sama with a consoling tone. I tried to comfort him. Enma Sama, it's okay. Your son might be a little special, but he's good in his own right. Yes. Enma Sama was apparently baffled. Maybe he didn't expect that I would comfort him. It must be hard to be a father side troublesome indeed. Hum. Just then, I felt a sudden chill. Growl, what was that? Wu Hai's POV. The heck? I continued to mock this Akimichi kid, while my hand was hidden on my back. How can it not? My hands were trembling from the impact of our fists clash numerous times. I knew that it was a bad idea to contend with him in a melee battle. If I knew that his physique already reached this stage, then instead of a melee battle, I'll kite him from afar. Though my physique was still superior to his, that close combat skill, how the heck did he reach that stage? How many battlefields that he went through? I can't let his potential go to waste. If I was able to make a contract with him and then nurture him, then my ascension to the throne would be a smooth sail. I can't help it, can I? Although I was the current king's son, this kingdom had high respect toward a strong creature, and I still can be challenged for the throne by the others if my prestige is not enough. Then what was I waiting for? I squatted beside him, stretched my hand over, and gave him my offer to make a contract with me. I in the name of myself Sun Wu Hai, declare that you Akamichi Chaoji are worthy to be my partner. A grin cannot help but show on my face. Let's form a contract between ourselves. The moment he grabbed my hand and nodded his head somehow, I felt like I had won a huge lottery. Shikamaru POV. The sudden growl surprised me a bit. I leered at Enma Sama and saw he rolled his eyes in annoyance. I wonder why. Dang it, that shadow lump again pardon. What does he mean by shadow lump? As a shadow user myself I felt curious. That shadow lump is a shadow-like, round-bodied creature with two large, pointed ears and short spikes, lining its back. Shadow Lump has two red eyes and a toothy, sinister smile. It has claws on its hands. Shadow Lump stands on its two short legs, but it can levitate as well. In short, a shadow ball with limbs and the Sama snarled. It seems that he's often dealing with this sort of creature. So often that he was annoyed by its mere presence. And what does it do? What was it called again? Ah, Shadow Lump. I felt intrigued. It's my first time knowing a creature affiliated with Shadow. Maybe I could learn something from it. Shadow Lump has the ability to levitate. This creature hides in the shadows. When there is a full moon, this annoying creature loves to scare other creatures by pretending to be their shadow, then laugh at their fear. Shadow Lump is typically mean-spirited and enjoys tormenting people, hurting them and overtaking them. It can absorb any surrounding heat, leaving a sudden chill. To steal the life of its target, it slips into the prey's shadow and silently waits for an opportunity. Shadow Lump is also able to merge with and inhabit the shadow of another being. Unknown to me, my eyes shone when I heard Shadow Lump's abilities. If I can do that also, then how do I find it? Can I form a contract with it? In my excitement, Enma Sama stared at me weirdly. Regardless, he explained all the same. Well, tomorrow is a full moon, so just go to dark places in the forest tomorrow night by yourself. It's almost certain that Shadow Lump will show itself. Well, I won't say you can't, but it's never happened. I nodded and thanked him. This could be a chance for me to learn from a natural shadow user. Isuma Sensei apparently just smiled. He believed that his students already know what is best for themselves. So he let us decided something like this for ourselves. I feel that I need to tell you that despite their abilities, they are ones that don't feel fear towards others. For fear is their delicacies. And they're mischievous in nature. And Masama said with a bit of seriousness and a tinge of annoyance toward the end in his voice. Later, both of us saw that Chaji and Wuhai Sama were already done with their business. So we went back and rest for the rest of the day. That concluded our first day in this Shikotsu forest. Third POV. Meanwhile, in the Kanoha. Knock knock, knock Hiruzen was seated in his office with an unfold scroll on his desk. His tobacco pipe rested on his palm. And occasionally he tapped it when he was deep in thought. Come in. Creak, the door was opened, and a man with pineapple-like hair and scar, adorned his peculiar face. He was Shikaku Nara, the current clan head of the Nara clan, and the current advisor of the Hokage. Greetings, Hokage-sama. Shikaku bowed his head with a calm expression, he was called earlier by the Anbu, and told that he was summoned by the Hokage. In response to the way Shikaku acted, 
Hiruzen nodded his head and presented him with a scroll. Read it. Shikaku took the scroll, unfolded it, and read the content contained in it. He then folded it back and placed it on Hiruzen's desk. It is not my request, but it's from that Akimichi boy in order to help his friend. It looks like he has a kind heart and a good camaraderie. A small smile hung on Hiruzen's lips. He felt proud inside. The will of fire will keep burning in the younger leaf. I've checked this Rock Lee's background. He's a good kid with a strong will of fire. You can check it yourself. Hiruzen gave Shikaku another scroll. This time it was a tad bit bigger than before. Without hesitation, Shikaku took the scroll and read it again, this time slower than before. Rock Lee, a boy originated from a small clan, the Lee clan. He was born with a deficiency in his chakra vein, which made him unable to utilize chakra more than an ordinary civilian was able to do. Both of his parents were traveling merchant and was killed by bandits. The Lee clan refused to take him in. Thus he was placed in the village orphanage. Albeit with his floor and chakra utilization, Lee refused to give up, and took the path of Tojutsu to the extreme guided by Kanoha's Blue Beast Mike Guy. Under Guy's guidance, Lee was able to use the forbidden technique 8 gates up to the 5th gate, which made his prowess on par with the raw prowess of a Jounin. Guy's disciple, huh? Shikaku heaved a long sigh after he read Lee's background. Slowly he folded it back and placed it on Hiruzen's desk. Troublesome indeed. Shikaku closed his eyes for a while. His mind darted back to the time when his team was saved by Guy's father. Might die the eternal genin from Iowa's shinobi trap. He remembered Dai's exact word at that time. I won't let the young suffer. Won't let the young suffer. Huh? A smile bloomed on his face. He looked at the Hokage and answered firmly. I agree. I will let the Nara medicinal book be used for Rock Lee's treatment. You hear that guy? Hiruzen smiled as he talked. Just then, the window suddenly opened, and Mike Guy came through it. Guy immediately bowed toward Shikaku. He tried hard to hold his tears but ultimately still failed. Thank you, Shikaku sighed. His hand moved and scratched his own head. Don't thank me. It's as your father said. I won't let the young suffer even though it's troublesome guy. It's one thing that Shikaku lent his clan knowledge to us, but it's up to us to utilize that knowledge. I've checked Lee's injuries, and no ordinary medical nin will be able to heal him. So here is an inhaled his pipe as he paused in the middle of his sentences. You should help Jiraiya and Naruto to take a best medical nin, Tsunade. They're already on their way. So you should move quickly. Yes. Hokage Sama guy bowed once again toward Shikaku before he went to prepare for his mission. Won't let the young suffer. That's nice words coming from your mouth Shikaku. Here is and smirked as he looking at his new advisor. Shikaku just scratched his head as he wryly smiled. It's not mine, Hokage Sama. The next day, in the Shikotsu forest, Chaoji was honing his energy control skill guided by Wuhai. Coupled with this place's thick natural energy, make his training advance faster than he did it alone in another place. On the other side of the forest Shikamaru was squatted on top of a tree. He gazed at the horizon, waiting for the sun to set. He was giddy to see Shadow Lump and its shadow utilization, though, he keeps his stoic face on the surface. It's almost time on top of a tree. A silhouette of a person was seen. He gazed at the horizon waiting for the sun to set. From the way he acted, it was apparent that he was giddy waiting for something. It's almost time the silhouette was Nara Shikamaru. He was waiting for the moon to hung high on the night sky, and for the shadow to shroud the land. Whoosh dark clouds started to converge on the horizon as the moon shone bright. The wind rustles as a beastly growl sounded on Shikamaru's ears. Slowly the wind started picked up its speed, and Shikamaru suddenly jumped onto another tree top. His eyes though focused on where he stood before as his body flipped over. There you are Shikamaru brandished his sword and its polished side, reflecting the dim light of the moonshine. In his eyes reflected the vague shape of the shadowy ball. After it fell to pounce on its prey, Shadow Lump immediately went into hiding once more. Yarrrrrrrr, the low growl of Shadow Lump became fainter as its sound carried by the bellowing wind. Shadow Lump carefully stalked its prey Shikamaru comma, waiting patiently for the moment, its prey showing any weakness. From one shadow to another, Shadow Lump traveled as it slowly approached its target. One thing that Emma forgot to mention was Shadow Lump's diet mainly consisted of meat. And in front of it right now was a delicious lonely prey, ready to be toyed then eaten. Among the darkness of the night, the dark cloud loomed over and covered the full moon, making the dim night became pitch black. Tap tap tap, the drizzle started to pour before followed by a heavy rain soon after. The strong wind also made the already tense atmosphere between the two become more unpredictable. Crackle the lightning sparking in the dark cloud briefly illuminated the dark land. And it was at that time, a claw reached from the shadow behind Shikamaru, intending to rip a piece of flesh from him. Shikamaru was caught off guard and was late to respond. Fortunately, he was able to jump forward to avoid any fatal injury. Damn his hand then formed into a ram seal. He summoned shadows to bind Shadow Lump down, as he immediately launched back to attack it as soon as his feet touched the ground. His hand swung and his sword slashed vertically onto Shadow Lump's head. As slippery as it is, Shadow Lump molded itself into the shadow and escaped Shikamaru's bind. As a natural predator, Shadow Lump was patient and keep lurking in the shadow. Shikamaru gritted his teeth, he was pissed that he was caught off guard earlier. But still, a happy smile showed itself on Shikamaru's face. It's great, though it was a bit more slippery than I expected. If that's the case, then Shikamaru suddenly stood normally without taking any stance to guard himself whatsoever. He then propelled himself away to escape from the forest. 
Thinking that its prey wants to escape out of fear, Shadow Lump internally chuckled. He was pleased that he succeeds to instill fear into his prey. Just then, Shadow Lump silently came out of the shadow and levitated himself to chase his escaped prey. Growl one with a wide smirk on its face, Shadow Lump chased Shikamaru. Minutes passed, and the chase was still on. Feeling that it was enough, Shadow Lump picked up its speed, and immediately shortened the distance between itself and Shikamaru. As its claw swept onto Shikamaru's back, However, got you, the lump. Shikamaru's figure that Shadow Lump attacked was gone, replaced with a dry log from the surrounding. And above it, Shikamaru is already in motion to stab Shadow Lump. Feeling the threat, its instinct flared, and it immediately raised its claw and coated it with Shadow. Shadow Lump twisted its body and parried Shikamaru's attack to the side, before it flew to create a distance between them. Not letting Shadow Lump a moment to take a breath, Shikamaru immediately followed with another attack. His knees bent, then he propelled himself as he slashed horizontally. Shikamaru's other hand was not idle as he formed a few hand seal, and shot a flame bullet to Shadow Lump. Katen, Enden. On another side, Shadow Lump compressed Shadows into a ball shape, then shot it toward Shikamaru. Not wanting to lose, Shadow Lump also coated its claw once again with Shadow as it rushed forward, intending to cut Shikamaru into pieces. Grawl. ER, R2 between them, a Shadow Ball and a Flame Bullet clash resulting in a loud explosion, and burned several trees around. Though, the fire immediately put out by the heavy rain soon after. After the explosion ceased, not far from the place where the explosion occurred, Shikamaru and Shadow Lump was in a stalemate. Shadow Lump was levitating in front of Shikamaru on his eye level, with its shadow coated claw a centimeter away from his throat. While Shikamaru had his sword brandished a centimeter away from its head, they were both in a staring contest both spun their brain to gain an advantage over the other. Through Shadow, Shikamaru knew that Shadow Lump was more proficient than him with shadow utilization, while Shadow Lump knew that currently, its trick was useless in front of its current opponent, since it now knew that after the exchange, the opponent will not fall into the same hole twice. The main arsenal, Shadow, was now useless in front of the other. ESK, Troublesome, GRRR3 unknown to Shikamaru and Shadow Lump, two pairs of eyes were watching them from the distance since the beginning. What do you think about them, Asuma? I think they match made in heaven and Masama. They both chuckled as they watched Shikamaru's and Shadow Lump's bout. Enma and Asuma saw that in spite of everything, Shikamaru and Shadow Lump still decided to exchange another bout with their shadow technique. They will learn much from each other, Asuma said as he crossed his arms in front of his chest. Indeed, your student will learn more about shadow nature, and that little shadow ball will learn to be more cautious and aware of its surrounding. All that is left is for them to make a contract with each other, and be happy ever after. Asuma nodded after he heard Emma's comment about the situation. I wish the best for him, he owns the best brain between my three students. I'll make that little shadow ball agree to make a contract with your student, it'll be rather hard otherwise. It's just way too mischievous in its nature. Enma sighed and shook his head, they continued to watch Shikamaru and Shadow Lump through the night. In the Konoha, a fairly tall man of fair complexion with onyx eyes, under which were long, pronounced tear troughs on his face. He had jet black hair that was pulled back in a low ponytail, and his face was framed with center parted bangs that extended to his chin. He was considered very handsome as many girls became infatuated with him in the past. He wore a black cloak with red clouds pattern, and a slashed Konoha forehead protector, covered by his wide bamboo hat. Atachi? Where do you think the Nine Tails Jinchuriki is? The man was a Chiharatachi, the traitor of his clan, and the hated brother of a Chihasasuke. Beside him was a very tall and muscular shinobi. The said man had a distinctive shark-like appearance, complete with pale, blue shark-like skin. He was Hoshigaki Kisum, the killer of one of the seven Mist Swordsmen and the current holder of Samahada. Let's looking around first, he could be anywhere in this village. They went into a deserted alley, and Atachi used a shadow clone technique, and his clones transformed into another random person's appearance. This will hasten our search. With that, the duo touring around Kanoha under their not-so-hidden disguise. In the Hokage office, the sound of flip paper was faintly heard, coupled with the smell of tobacco lingering in the air, making the environment seems enjoyable to work in. Amidst the peaceful atmosphere, Hiruzen suddenly stopped his work and clapped his hand a few times. The few amber guards in his surrounding immediately dispersed. He sighed as he took his tobacco pipe and leaned his back. It was unknown what thing went through his mind, as he kept his stoic appearance. Not long after, a few crows slowly gather around before showing Itachi's kneeling figure. Greetings, Hokage Sama. Itachi wore no disguise, and no cloak covered his body. He wore just ordinary, your usual amber clothes set minus his mask. How's the mission progress? Two weeks past, Chaoji and Shikamaru ended their visit to Shikotsu Forest, as they were summoned by the third Hokage, Saratobi Horizon, to formally inaugurate them as a Chunin. Man, home sweet home Chaoji couldn't help but grin as he along with Shikamaru and Asuma, were currently queuing in front of the gate of Kanoha. Yeah, home sweet home. Finally, I can get more sleep. Shikamaru yawned as he lazily leaned himself on the carriage beside him. Shikamaru's face was currently adorned with panda-like eye bags, as the side effect of his lack of sleep, though playing with Jenga really improved my overall abilities. Yup, Shikamaru decides to name his summon. After several brainstorming sessions, he came up with the name Jenga. Yup, there's no place like home. Asuma nodded, though it's not a long time. 
He missed his Karunai dearly. Though it will be more perfect if Karunai let me smoke. The trio waited patiently as they were not in a hurry. After they passed the gate, they saw two persons, one woman and one girl chatted with each other as they giggled occasionally. One has a raven black hair color, while the other has a platinum blonde hair color. They were Kurunai and Eno. As Kurunai and Eno noticed the trio figures approaching them, they both smiled and said at the same time, Welcome home, we're home. The trio replied with Chaoji holding Eno's hand and Asuma embracing Kurunai's waist. Meanwhile, Shikamaru grunted in annoyance. Maybe it'll be good if I have someone too. But after having that thought, he remembered the women around him, mainly his mother, Ino, and Sakura, then shuddered. No, they are always acting cordial and friendly, but I can never tell that if they're really getting along or not. His father's situation becomes even more vivid in his mind, and it made him dreaded women even more. Besides, they think that they can boss us, men, around. Damn, women are troublesome Shikamaru side and took a bottle of water to wash his face to keep his mind away from these thoughts again. They all then proceed to a restaurant together to have their lunch early. All of them have a good occasion, as they congratulated both Chaji and Shikamaru for their promotion to Chunin, and spent their time together until noon passed then back to each of their own house, to get some rest. Yo, Chaji, Shikamaru. The next day, Chaji and Shikamaru were finally formally promoted as a Chunin. On their way back, they met with Naruto along with Jiraiya, Tsunade, Shizune, and Gai. Good morning, Jiraiya-sama. Shikamaru bowed as a sign of respect to greet Jiraiya, and then greet the other in a less formal way. Noticing an unknown woman with them, Shikamaru approached Naruto and asked him in a low whisper, Who's that young blondie? Why does she look so haughty? Hearing Shikamaru, Naruto tried his best to hold his laughter. She's one of three senin. Her name is Senjutsu Tsunade. Ah, although she looks young, she's actually in her 50. On the other side, Chaoji was ignoring Naruto's and Shikamaru's not so low whisper as he was shocked seeing a woman beside Jiraiya. His eyes opened wide and his jaw reaching the ground. Shikamaru may not recognize her as she was out of the village for far too long. But she was his idol. There's no way in hell that he didn't recognize her. Chaoji even went to a great extent to spend a few hundred thousand ryo to bought her clear portrait. Those big racks, curvy waist, silky blonde hair, and mesmerizing eyes. He can't be wrong. She is the only known Senju alive. One of three Senen, the granddaughter of the first Hokage. She is the one and only Lady Tsuneji. Good morning, Tsunade Sama Chaoji's face was flushed out of excitement. How can he not? The woman of his dream was now in front of him. Ho ho, you recognize me from the first sight, boy. Tsunade was slightly taken aback. She didn't think that a Kanoha teenager will recognize her now. After all, it's true that she has been out of the village for years already. It's either he's highly knowledgeable or I'm underestimating my own faint Tsunade thought. Even though it did surprise her, she replied to Chaoji's greeting with a teasing grin. Good morning, you're quite handsome, aren't you? He thanks. You're beautiful too, Tsunade Sama. Chaji was gone red. This time it was because he was shy and feel flattered. Imagine that you meet with your idol and she flirted with you. Ho ho, you have a sweet tongue, eh? I bet you have a cue line full of your fangirls. Sune chuckled. They exchanged a few more pleasantries before they continued with their own business. Well then, see you later. I will show you my awesome new technique. Naruto grinned as he waved his arms. You're in for a surprise, I guarantee. After arrived at Kanoha, Tsunade's first destination was the hospital. It was mainly because of Guy's consistent urging and begging for her to heal his pupil. Yo, good morning Lee. Guy sensei. As they arrived at the hospital, they saw Lee was beside his bed doing one handstand push-up. As a doctor herself, Tsunade was ticked seeing a patient was doing a hard exercise, instead of taking rest properly. On another side of the bed, Sakura was seated while training her mystic palm technique. Hurry up, sit down on the bed. With her finger pointed at the bed, Tsunade commanded Lee. She was upset seeing a stubborn patient like this. Little girl. Why don't you stop him? Hey. Not knowing how to respond, Sakura was embarrassed. She didn't know how to stop Lee from doing his training. She knew that Lee's desire to become stronger was to prove his ninja way. Boy, are you deaf too? I said hurry up and sit down on the bed before I make you. Feeling confused, Lee turned his head to look at his sensei. After got a confirmative nod, Lee slowly placed his butt on the hospital bed. Immediately, Sune did several checks on Lee. Her eyes turned grave, and a deep sigh escaped her mouth. There are numerous bone fragments lodged within vital parts of your neural framework. Currently, you're in no condition to perform as a shinobi. I'll be direct. Would you rather be a cripple and stop being a shinobi or gone through surgery to gamble your life? I will gamble my life. Because I've promised myself that I will be a great ninja in the future. And I want to know. I will prove that I'm able to be a great ninja with only tajutsu. Lee's eyes were resolute. No shred of hesitation appeared. Hey, wh what do you mean by that? Rather... Who are you? Good, then I will also try my best. To date, it is no exaggeration to say that I am the only one capable to perform this surgery. But, not only it requires a large amount lot of time, 
but it is also incredibly risky. Fortunately, the Nara clan was kind enough to lend their secret medicine book. With it, I was able to learn a few things I can implement to raise the chance of this surgery. Take a good rest and consume more calcium and zinc these three days, we will begin your operation three days later. Sunade said before he stood and left the room along with Mike Guy. Don't ignore me. Sakura was frustrated, while he scratched his head and tried to calm Sakura down. Outside of the room, Guy could be seen kneeling towards Sunade with his forehead touching the floor, his tears continuously flows down on his cheek. Thank you, Sunade Sama. Get up, you can thank me later, we got things to prepare. Three days passed, in these three days quite a lot of things happened. Chaji went on another date with Ino. Sakura still went to the hospital to accompany Lee, and the daimyo was inviting a few more Fire Guardian candidates to fill the gap left by the ones who refused to be one. Unknown to everyone, Hiruzen made Itachi coincidentally met with Sasuke, then escaped under the nose of a few Kanoa Jounins, including Kakashi and Kuranai. It was mainly for two reasons, to reignite Sasuke's passion, and to remind the council to not overstep the boundaries regarding the Achiha business as Itachi was still alive and kicking. Hiruzen also finally decided that it was time for him to hung his mantle as a hokage. With the help of Jiraiya and Shizune, along with some pep talks from Naruto, Hiruzen managed to convince Yune to take the mantle as the fifth Hokage. Though the main candidate was Jiraiya, the man held an important role that no one was able to replace yet. This village has changed quite a bit while I was gone. Sunade was currently on top of the Hokage office building. Behind her was her teacher and the third Hokage of Kanoha, Saratobi Hiruzen, along with Jiraiya and the member of Kanoha Council. Starting today, this village is your responsibility as the fifth Hokage. No matter what, don't let the will of fire be extinguished. Hiruzen stepped up and turned his body towards Sunade. He was not wearing his Hokage robe anymore. Instead, Hiruzen wore a brown Hakama with a fire character written on his back in red. I won't Sunade unhesitatingly nodded. She won't let her grandfather's treasure the will of fire, and the village ceased. I will guard it with my life. He, though I hope you're strong enough to face every cage's natural enemy, the paperwork. Hiruzen grinned. He was happy that he was finally freed from the mountains of paperwork, and finally can enjoy his days peacefully. All that left are the external threats, especially from Kumo and Isla. Don't worry. I will triumph over it, Sunade said with a relaxed grin, unaware that the term of paperwork will become her nightmare shortly. I can't take IT anymore, Tsunade Sama. We still have a few dozens of mission requests, and not to mention the report of the internal matter of the village. In the afternoon you also have an appointment with a few lords of the surrounding towns. A wailing sound could be heard from the Hokage office Tsunade was despairing after went through a pile of paperwork. Lee's surgery was already done, and a week already passed since then. Tsunade then submerged in her new work as a Hokage, she was full of spirit for the two first days. Got bored at the next day, and wallowing in despair ever since after. Someone save me. Poof Hokage-sama, there's an urgent report. An Anbu suddenly flickered in front of Tsunade's desk and immediately kneeled. Speak. A half-smile showed itself on Tsunade's lips. She prayed that whatever is this would be able to make her excuse herself, and dump the rest of the paperwork to Shizun. Yes. There's a reinforcement request from the Land of Wind. Last night their southern border was attacked by an unknown enemy. The enemy's ship was decimated, but many of their shinobi were killed. Sune frowned, an attack on the hidden village or to the shinobi was a common thing, but a large-scale attack on a normal civil area was not a common occurrence. Since the Sand Village could be said as their vassal village, they are also obligated to help, not to mention the kind when Daimyo has brought numerous businesses to the Kanora. A battle was taking place at night on a desolate seaside beach between Sunagaka Ninja and soldiers wearing bulky suits of armor. Despite their best efforts, the San Shinobi were slowly overwhelmed by the sheer strength of their mysterious opponents. The only known survivors were the sons and daughter of the previous Kazuki Ijigara, Kankuro, Tamari, seven other Chunin, and three Jounin. They were still stationed in the border waiting for reinforcement. The Anbu kept went on to the details regarding the report, with things seemed graver by the seconds. Tsunade's frown got deeper, she knew something was amiss. How many ninjas are available in the village at the moment? There are only 20 ninjas in the village that have not applied for any leaves, nor in state of injury, Shizun said, she then checked another scroll on the other side of Tsunade's desk. Based on the reported location, Yuzumaki Naruto and Yamanaka Ino are currently going on a mission lead by Nara Shikamaru, not far from that location. The other nearest one is Akamichi Chaji. He was applied for a leave for a few days to check the new town that he built. Contact them, tell them to scout the location while waiting for the others to arrive, Sune commanded. She then gave several series of commands. Yes, Hokage Sama. The reporting Anbu was excusing himself to relay the Hokage's command. Chao Ji, POV. Ha, smells like the old days. I feel like a cowboy. Yeehaw. My mind was relaxed as I rode my horse on the Pinatown Road. The town was still half complete but it already took shape. I was wearing a cowboy hat, a leather belt, and leather boots. Cowboy-style baby. Some people said that I was crazy to build a town in this abandoned place with almost nothing besides sand on sight. Well, we all got pieces of crazy in us, though some have bigger pieces than others. Hey Mirasaki, are you sure this is the place? Yup, it should be around here. Though maybe it was sealed so I can't feel it anymore. It used to be around here. The crystallization of natural energy. The human of the past called it the Stone of Jell. 
I spent my money to build a tower here, not just because of a mere whim. Urasaki told me several stories of the past, including the story of the Jellal Kingdom and their Jellal Stone. Though it's true I want to build a western cowboy-themed town, my source of money would be past relics of the Jellal Kingdom buried somewhere around here. In spite of that, I won't rush things. I won't be able to mine it anytime soon, because I need more power and prestige to keep the Jellal Stone mine for myself. Do you wonder why I didn't tell the village, or anyone else in particular, as the old cowboy saying, it's better to keep your mouth shut and look stupid than open it and prove it. Though I didn't and won't look stupid by hiding that fact, I won't look smart either as I can't prove the truth about it, since I haven't found it myself. And to be honest, it's a selfish desire of mine to be the one in control, to be a tycoon. It's been my dream since I was a little boy in my past life, the reason. I can help many peoples if I have an astronomical amount of money. Again, as the saying goes, money makes the world go round people starving. Here, buy more food for everyone. They're sick. Call the best doctor. Do they lack education? Let's make a school and hire the best teacher. Everything will be solved if I had enough prestige and money. As I enjoying my afternoon riding my horse toward the horizon and reminiscing about my life and dream, I saw a Kanoa messenger bird. My mood immediately plummeted. I know what that entails, an urgent mission it is. Can't I relax for some more? Third POV. Meanwhile, with Shikamaru, he was leading Naruto and Ino to do a mission near the border of three countries, fire, wind tea to capture a lost pet ferret, and deliver it to its owner in a nearby village. Apparently, the owner was a leader of a nomadic tribe that has been moving from one place to another on the continent. Some of them were a merchant, some were a bard, and the rest were the children. But while on they were on their way to gave the animal back to its owner, they were attacked by a mysterious man clothed in knight-like armor. The said knight man was accompanied by the strange armored soldiers. Though the strange armored soldiers were easily defeated by Shikamaru, Naruto, the night man and the pet ferret all fell off a cliff. Currently, their whereabouts were still unknown. Still no news. Shikamaru frowned as he asked Ino for confirmation. No. Ino was concentrating on using her clan's mind-body switch technique and used a bird to scout the surrounding. As Ino was searching for Naruto, Shikamaru stood while leaned on a tree. He was guarding Ino and keep his eyes on the giant mechanical moving structure that indirectly causing Naruto to fell off a cliff. I found him. Ten minutes later, Ino finally shared her finding with Shikamaru. Can you fetch him? And be careful with that strange night man. I will investigate what that thing is immediately. Shikamaru flickered and went into the giant mechanical structure. While Ino too flickered and immediately went to fetch Naruto. After his short training with the Ambu Core, the main thing that he learned was to be stealthy. And after he learned how to literally move in shadow from Jenga, his stealth ability shot through the roof. Shikamaru went inside the mechanical structure unnoticed. He saw that inside there were many of the strange armored soldiers patrolling. So this is your base, huh? Without knowing the identity and the intention of the other party, Shikamaru won't act recklessly. So his priority was to stealthily gather all sorts of information from this place, and to be found out was not an option. It's only after more than an hour of infiltrates that he finally found a mechanical structure and found what appears to be a lab with many children in capsules. Holy hell, what kind of distorted place is this? Shikamaru frowned, he might be already familiar with killing but it's his first time to be in touch with a children's experimentation. Besides the capsules, he saw three persons, one man and two women talking to each other. The man wore a priest-like robe with a spectacle adorn his face, while the women wore a knight-like armor. Similar to what the knight man that attacked Aruto wore. Haido sama please forgive us. There's no news about the Jewel Stone yet, and the attack was failed. The two women were kneeling behind the priest-like man. The said man was staring at the children in the capsules. For the utopia, we must find it quickly. Else, the holy sacrifice of these children will be for naught. The man, Haido, turned his body and faced the two kneeling women. His face showed a benevolent smile, while his eyes reflected on what it's appeared to be a pity. It's all for the utopia, for the world where the weak won't be oppressed, and where there will be no war. For the utopia. Silently, Shikamaru went out of that place. When he was outside, he was a bit surprised to see a Konoha messenger bird flying around in a big circle, a bit far from where the mechanical structure was. Shikamaru whistled mimicking the bird's sound to attract the messenger bird. After a few tries, the bird finally approached him. The land of wind was attacked. Shikamaru kept on reading the message until his eyes glinted as he reaches the part where the attacker was described. Isn't that? Today was the day that Lee has his surgery done. The whole morning passed until afternoon came. The medical team lead by Tsunade herself finally out of the surgery room. Aye, guy come here and accompany that pupil of yours. The nervous guy snapped out of his stupor and bowed to Tsunade with his smile stretched from ear to ear. Yes, Tsunade Sama. As the evening came, all of the Kanoha 12 except Lee himself came to the hospital. They brought various kinds of flowers and fruits to congratulate Lee on his successful surgery. Thank you, everyone. It won't be long for me to recover. Everyone on site was relieved hearing Lee's words, especially Sakura. She was cried silently as she was happy that Lee finally full of hope again. She was full of gratitude towards Tsunade, and she having a thought to seriously learn medical knowledge, so that one day she'll be able to save people, and gave them the hope to live their life. 
I was told that she is Sunaid Sama, one of the three Senin and the best known medical nin in the world. She finalized her thought and firmed her resolve to shamelessly beg Sunaid to accept her as her student. If I want to learn, I will only learn from the best. Get well soon, so I can take my revenge to kick your butt. Sasuke finally showed his presence and talked to Lee, though he sounds like an arrogant prick toward the end. Thank you Sasuke Kun. I won't lose. Lee beamed as he gave Sasuke a thumb up. Chen, you'll lose. Sasuke smirked and turned his face away. He crossed his arms and leaned on the wall. Haha, <laughs> bushy brow. When you laid here in the hospital, I got stronger and learned a new technique, it's called Rasengan. I won't lose to you either. Naruto grinned, he firmly believed that he got stronger. On the side, Sasuke squinted his eyes as he thought. A new technique. I wonder which one is stronger, my Chidori, or his new technique. A while later, Sasuke snorted. Definitely mine. Speaking of a new technique, me and Akamaru also learned a few new tricks. I can't wait to have a spa with all of you. Especially you. I won't lose this time. Kiba said as he pointed Chaoji. As Kiba said that everyone remembered the thing that transpired when the Chunin exam was held. No one was able to forget the attack unleashed by Chaoji that day. Even Lee who was inside the evacuation site, shivered when he saw the sky turn red at that time. Meanwhile, the culprit was sneakily eating the fruit that everyone brought as Kiba suddenly pointed to him and make everyone's attention turn toward him. Damn I I can explain. Chaoji was embarrassed as he was caught red-handed meanwhile. Lee's lips were twitched seeing his friend ate almost all of his fruit even before he touched them. But the awkwardness quickly solved when the hot-blooded Kiba challenged Chaoji into a spa. They all then went into the training ground, including Lee as he, fortunately, was allowed to roam around, as long as he did not exercise his body before he fully healed. Moreover, Lee now got Sakura to pester him when he was feeling giddy to exercise. On the arena inside the training ground, Kiba stood in front of Chaoji who was eating yakitori. They were going to have a friendly spa, seeing Chaoji was still eating. Kiba did not lose his temper. He was already used to Chaji's antic all the way back from their childhood as they used to have a spar often with Kiba, mainly getting his ass kicked as a kid. This time you're going down. We'll see about that. The atmosphere between them getting tense as they stared at each other, Akamaru crouched and ready to leap any second. Suga, one as impatient as he was, Kiba started the spar with his first attack. Kiba spun and moves in Chaji's direction at high speeds, and delivers a drill body slam. As Kiba rushed at a straight line, Chaji casually dodged with a slight jump to the side. But then, Akamaru already transformed into Kiba using Jujin Henge too, and swiped his claw to rip Chaji apart. In turn, Chaji swiftly dodged by a hairbreadth, then grabbed Akamaru's hand before he slammed him to the ground. As Chaji was tangled with Akamaru, Kiba already rushed back to attack Chaoji. Kiba brandished his claw and coated his entire hand with Earth Chakra. His hand moved swiftly to form several hand seals, before he slammed his hand to the ground. Doten, Oadatami no Jutsu. Three slabs of tatami-like rock flipped on the ground and launched themselves toward their target's Chaoji direction. Quote Shikyaku no Jutsu. Four, Kiba crouched like a beast, then propelled himself before he swiped both of his claws to follow his previous attack. Chaoji smirked, he lifted the transformed Akamaru to shield himself from the rock slabs. Bam bam, bam Akamaru was hit by Kiba's attack, and transformed back into his original form, as he whimpered away when Chaoji threw him. Seeing Kiba swiped his claws to him, Chaoji parried both of Kiba's claws in succession with his left hand, while his right hand clenched on his waist. Haiken. 5. Chaoji swung his fist in a linear motion, fire enveloped his entire right arm before they were shot. From his training, Chaoji's fire nature transformation mastery was advanced by leaps and bounds. He even was able to execute more complicate fire jutsus without any hand seal, and with more precision and control. Kiba who was in motion to attack Chaoji was astonished, he hurriedly tried to move out of the attack trajectory. Alas, Kiba was still caught in the blast and was launched out of the arena. In a desperate attempt, Kiba used another technique. Doten. Sando no Jutsu. Six two enormous rock formations rose from the ground that closes in on Chaoji from the opposing side, in an attempt to squash him. Seeing two boulders close in, Chaoji cut both of his fists, and crossed in front of his chest, as he regulates his chakra. Ha! With a shout, he slammed his fists onto the boulders and crushed them to pieces. My win Chaoji smiled smiled as he posed a V sign with his hand. Then he glanced down seeing his half-eaten Toriyaki laid on the ground. But you too sure have improved, keep working hard. Woof, you're right Akamaru, we'll win next time. Kiba grinned hearing Chaoji's praise. It could be said that Chaoji was seldom praised him after their spa, and receiving a bit of his acknowledgement made Kiba pleasantly satisfied and swore to train even harder. That's awesome, Naruto excitedly said while he giddily jumped into the arena, fight me next. Without waiting for any confirmation, Naruto made a hand seal. Kejibunshin, no jutsu. A few shadow clones appeared with a poof of smokes. One of them stayed behind with the original, while the rest of Naruto's shadow clones rushed to Chaoji. While Chaoji casually dodged and countered Naruto's clone's attack, he pondered. How does he bear the pain when this many shadow clones are dead? Won't he go insane? Watch my new jutsu, Naruto shouted. His shadow clones moved his hand on top of the original Naruto, then a swirling ball of chakra taking shape on his left hand. Rasengan, seeing the approaching attack, Chaoji calmly responded. That technique indeed will be dangerous. Chaoji's right hand moved and parried Naruto's left hand with an inward motion. But, 
that only if that technique is hit. You're too slow Naruto. Naruto stumbled as his attack only hit the air, his momentum was too great for him to immediately stop. On the other hand, Chaoji turned his body to face Naruto's back, and his hand formed a tiger hand seal. Take this, a thousand years of pain. With no hesitation, Chaoji launched his technique which makes the onlookers felt shivers, and automatically felt a twitch on their butt. On this day, the peaceful village of Kanoha was suddenly startled by a primal roar that indicated extreme pain. Today, one of the Kanoha genin was destined to wallow in misery, as his bottom was marked deeply that it's etched in his mind for a long time. A A A A A A A A A Temujin P O V Temuha. Temujin what? This place looks familiar. I saw my little self amidst the burning buildings, hiding behind a half-collapsed wall while crouched and trembling in fear. On another side of the building, I saw there were several people wearing dark-colored cloaks that covered almost the whole of their bodies. The cloak peoples were wrecking things left and right, their eyes darted as if they were looking for something. Their smile looked wicked in my eyes, carrying a malevolent intent. It's that dream again. Though I knew that this was just a dream, I cannot help but threw my questions at the cloaked figures. Why? Why were you destroying my home? Why were you killing my family and my friends? Why will you have to be so cruel? My old grievance resurfaced once more. I knew that this was a dream and nightmare, yet it was so vivid in my mind. It happened so long in the past, yet the hoarse screams of those who were slaughtered still clear in my ears, screaming for help and begging for mercy. I want my revenge. I want those who did this to suffer. The scenes passed and became a bit blurry. My little self was standing on a cliff overlooking the burnt town in the distance. My hands clenched hard, and my teeth gritted in a grievance. Then, a figure approached me, my little self. With a gracious smile plastered on his face, that figure stretched his hand and offered me another purpose besides taking revenge. It's to make a utopia, a world without war and suffering. Haido Sama, come with me, child. Let's make the utopia together. Third POV inside a medium-sized tent, two figures could be seen laid down barrel-chested. One of them was a tall young man with white skin, neck-length blonde hair, green eyes, and on the left side of his chest was a kind of symbol. While the other one was a blonde-haired young man with whiskers on his cheeks. They were Temujin and Naruto. After time passed, Naruto's eyes fluttered before he slowly opened his eyelids, revealing his clear blue eyes to the world. Ugh, what happened? As Naruto recollected himself, his gaze swept to the side and saw Temujin laid beside him. Immediately, he willed himself to jump away and took a battle stance. Unfortunately for Naruto, his body did not react to his will, and instead Naruto felt an excruciating amount of pain assaulting him. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts Naruto gritted his teeth to hold the pain. My body is a mess. A ho ho. It seems that you're already waking up. You sure are healing fast, young man. An elderly man with a bulbous red nose came into the tent and grinned while talking to Naruto. He wore a brown tunic with a black undershirt and red sleeves, and a blue fez hat with a pink feather sticking out of it. My name is Kahiko. You can call me Grandpa Kahiko. Kahiko has neck-length white hair, a short mustache on both sides of his face, and a long beard of the same color. Overall, Coupled with his bulbous red nose, he gave people an impression of a drunkard old man. That aside, let me check your condition. Ugh, hearing a groan beside them, both Naruto and Kahiko turned their attention to another figure laid beside them. On the side, Temujin's eyes trembled before he woke up silently and eyed his surrounding. Temujin noted the presence of other people inside the tent and the whereabouts of his armor and weapon. Ha ho ho, it seems that the two of you have an incredible healing factor. Your previous wound should be healed no less than a week normally. Yet only two days have been passed since I took you here, Kahiko said while playing with his long beard. Meanwhile, Naruto was pissed when he saw Temujin was also treated by Kahiko. This was the man that attacks him before. His eyes were narrowed and he shouted. Why are you treating this devil? Kahiko-san meanwhile. It's been two days since Ino was looking for Naruto. She knew the path that Naruto was supposed to fell into. But to reach a deep ravine required not a small amount of effort, and coupled with the occasional avian chakra beast that attacked her, it forced her to take a roundabout way to reach the bottom of the ravine. So, this is the place where Naruto is supposed to fell into. Where's that idiot? Ino was ticked. This mission was supposed to be finished already. And yet, that idiot Naruto has too fell from a cliff with the required ferret to finish the mission, just great. With little choice in her hand, Ino hides before she took another bird, and controlled it to scout the surrounding for the umpteenth time these two days. This time, she controlled a dove to scout. Oh, there's a settlement. Ino controlled the dove to fly above the settlement. She watched the view of the said settlement through the dove's eyes. A nomad tribe made of a few dozens of peoples, possibly a traveling merchant, with only a handful of ordinary fighters among them. Okay, it's safe. Ino disconnected her control from the dove, and her consciousness returned to her own body. She immediately ran in the direction of the settlement. I swear I'm gonna give Naruto a nice kick on his balls, later Ino thought, while she clicked her tongue. When she reached the area near the settlement, Ino hides as she sneaked around to find more information about the settlement, and possibly find Naruto in the settlement. She knocked one of the lone people from the settlement, before she checked the man's memory using her clan technique, and found that Naruto was indeed inside the settlement, and they were treating him. Ino heaved a sigh of relief, she healed the knocked man's light injury that she inflicted before, and the man's backache as an apology. 
then laid him on a bush before she left him. So they're healing him. That idiot was lucky that it was not a slave trader that took him in. Ino then approached the settlement and asked one of the people there about Naruto. She was then escorted into the village head's tent where Naruto resided. Why are you treating this devil? Kahiko-san. She was surprised to hear Naruto suddenly shouted as she came into the tent. Her gaze lingered and fell onto Temujin's figure, and her eyes narrowed. She remembered that this man was the one who fought Naruto, and made the mission duration became longer than necessary. What are you doing here, idiot? Ino knew that Naruto was injured from the way he was wrapped with bandages like a mummy. But she asked regardless. Hey, Ino-san, don't aim you fool. And what is he doing here? Ino eyed Naruto as she pointed Temujin with her thumb. Screech screech Ino's attention was pulled by the familiar sound she heard. Her eyes glanced on the carpet laid near the edge of the tent a familiar ferret showed its head and looked around curiously. Narigi-chan, come, come here the expression of the old man was bubbly. He was happy seeing the ferret and motioned for the ferret to come to him. Alas, that ferret Narigi did not approach him. Instead, it came to Temujin and stroked his chest with its head. Narigi-chan the old man Kahiko looked devastated. He released a long exhale of air before he was back to his sense. Ino pieced one and one together and came to a conclusion. Kahiko-san is it? You are the one who requested a search for this ferret, aren't you? Kahiko straightened his clothes. He took a comb out of nowhere and combed his hair backward. His eyes narrowed as he puffed his chest and flexed his non-existent muscle. Where is my manor? Welcome to my humble abode, pretty lady. My name is Kahiko, the leader of this settlement, which also called the Rose Gentleman in the past. You may know or may not know some of my merit in the past regardless, it's an honor for me to host you here. Kahiko ended his speech with a bow of his body in a gentleman's way. Okay, so are you the one who requested a search for this ferret? Eno asked once more with a deadpan expression. Ah, yes. I'm the one who requested your village to search this majestic ferret of mine. Why? Are you interested in this ferret too? Kahiko tried to took Narigi to his embrace in a graceful manner, only to fail miserably as Narigi struggled from Kahiko's embrace and went back to Temujin's lap. In a sense, Naruto already brought that ferret back to you. So, a mission could be considered as complete, no. Ino said in a professional manner, if she had glasses on, then it would be more perfect. In response, Kahiko smiled in a refined manner. Of course, of course. But, can you stay here for a while? A chat maybe. Besides, look at your injured friend, he has to recuperate for a while before he would be able to move as freely as before. Ino glanced at Naruto, which he flinched in return and contemplated in silence. Although she would be able to hasten Naruto's recovery to a certain extent, it's true that Naruto still has to rest for a while to ensure his full recovery. Another point was Ino took note of Temujin's past behavior. He suddenly cropped up and attacked Naruto out of nowhere. He's a potential danger, so Ino knew that she has to find out Temujin's true motive. From there, she will decide which path she should take according to the situation. She'll stay, but not on this old man's invitation. She'll handle everything in secret later. She let out a sigh of annoyance at this old man's troublesome behavior. Maybe I was influenced by Chaoji and Shikamaru more than I know the ambition, pride, and confidence of Chaoji. The meticulous, skeptical, and ruthlessness of Shikamaru. More or less, she was affected and influenced by those traits. No, thank you for your offer, Kahiko-san. I'll be heading out to do another task, though I'll be back later to take this man with me. Ino pointed at Naruto as she talked. Not long after, she went out of the tent and flickered to a distance to watch the situation. She waited for the curtain of the night to fall before took an action herself. Meanwhile, at another location, Chaoji was attacked. He was surrounded by several people and was caught on fire. Around him, there were burnt marks, cracked rock, slash marks, and many other traces of attacks. My my nothing personal, kid. If you want to blame someone, then blame the one who posted your delicious amount of bounty in the bingo book. One of the men that surrounding Chaoji said, on his hand was a bingo book with one of the pages marked. On that marked page, Chaoji's profile could be seen written, coupled with the image of his figure pictured with the flaming sky of Kanoha during the end of the Chunin exam. As the background, the flame could be seen pictured on his fist as he took his battle stance. Akamichi Chaoji wanted, dead or alive. 10.500.000 Ryos The heir of Akamichi clan, proficient in close combat and fire nature transformation Current appraisal Tejutsu Bean in Jutsu Age and Jutsu D warning It's suspected that he learned the forbidden 8 gate technique Now, to collect the bounty Can't let that money waiting, right? The bounty hunters laughed at that remark. They were joyful that they finally would be able to enjoy more women and alcohol after they collect the bounty. He their cheers stopped when they heard chuckles from the burning person as professional bounty hunters. They were aware that the person they targeted has to be strong with that much bounty on his head. You ruin my mood. Those who attack should be prepared to be attacked. Those who want to kill should be ready to be killed. But rejoice. For you have gained the right to brag in the afterlife as the first person to witness the improvement of my technique. So goodbye. The fire on the surrounding surged and converged with Chaoji as the center. The surrounding light as the temperature continued to rise. The ground trembled as a huge figure rise from the earth and molded into a colossal sized figure on a single glance. The figure looked humanoid with an armor-like structure on its body, coupled with a huge sword it held in its hand. 
This was the improvement of the first technique Chaoji created, the Rock Titan. Slowly, Chaoji raised his hand and opened his palm, as the flame condensed into the Earth figure, setting it ablaze. Katen, Sirt recording to the Norse myth, Sirt was a flame giant who guarded the Muspelheim with his flaming sword. He was featured in both of the world's creation and destruction, as the one who will fight with Freyr, one of the gods in Norse mythology. And Chaoji improved his old technique from a mere rock golem, into one that inspired from mythology from his old world. As his prowess went up, he believed that he will have the prowess that would be able to contend with God. Hence he named it Sirt. He hated the fact that his fate laid in another's hand, so he wants to become stronger to be able to decide his own fate and destiny. As the giant flaming figure moves, trails of flames were left by it. Its sword shone with a burning light and emitted heat that was able to melt iron upon touch. Help! Nu! No, mo! Monster! Spare me! Scream of agony was clearly heard on the scorching desert, the trail of burning sand, and a portion of glass sands, could be seen on the desert sandy surface. The bounty hunters were terrified, not even once in their years of experience in this field they met with this kind of monster. Time passed, and by the time Chaoji was done with his victim, not even ashes were left in his wake. As expected, there's still so much room for improvement, Chaoji took a map from his pouch and checked his location. A bit more and I'll reach the place, Yosh. Shikamaru POV. It's been four days since I reported my finding back to Kinoha, which they replied that I need to stand by and watch the target while waiting for the reinforcement to arrive. Today, the reinforcement should arrive at noon. But, here's the catch, a new mission was issued to me. Not as a Kanoha's Chunin, but as a part of Kanoha's Anbu. And yes, the reinforcement should be an Anbu squad with Hayugiko as the leader. To be honest, I felt quite uncomfortable wearing a mask all day and acted so secretive every time. But duty was a duty. When did I become an Anbu? It's not long after the Chunin exam. I was summoned by the third Hokage. Then he asked me to be a part of Ambu. He listed the benefit and the responsibilities that I need to bear. How should I say it? It's a drag but Then I remembered him, Chaji. And then that bushy brows Lee. They're monsters shaped by hard work and the right environment. Maybe Ambu was the right environment for me. So I decided to accept it. And just like that, I trained and learned under the Ambu program about everything that needs to be known as an Ambu. Really, there's no rest for the wicked by the way. Because I just started. I still haven't got a moniker name yet. This honestly made me felt glad. They just sound so childish. Instead, I was called Unit 305. Sounds less childish and cooler for me. Core call, core call, call several hours later. Five peoples congregate not far from where I was. And whistled in a certain tone. Which is supposed to be a signal for me to approach them. And reporting any information that I have regarding the current mission. So I just did that. I flickered beside them with my Ambu attire on. And did a salutation. Captain. At ease. The captain commanded. I then proceeded to report all of my findings. Which honestly quite a lot. From the target's number of personnel. Their base's infrastructure, the children inside, the weird armored soldier, even the knight-like man that attacked Naruto that I suspected to be a member of the target's group. From the captain's disposition when I told him about the children inside, his disposition fluctuates, and he emitted a bit of killing intent from that alone. I dare to conclude that this mission would be a bloody one. Sigh what a drag not that I repulsed by it as I knew the target's immoral act, but it's just troublesome. The captain of this squad was a censor, including him. There were four censors in this squad. As soon as the captain briefed the plan, we all moved. The censors split to guard the four cardinal directions, with the captain guarding the direction of the main entrance of the giant mechanical structure. I along with another Amber codename Weasel, sneaked inside the structure, with me mainly as the guide and Weasel the main lead of this operation. As we proceed inside, Weasel Sam briefed me on a few technical things. Our main objective was the one called Hido the leader, to extract any information from him. And with saving the children as our side objective, we're allowed to eliminate any obstacles. That too said to kill the others beside him. From this minimal information, I was able to deduct that this weasel was either a Yamanaka or a part of the torture and interrogation force, or perhaps both. Or maybe not. Anyway, slowly we sneaked inside the mechanical structure while avoiding most of the patrolling guard. By the time we reached the main hall through the ventilation, almost half an hour already passed. In there, we saw our target Hido seated on a throne while reading a book. His chubby cheek leaned on his right hand while his left hand holding a book in a relaxed manner. Weasel Sen sneaked around while silently getting close to the target's location. He took out his tanto and swung his hand to kill Hido swiftly from his side. Suddenly, a blurry figure descended from above and attacked him. Fortunately, Weasel Sen was able to retract his hand and defended himself from the attack. I still watch from the ventilation, both for securing a way out in case of unexpected things happen, and to keep an eye for any reinforcement from outside. Kaihaha, you mongrels. How dare you attack Hido-sama? A figure of a white-skinned woman with long blonde hair and radish-colored eyes appeared standing beside the throne. The woman wore a turquoise knight's uniform with a spike jutting out the top of each shoulder guard, coupled with her pale skin. It weirdly accentuated her red eyes, made it appear more charming. Pa! Hido closed the book in his hand and slowly lifted his head to gaze at his assailant. Hum! That outfit and that manner I suppose you're a shinobi, aren't you? Hido's eyes stared at Weasel-san's figure. Then suddenly, his eyes darted in my direction. Could it be, you can come out now? I know you're there. Third POV. You can come out now. 
I know you're there. Haido calmly turned his head to the direction where Shikamaru was hiding. A small smile creeped out on his face, not coming out. Time passed, but still, Haido patiently gazed at the place where Shikamaru was. Well then, suit yourself. Haido shook his head, and he opened his book once more, and immersed himself in the book. It was as if everything happened was not a threat at all to him. Meanwhile, the Ambu Weasel was silently having blows exchanges with the woman in the knight's armor. Clang. The sound of steel clash resounded as Ninja Tanto and a knight long sword hit each other. Feeling a bit frustrated with the stalemate, the woman knight's attacks were getting wilder and wilder than before. Kimira, end it now. I want to concentrate on my reading, as you wish, Haido-sama. The woman, Kimira, kicked her opponent as her weapon parried his attack. Her attack was dodged, but instead of retreating, Kimira turned into a blur and launched another kick which was again dodged by her opponent. A few more flurries of attacks were launched by her, only to be dodged by a hairbreadth. Look into my eyes. Getting frustrated, Kimira suddenly shouted as she blocked an attack from Weasel. She transformed herself into a human-bat hybrid form with a feral appearance. Her opponent, the Weasel, suddenly became sluggish and slashed at an empty space in front of him. Kaiha, huh? With my illusion power. You will die here. Watch me Haido Sama. Bang. Just before Kimira attacked her opponent, a hybrid human wolf person blasted the door of the room open. She walked inside the room with her hand hung on the air choking Shikamaru. The wolf-like woman then bowed her head in a humble manner in front of Haido, without releasing her grip on Shikamaru. I found a sneaking rat, Haido Sama. Good job, few guy with a slight smile on his face. Haido nodded and smirked at the miserable figures of Shikamaru and Weasel San. Now, finish them. At the same time, outside of the mechanical structure, four figures could be seen standing guard with their utmost focus. They wore the standard Kanoha and be uniform with a tanto on their back. Captain, it's been quite a long time past. Are you sure that they're okay? You know that one is just a Chunin, and the other is a newcomer. Won't they meet with a mishap? One of the Anbu with an ape-like face mask asked as he looked a bit restless. The captain shook his head, he signaled the person to calm himself and back to his assigned position. The Anbu captain gazed at the giant mechanical structure before him and sighed. If they're an ordinary Chunin and recruit, then indeed I'll be worried dispatching just the two of them alone. But, the Anbu captain remembered the fifth Hokage instructions and chuckled in a mocking manner. One is a freak of nature and bordering insane, while the other is a genius recommended by the third himself. Besides, the Ambu captain shuddered for some reason when he recalled things about something. May God give mercy to you because I'm sure that those two won't give you any. Now, finish them. As you wish, Haido Sama. Fugo. The wolf like woman grinned as she tightened her grip with one hand and pierced Shikamaru's chest with another one of her hands. Splurt, yes. Haido Sama. Kimira swung her sword vertically and beheaded her opponent swiftly. She showed a sadistic smile on her face as she saw her head rolled down on the floor. Clatter both Fugai and Kimira turned their head to where Haido was seated. They're already tar, as they wanted to report their task. Their word was cut. On one side, Fugai had her eyes bulged in disbelief as her prey suddenly turned into a dark shadowy figure. And suddenly some shadowy blade stabbed her in the exact same place she stabbed him before. Boo. Shikamaru came out of his hiding from the shadow, and the figure caught by Fugai turned into a shadowy figure that stabbed Fugai. Guy. On the other side, the Ambu's weasel figure turned into smokes. Crack Kimura's neck was producing a loud cracking sound, as it was twisted in a weird angle by the smoky figure. Meanwhile, the head that rolled on the ground was also turned into smoke, and as the smoke changed back into a human shape, the figure of an Ambu wearing a weasel mask could clearly be seen. Ah, music in my ears. Both the weasel and Shikamaru were stood beside their opponent unscratched. Weasel San, your plan is really troublesome. Why are we have to pretend to lose before we strike back? Shikamaru who wore a blank mask on his face, hunched his back as he sighed lazily. It's a drag hearing Shikamaru's answer, Weasel chuckled and answered with a coy tone. He isn't it fine. Can't you feel the joy when their hope turned into despair? 305, it's fine to have fun sometimes pa. In the middle of the room, Hado's eyes bulged in disbelief. His book fell as his grip loosened. Gritting her teeth, Fuga transformed her form to that of a wolf-like monster, which resembles that of a werewolf. In her frustration and desperation, she let out a loud howl. The wound on her chest stopped bleeding, and as the result of her howl, the glasses in the room were shattered. Raw. Shut up. Weasel immediately flickered behind Fugai. He swung his tanto downward, and it pierced Fugai's skull all the way from top to bottom. Your voice is too damn loud. Weasel grinned behind his mask as he walked slowly toward Haido. Bind him please, 305. Shikamaru made a ram seal. Then Haido's shadow suddenly flickered and rose before it constricted him and bound him in place. Hurry up then, Weasel San. Well, well, let's get to work, shall we? Haido Sama. Weasel's face was covered with a mask even then. Haido was sure that he saw a smoke that shouldn't belong to a human. Swish fa, that's the fourth batch of bounty hunters. I wonder who posted my bounty in the bingo book. In a desert, Chaoji could be seen standing among a few charred corpses. His eyes showed an indifferent light looking at the corpses on the ground, yet his face showed an amused expression as his eyes darted on the bingo book. That aside, 10 million Ryo. Ah, uh, my bounty is really high compared to other Genin or even Chunin in here. And there's a Suma Sensei 2 priced at 35 million Ryo. Wicked. 
Putting the book away, Chao Ji lifted his head and saw a line where the sand met with the sea on the horizon. Near the shore, a shipwreck in the middle of a sandy beach was surely stand out like a sore thumb. In his curiosity, Chao Ji approached the said shipwreck after he assessed the situation around it. Yosh, safe. Not long after he stepped his feet inside the shipwreck, Chao Ji found many big transparent capsules containing humans inside. Few of them were showing a sign that they're possibly alive. But most were just lifeless bodies submerged in a liquid. Seeing this, Chao Ji couldn't help but frown. He checked many other capsules with similar conditions. What actually happened here? Who are they? Chao Ji scowled. He's kind of used to murder, but somehow he still couldn't stomach human trafficking and the like. In his mind, it's one thing to take one's life, but it's just too much if you take their freedom. Moreover, they're not yours in the first place, so how could you sell them as if you own them in the end? You need either a powerful might or a good brain in your head to survive. No, you need both. Chao Ji continued to proceed further inside the shipwreck, and he saw a room with many panels. Many peoples will just wonder about their use and move on, but Chao Ji was tongue-tied. This isn't real. This world has this kind of advanced technology too. All this while, the most advanced technologies Chao Ji ever saw in Kanoha were limited to a transmitter, lamp, fan, and the like. Seeing something as advanced as a control panel of a warship in this world was mind-blowing for Chao Ji. How is that possible something as advanced as this exists, when I even haven't seen a TV? Scratch that, there's not even a proper radio. Chao Ji was actually just a layman in the technology field. He saw an advanced-looking machine, and he assumed that it's high-end stuff. Inside the ship's ruin, Chao Ji continued to comb the place until he detected a chakra fluctuation. It's quite a simple detection technique actually, though the perk or sites where user has to own a high chakra control and sensitivity to be able to master it. Someone is here. No, there are two of them. Are they an ally, an enemy? Instead of waiting and watching patiently, Chao Ji decided to take the initiative to approach the persons he detected instead. He did that because of a simple reason. Chao Ji could feel that one of the two newcomers owned a huge pool of chakra, and there's no hiding place where he was currently, except for the obvious big sphere in the middle of the room. So, choosing between the passive and the active side, Chao Ji chooses the latter with the confidence that he had the power to back his action. Moreover, they're already at a close distance as Chao Ji knew the other party also took the initiative to approach him. Apparently they were also able to detect him. Perhaps their sense and ends. Clang, the sound of shurikens clashed against each other in the dark intersection way as both Chao Ji and the unknown person took the aggressive stance with both parties had no way to assess the other's intention. Don't take it wrong, this world is a dog-eat-dog -dog world. That much Chao Ji already knew, and he already gave up his hopeful notion to live a peaceful life in this new world. He reminisced his naive hope when he's just a boy, and chuckled. In this shinobi-filled world, trickeries were a common tactic, and deception was the basic. In this world, the common words like two-faced or even the exaggerated sentence such as flatten the mountain were elevated from a figurative into a literal one. And that's also why the practice of fight first talk later was the most common one. Because if you relax your guard especially on an unknown territory, then you might find yourself above Daddy Yama's lap in front of the gate of hell in the next moment. Bang. Chao Ji jumped back as a purple-colored smoke bomb landed in front of him. Dang it, poison. Chao Ji made a hair hand sign in haste, and his mouth was puffed before he blew the purple smoke away using futon. Die topper technique. One swish spears made of sand were launched toward Chao Ji almost at the same time as he executed his futon. Die topper technique. Caught off guard. Chao Ji twisted his body and stepped to the side to dodge the barrage of the sand spears. Identify yourself. Chao Ji heard another party's shout as he dodged the sand spears. Though, as prideful as he was, Chao Ji released an attack of his own to probe before he answered, Katen, and in two a barrage of a fist-sized ball of flames was launched, and judging by the sound of their step, they were nimble enough to dodge Chao Ji's attack. Ha! Huh, Chao Ji San. One of the two people was taken aback as he identifies Chao Ji, when the room was lit for a moment, because of Chao Ji's fire attack. Hey, you know me. Chao Ji stopped his attack as he heard that the other party knew him, though he still didn't let his guard down, because he thought that maybe they knew him from the bingo book. Who are you? Clack, my name is Kenkuro. I'm sure that we have met at the Chunin exam. Kenkuro searched his pouch and took a lighter to brighten the surrounding. After confirming it was really Chaji, Kenkuro heaved a sigh of relief. I was informed that you're one of the reinforcements sent by Kanoha. We're here checking this ship wreckage after we pull our camp back by several miles away. By the way, you remember my brother Gara, right? Gara crossed his arms in front of his chest as he slightly nodded when he looking at Chaji. Gara kept his mum, though Chaji could feel that he still exuded a strong murderous aura. Ah, yes. The throwing tantrum boy, how's the raccoon? Chaji grinned as he teased Gara. Chaji didn't know why. But seeing Gara like this made him want to do something to him. After thinking for a while, Chaoji decided to just do it. You're such a mama boy. Hearing Chaoji's words, Gara snapped. Sand immediately rushed toward Chaoji, intending to crush him to a bloody pulp. ESK, you're too slow. What are you? A turtle. With a body flicker technique, Chaoji disappeared from his initial place and appeared above Gara, with his palm already swung to reach Gara's head. The sand was immediately converged above Gara's head, forming a shield to protect him from Chaoji's palm. Child's play, scatter. Chaoji twisted his arm in a screw motion as his palm drilled the sand shield. 
The sand shield did not even last for more than a second, before Chao Ji's hand grabbed Gara's head. Got you. I take my words back, you're slower than a turtle. With a thought, Chao Ji absorbed Gara's negative energy in his excess chakra, while injecting him with a minuscule amount of natural energy to soothe Gara's mind. Chao Ji knew from the Sandame Saratobi Hiruzen about Gara, a Jinchuriki of one tail, a kid raised as a weapon, loathed by his surrounding, and a childhood filled with betrayal. Unlike before, Gara didn't directly faint, and instead, he felt as if an itchy spot that he can't reach for all of his life finally scratch right. Gara felt relaxed, his anger and his negative emotion went away just like that. Kankoro was dumbfounded. He still didn't get what happened, and was too stunned to actually did something. The heck? Consider it me doing a favor to you, raccoon boy. You have to repay me in the future, Chaji said as he patted Gara's shoulder. Chaji stared at the duo siblings. One was still Jorogape, while the other looked as if he was high on a drug. Suddenly, the three of them turned their attention to one of the halls on the other side of the room. Looks like we got another company. Is she one of yours? Both Gara and Kankoro shook their head, not knowing who the new guest was, they too became vigilant. Well, Gara tried too with his mind still need some time to get used to the sudden clarity. Alright, auntie, you can come out now. Seriously, your hiding skill is horrible. Days before, Eno POV quote the sun rose. Last night I checked this Temujin person's mind when he was asleep and found that he was hailed from a kind of peace-seeking organization with not so peaceful method. He had quite a tragic background and his line of thinking was currently clouded by the doctrines of a person called Hido. At least he's not meant us any harm. He was just curious about us but decided to test the water by himself. Though I pity him, I won't meddle with his business as long as he's not bothering mine either. Remembering it's been days since I took a proper bath, I decided to took Naruto and ended this mission early. So I went to his tent as soon as the sun took a peek on the horizon. Wake up, Bakaruto. Ugh, five more minutes after a few tries of failed attempts to wake Naruto up. I decided to do it the hard way. You leave me no choice, Naruto. If you want to blame someone, blame yourself for ignoring me. I took a handful of salt from the nearby jar, open his mouth, and pour the salt inside. Then one, two, and poo. 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 Tease, salty. Naruto suddenly jumped from his bed, but his body still ate, so he still felt uncomfortable moving suddenly like that. Water. I need water. Naruto coughed continuously. He's trying his best to get rid of the salt in his mouth. Hurry up, you idiot. We're gonna leave soon. I chuckled as I watched his suffering. It's relieving my stress somehow. Maybe I should do it more often. I wonder, why are you so hasty? I'm not even healed properly, Budaino. Heck, I could die from choking that goddamn amount of salt. What? Did you just call me? How dare he, though he's sweating bucket right now. I feel obliged to teach him a proper way to address a lady. I raise my left foot and pa, stomp his crotch with my heel. Gibberish. I saw Naruto's eyes bulge, his mouth open with no sound came out, and he exuded an aura of despair. Serve him right. What did you say, Bakaruto? Tears flow out of his eyes, he tried to utter a few words. But no sound came out. I can't hear you and he's passed out. There you go, a fast tutorial about how to tell an idiot that he made a mistake. The original purpose has not been achieved. But at least now he knew that he made a mistake if he's messing with me. The details were not important, at least the result speaks for itself. Screech. Hum. A particular bird's cry took my attention as it approached this location. I went out of the tent to take a look. And true to my thought, it approached me and landed on my outstretched arm. My attention was focused on a letter tied on its foot. It seems like an urgent mission was issued. Land of Winds Border. Current time, Chowji POV. Alright auntie, you can come out now. Seriously, your hiding skill is horrible. I click my tongue in half annoyance. My eyes locked at one spot in the seemingly empty hallway. Come on, I know you're there. I took a pebble and flicked it toward her direction. A figure emerged from the wall. I could see a smile showed on her face. That made her look as if she was amused. Ha ho ho, it seems that you really have a good sense. What's your name? Handsome. I saw that she appears like she was in her early 20 with a busty body and seductive look. But I knew better. I could feel what's hidden beneath. A body that is more masculine and muscular than every man in this room. So no, thanks. She's talking to you. I sincerely patted Kankoro's shoulder, took a step back, and gave him a thumb up, which earned me a confused look from him. Good luck, Kankoro-san. Ha! Huh. Kankoro was caught off guard. He still hasn't caught the meaning behind my actions. What does that even mean? Nice, apparently he's a foolish virgin who not even understands a woman's flirt. Less talk, more action. As I said that I slapped him to give him an encouragement. I'm not talking to him, I'm talking to you. She glared at me, her face clearly showed that she was irritated. What's wrong? Hum, don't you think this big sister is beautiful? She approached us, her hips swayed exaggeratedly, and her eyes winked flirtatiously. Auntie, no uncle. I already saw your true appearance, and it doesn't match with your act at all. Rather, it's disturbing. Extremely so. You're not my cup of tea. I answered tactfully. 
I don't want her slash him whatever it is to go berserk because of a slight mistake in words, yes. My friends here are single. Again, I promoted Gara and Kankoro to that masculine auntie. I patted their shoulders which earned glares from both of them which I ignore, and in need of partner too. No, thank you. I'm better off alone. Both Kankoro and surprisingly Gara rebutted my claim swiftly. Would they know her true appearance too or they just don't like women in general? Are you too perhaps? Oh my as that came into my mind, I took a step away from them. A look of understanding flashed on the woman's eyes, so that's why she let out a breath of relief, while massage her own temples. I thought that I'm not attractive anymore. No, we're not. Kankoro has again rebutted me. A look of confusion appeared on Gara's face. What's that mean? Kankoro briefly explained the meaning of these acts and words. And before it's done, a wave of sand launched to attack me. Die. Gara gritted his teeth as he attacks me a few more times, while I just chuckled and continuously dodged. I mean it. Die. Unknown to us, the woman has stripped herself naked without any rhyme nor reason. Hey hey boys, see big sister here. Ain't I gorgeous? Kenkuro was having a nosebleed, Gara was retained his stoic face, while I tried my best to hold my puke. This escalated quickly from disturbing to disgusting. Look look, she approached me slowly, making my face became even more green with disgust with every step she took. Come and play with big sister. But before she was able to come close, a shuriken was launched in front of her. Halt your dirty act, you disgusting witch. All of our attention was attracted by the newcomers. It seems like these newcomers were able to come unnoticed because our attention was too focused here. I came from the sand camp after they said that the one responsible for this mission is here. But what I see are the sea, the fish, and the audacity of this bitch. Eno, it was my dear. I quickly flickered to her side, ignoring Naruto who was having a nosebleed seeing the naked figure of that woman. What are you doing here? A smile couldn't help but escape from my mouth. I held her hand and stared straight at her eyes. I saw a tint of pink hue adorned her cheeks. So cute. Is that a new hep in you wear? It matched well with your eyes. I got a mission from Hokage-sama to aid the sand village to guard the border for a few days. It's not just me. Kurunai-san, along with a few more shinobis were waiting at the camp. She slicked her hair behind her ear. Hum, I bought this happen a week ago. Seeing us flirting, the unknown woman apparently got irritated. Hey, hey, what are you doing there? She called us seductively hiding her actual mood. Eno's eyes turned feral with a snake-like slit on her eyes when she looked at her. You, just shut up and wait. Well, no one likes their man to be seduced like that. You, just shut up and wait. Eno was irritated. She already graciously forego that woman's disgusting behavior. Yet she still dared to bother her. Who are you anyway? Regardless of her mood, Eno still feel the need to probe the other party for her identity. Before she decided to do anything rash. Do any of you know her? Eno's eyes scanned Gara and Kankoro who shrugged their shoulder and shook their head. Nope, we're having our own fun exchange some greetings when she popped out of nowhere. I assume you're also from Kanoha too, aren't you? Eno nodded her head explaining her mission. After that, she snapped her head to the naked figure of the unknown woman. Do you care to elaborate? Or do I need to ask you in a not-so-gentle way? Believe me, it won't be pleasant for you if I do. A grin showed itself on Eno's face as she continued, though I'll be sure to enjoy it. Yeah, I really want to see you try, little girl. The unknown woman squinted her eyes, she took a step back and crouched to pick a sword among the things she undid earlier. I wonder whether you have something to back your words up. Do you need help? Chaoji lightly asked Eno which she just replied with a smile. And she shook her head telling Chaoji that he doesn't need to help her. So Chaoji took a few steps back and leaned his body against the wall, with the intention to help her if things go awry. And as soon as the woman grabbed her sword, she vanished from her place and was already in the air in motion to swung her sword downward. Let's see how your pretty face will look with a scar on it. Clang. A sound of sword and metal chunk clashing was heard, Eno substituted herself with a nearby metal chunk from the torn wall of the ship, and went behind her opponent with a kunai held on her hand. She aimed at the armpit area as to not cause any fatal strike, she wanted to incapacitate her opponent, not to kill her. Bad move girl. The unknown woman took a step forward and lunged sideways to dodge Eno's attack. Then with a fluid motion, she twisted her hip along with it. She rotated her body to ram onto Eno's abdomen with her shoulder. The woman's sword already moved to stab Eno's lower abdomen upward from below, following her rotating motion. Unfortunately for her, at the same time her sword touched Eno's body. It puffed into smoke. Jinjutsu. Hell viewing technique the real Eno was stood upside down on the ceiling concentrated on her opponent. She heaved a sigh of relief. Then she smirked clone bait. Classic. Though it works every time. Now to render her unconscious. Eno jumped a little and landed beside her opponent. She turned her attention to Chaoji and showed a peace sign to him which earned her a chuckle from Chaoji before his eyes went wide. Watch oh quote boom crackle a shockwave blasted Eno meters away 
and before she was able to stabilize herself on her two feet, she was caught by Chaoji. Chaoji merely frowned as he was barely affected due to his strong physique, and he's a distance away from the explosion source. Kenkuro was shielded by his puppet, while Gara was still stoic as always, and was covered by his sand. As this happened, the woman was nowhere to be seen. Is everyone okay? Are you okay, Eno? Eno coughed a bit, her body was covered with dust. I underestimate her. Eno gritted her teeth, she got mood swings rather quick lately, perhaps her guest of the month already near. But you did, Gara affirmed Eno's words with a nod. Now we need to chase after her, luckily she's stealthy but not that fast. I'm sorry Eno felt ashamed of herself. She extended her apology to everyone. Don't worry. Let's just make sure that we catch her. Kenkuro waved his hand. They then began their chase to catch the escaping person. Alive if possible. The sand duo did not dare to blame Eno, especially since they saw Chaoji's demon-like figure stood behind her, sending them a glare full of warning that promising a lot of pain if they dare to blame her. Meanwhile, somewhere in the land of water inside an underground lab, Kimimaru was laid on top of a stone table with an array of complicated runes covered it. Beside him was Orochimaru laid on top of a similar stone table. Kimimaru's eyes were serene, with a tinge of fulfillment filled them. Your sacrifice won't be wasted. We'll finally become one, Kimimaru. Orochimaru feels excited, soon soon. I will have a body greater than before. Kimimaru was one of his favorites because of his high potential, hence he was marked by the Heaven Seal. So far, only three peoples were marked by Orochimaru with the Heaven Seal. The first one was Enko, his first successful product. Then the second was Kimimaru because of his high potential, and Kekai Jenkai. Though he has a disease, Orochimaru was able to fix it recently. And the last one was Achiha Sasuk, the one that Orochimaru deemed as the best vessel for him, which unfortunately now coops somewhere in Kanoha. Orochimaru needs to be patient and buy for time to look for information and planning, before he was confident to take Sasuke with him from Kanoha. And time was the thing he lacks right now considering the grave state his body was in. Your wish is my command, Orochimaru-sama. Orochimaru smiled. The thing he loves the most about the thing his sensei taught him was the way his sensei brainwashed people. And boy, he implemented it seamlessly in all of his subjects. After all, the thing every leader yearns for is a blindly loyal subordinate that follows his or her superior's command to the letter even at the cost of their lives. Good boy, Kimimaru. You're such a good boy Orochimaru unconsciously hissed amidst his excitement, then a creepy laugh sounded from him, clearly signifying how happy he was. Now, let the process begin. Ranki, POV. My name is Ranki, no family name. I served under Haido-sama as one of his trusted knights. It's just between us, but I was sure that I was Haido-sama's favorite. Why? Chem PH. With my graceful white skin which was not pale like the others, my beautiful frilly blonde hair, and mesmerizing light violet eyes. I was very sure that the others cannot even be mentioned in the same breath as the great eye. Not to mention my chest and bust size are a tad more bountiful than theirs. But despite my succubus-like body, I was not chosen as Haido-sama's trusted aide because of that. No, aside from my look, I had great confidence in my strength. In the first place, I was gifted with a talent in martial art and my strength was considered to be the upper scale of all of the knights under Haido-sama. I can even crack a boulder with a swing of my sword. But, again, despite all of my gifts, I was not able to contend with a girl younger than me. Scratch that, she's even looked to be half of my Arno. She's younger, just a little bit younger than me. Yes, a little bit. You saw nothing. You heard nothing, am I understood? Am I understood good okay? Back to the topic. Where was I? Oh, right, the little girl. That little girl was dangerous, she's nimble and full of tricks. On top of everything, she's able to utilize an illusion. It's like Chimera's power, a little colleague of mine. That nimble girl held various unknown powers. I can't fight against her without plenty of preparations. As the cherry on top of my reason to run away, there were three men beside her, and I'd bet all of my money that they're stronger or not as strong as her. So escape was my most viable option. So I whipped my legs furiously to get away from that damnable crowds as soon as possible. I love my life, and I plan to cherish it. Though Haido-sama planted a piece of jello stone inside me that granted me power, there's held too many unknown factors. With that in mind, the choice was obvious. Run. Third POV. That thought surely can run fast. Eno gritted her teeth. She was angry because she underestimated her opponent resulting in her opponent fleeing. Chaji shook his head. He ran just behind Eno to let her reflect on her own mistake. He shall provide just the minimal amount of help and consolation. Because although she's his girlfriend, in time of mission that meant nothing at all. If he pampers her, in the future her carelessness could cost her even her life. And they all knew that. Not long after Chaji, Gara, and Kenkuro decided to split to flank the target from other directions, while Eno chases her directly from behind. Chaji flickered ahead, Kenkuro dashed on the wall, and Gara rode his sand. Just minutes after they split, Chaji caught up with the unknown woman. Not letting her exploit more tricks, Chaji used an Earth-style technique to almost instantly erect an Earth wall right in front of her. That made the unknown woman suddenly took a sharp turn. Gara was the second person to catch up, and with a wave of his hand, sand was assuming a wave-like form. That quickly cut another route for the woman to escape. 
In response, the woman suddenly spun her leg and kicked a shredded wall next to her, then immediately slipped inside. Apostrophe fuck, they're everywhere. Ranky, the unknown woman thought in half panic. Should I risk it and face them? She doesn't realize that a gaping puppet construct fell toward her from above in her panicked state. Clack. The puppet closed its gaping maw as soon as Ranky contained inside it. Got you, woman. Kankoro grinned. He looked proud. Bang. Not so fast. A hand suddenly punched through the puppet's gut as it ripped its way out. Now you see me in this form. You need to die. A muscular figure could be seen standing on top of the remain of Kankoro's puppet. She stood at a height almost reaching 3 meters with bluish pale skin, and had a muscular body comparable to the Hulk. On her head, a kind of metal rod was seen in a manner like the Frankenstein of the old movie. For the love of the sand, what are you? Kankoro was shocked speechless. The woman he just captured went from a sexy temptress into a muscular lumberjack uncle in no time. Chaji, Gara, and Ino who just arrived was also surprised to see the transformation of the woman. Though, unlike Kankoro, they quickly snapped off of their trance and launched their moves. A wave of sand swiftly flowing before clutch Ranky's body and limbs to hold her in place. An earth wall was erected by Chaji in front of Kankoro, who has still muttered my puppet continuously to cover him, before he was dragged behind by Ino. Snapped out of it. Useless. A shout accompanied by a blast of lightning and shockwaves stronger than before suddenly erupted. The metal's wall around Ranky was bent, and the thick earth wall was crushed. Luckily, the four Shinobis were not affected that much by the blast, thanks to the earth wall shielded them earlier. You all forced my hand to use this power and assume this form. You have to taste the consequence. Ranky gritted her teeth, she hated this form. Though it gave her immense power. It made her look like a hulking monster. The first time she transformed in the past, she bawled for a few nights, thinking she had lost her beauty. Fortunately, she was able to control the transformation after quite a long time of gruesome training. Ranky clenched her hands into fists, which charged with an immense amount of electricity, and lifted them to slam them to the ground. Woke plasma show right bracket before Ranky could complete her move, her head was suddenly grabbed as she was kneed on her jaw by Chaoji. That one hit had an immediate effect as it rattled her brain and stunned her. The electricity that she charged was dispersed into the surrounding. It can't be. They're this strong. Was the last thing that flashed inside her mind before she was stunned senseless. Say H, just sleep auntie uncle. I'll just call you that, you won't mind, won't you? After Chaji said that, he looked at her for a second, before he twisted his hips and slammed Ranky's head face first into the ground with a reverse roundhouse kick to the back of her head with minimal amount. He almost pitied her, but hesitation was proven to be fatal in this dog-eat-dog -dog world. Gara stepped forward with Kankuro after he was sure that Ranky was unconscious and reverted to her normal human form. I'll secure the perimeter, she's a Yamanaka, right? Gara asked which earned a nod from both Chaoji and Ino. Then it will be easier for all of us. Ms. Yamanaka, could you search her memory related to the invasion, this ship, the one behind her, and the like? I can. Ino curtly replied, though she was actually eager to prove her worth as she made an almost fatal mistake before. Then please, do so. Gara buried Ranky's whole body with sand, leaving only her neck upward. As an extra precaution, Kankoro injected her with a dose of paralyzing poison through needles. There's nothing wrong to be more cautious, right? Ino approached the unconscious Ranky. She stared at her now closed eyes. Ranky's complexion was a bit pale as a result of lack of blood flowing to her head. Her lips were a bit darker in color as a result of the poison. All in all, she was quite pitiful to behold. Chaji standing beside Ino to protect her if an unexpected thing happened, heightened all of his senses to watch the surroundings. With a soft inhale of her breath, Ino stretched her left hand and touched Ranky's forehead as she closed her eyes. Nimpo. Psycho Denshin. 1. A slash N. Legilimans. Lol XD. Guys. Hello. Meanwhile, Naruto was currently lost inside the ship's ruin somehow. Anybody here? Chaoji san, Ino san, Gara san, and Puppeteer san, but let's just ignore the fox boy for now. Where are you, guys? This day Kanova's shopping district was full of hustle and bustle. Crowds from either Kanova and other places were mingling together in the trade of various things. Besides the civilian, some genins could be seen doing their missions ranging from helping people shopping, escorting someone even searching for a certain cat owned by the daimyo's wife. Two weeks have passed since Team 10 cleared their objective in each of their respective mission, due to the result of the investigation, concluding that the perpetrator behind the force that attacked the Land of Wind's border was the man called Haido, which was already have been captured. The whole chain of missions were declared as a done deal. Though some mishap can't be helped, few jewel stones as it was called by Haido, were robbed on their way back to Kanoha. It was unknown who the culprits were as they did not wear any village symbol. The escort team was slaughtered, only leaving two persons alive. That was saved by the reinforcement from Kanoha's village. That was one heck of a mission, I was on a vacation for pizza's sake. Chaji swore in colorful words as he gobbled Jakaniki before him. It's so damn frustrating. Beside him was Ino who leaned her back onto the soft pillow chair. 
while poked and softly pinched Chaji's back once in a while. She didn't say a thing and just hummed in her own rhythm. In front of them was Shikamaru. He promptly ignored Chaji's ranting and silently ate his own food. He knew that Chaji was calm, collected, and mature man, but he showed his childish and ranting demon side more often than not when it was just three of them. Thanks for the food. The trio had done eating, but they still seated lazily. Shikamaru, when will you get yourself a girl? Should I introduce someone to you? Ino started to nudge Shikamaru with her teasing. She then began to seriously ponder. How about Momo-chan? She's cute and kind of mature too, although she came from a civilian family. If not, how about Shizuka-chan? She's the gentle type. I'm sure that you'll like her. Shikamaru groaned as he heard Ino's non-stop question. He clutched his head as he really became dizzy with Ino's bombardment. Sometimes Shikamaru thinking whether Ino uses a Jinjutsu along with her rant, what a drag, you're thinking something rude, don't you? Ino said suddenly with her eyes squinted. Her sudden words caught Shikamaru off guard, sweat trickled on his back. Woman truly is a fearsome creature despite things. Shikamaru kept his poker face and vehemently deny her accusation. No, I'm not. Really? Ino peered at Shikamaru with her squinted eyes and giving him the sensation that he was being x-rayed. I am. Shikamaru decisively said, trying his hardest to not get affected by her pressure. Anyway, so who's you interested in? As if the previous exchange never happened, Ino instantly changed the topic back to the original one. Shikamaru got irritated. He then spun his mind and searching for a woman he knew that was outside of the village, thinking that if she was far apart from him, his two best friend will stop bothering him about it. It's Tamari of the Sand. Oh, how wrong he was. Chaoji showed a mischievous smile, while Ino had a shit-eating grin on her face. Each somehow synchronized to formulate a plan of something that Shikamaru will regret to ever say something like that brashly soon. Oh, her, I approve. That's the only response Shikamaru got from Chaoji and Ino. Seeing they stopped teasing him, Shikamaru heaved a sigh of relief. Finally, they stopped bothering me about it. Little did he note Sune POV I am so miserable. I was so foolish why? Just why? Why did I even take the offer to become a Hokage? Now that I accepted it, I have to do these mountains of paperwork. Is it worth it? I can't help but weakly lean my back onto my seat, my hand massaging my temples in an attempt to give myself a little bit of comfort. I lift my gaze staring at the ceiling, avoiding the sight of these torches that are presented in front of me. Suned Sama, here's your tea there she is, my personal assistant and my disciple, Shizun. She is a serious little girl that is so stiff with things like rules and regulations, not that I hate it, but she won't even let me relax with my bottle of sake at all. Though she's been very helpful to me in many ways, and I hope she got herself the happiness she deserves. Thank you Shizun. Has anything urgent happened? I take the glass of tea that she served, and take a whiff of the fragrance that the tea exuded. It does help me relax. Nothing of high importance happened. But, there's a letter addressed to you, Tsunade Sama. It's addressed to you not as the Hokage, but as the granddaughter of Mito Yuzumaki. Oh, the last sentence uttered by Shizun, immediately got all of my attention and triggered my curiosity. Ever since the Second Shinobi War ended, there was never any mention of my grandmother's name. And more often than not, the name mentioned in the same sentence as I was my grandfather's name, and I as the last descendant of Senju. Not even once they mentioned my Yuzumaki heritage. I mean, come on where do you think my talent and proficiency with Fuenjutsu come from? It's not a secret that most of Senju's were muscle brain, and relied on gut feeling more than strategy. Yes, my genius grand uncle Toborama Senju included. He's genius, yes, but he's definitely a bad schemer and strategist. Plus, he's so narrow-minded person. So of course my talent stemmed from my esteemed grandmother's side. It's a no-brainer question. Where's the letter? Shizun presented me with an envelope, not an exquisite one, but looked neat and tidy. With a curious mind, I opened the envelope and read the content within. How long has it been since the death of your grandmother? Do you miss her? Well, it's been years since then. She is a strict but kind figure, and yeah, I miss her a lot. She is a great woman, a great teacher, a great leader, and a great seal master. She is a true Yuzumaki, but due to her alliance with Kanoha, she's wedded to the Senja clan. No one was unhappy at that time, no one. How can we be unhappy? She's wedded to the god of Shinobi after all. The letter continuously praises my grandmother and her achievement, the glory of the Yuzumaki clan, and the majesty of Yuzashiobuka. A smile cannot help but showed itself on my face. Yes, it was the great days of the past. But, have you ever wondered the true reason behind Yuzashio's fall? My gaze stopped at one line that makes me furrow my eyebrows. Wasn't that because four great villagers attacked them together, a four versus one scenario? Do you believe with a home ground advantage, Yuzashio cannot fend her enemies? She can, of course. That's if she was not betrayed by her trusted ally. Wait, something is not right and now, she's back for revenge. Hokage Sama we are under attack. An Anbu suddenly barged in, and a Immediately my gaze was attracted by the sight outside of my window. I won't ever forget the sight that greeted me right now. Unknown Shinobis flying in the air dropping clusters of explosives and carpet bombing the Kanoha village. The attack was so sudden, and were totally caught off guard. Things of the past came to my mind, and remembering the letter which I just got, I put two and two together. The Land of Sky and Jizashiogaka joined hand. Both powers that needed at least four villages to work together to put one down at a time in the past. Now back for revenge today. 
a high number of Kanoha's people, died not knowing what thing happened to them. Boom 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 in a hidden cell inside Kanoha. Shino-sama, we're tasked by the Yuzukage to free you from here. Please come with us. Two grey cloaked persons suddenly emerged from the wall, after a series of unknown symbols flashed on it. On both of their forehead area, a perfect circle with a swirl inside could be seen. The listless figure of an old man suddenly trembled, his eyes snapped open as if a great vigor went back to him. Has the time finally come? Yes, the time has come. In the span of one day, things take a drastic turn for Kenova and the shinobi world as a whole. Hail, Yazashio. A couple of hours before today was a quiet day in the Saratobi clan compound so far. The birds were chirping cheerfully, and the leaves swayed gently amidst the autumn soft breeze. In one of the secluded parts of the Saratobi clan compound, Hiruzen the former Hokage of Kanoha was seated on his rocking chair, blowing his tobacco pipe. How long has it been since I feel as relaxed as today? Finally, someone takes that responsibility away from me for good. Pa pa pa, sounds of footsteps echoing in the empty hallway, out of habit, Hiruzen scanned the people approaching with a few of his chakra pulses. Hiruzen Sama, your coffee he relaxed his guard. It was Hitomi, his grandniece from his daughter-in-law's side. Although she was not as talented as Kinoichi, she was quite a clever and amiable kid. So Hiruzen took her as his caretaker after his retirement. Come in. Hitomi slowly opened a sliding door, and placed a cup of coffee on the small table beside Hiruzen. Hiruzen asked her a few questions regarding her and her sister. After that, Hitomi excused herself. She's too quiet for her own good. He took a few sips of the coffee before leaned his back on the rocking chair once more. Not long after, Hiruzen fell asleep on his rocking chair. On another side of the compound, Hitomi was walking along the hallway and threw a slip of paper outside. The said paper was lit and exuded a yellow-colored smoke. It was quite conspicuous, but kids often did that kind of prank. So, only a few people actually take notice of the said smoke, let alone paid close attention to it. Hail, Yuzashio, Hitomi muttered under her breath with a fanatic gaze on her eyes, as she made her way out of the village. Quite a distance away from the Saratobi compound, on top of a building, a person's eyes lit as he saw a yellow-colored smoke was exuded from a certain place inside the Saratobi compound, through a scope. He took a deep breath to calm his nerves for a moment before he placed his right hand above his thigh, while his left hand made a tiger hand seal. Kai. An exquisite long steel barrel with a 3 cm width in diameter was taken out from a storage seal engraved on his thigh, it has a scope on top of it, and a squarish cheekpiece. All in all, it was looks like a weird shaped grey coloured sniper rifle. The said person placed something akin to a bullet inside the barrel, and took aim as he channeled his chakra into his weapon. Oh, the irony, the mighty professor, the second coming god of shinobi, killed by a mere bullet blade while he's asleep by a person with almost no chakra nonetheless. The person chuckled, a mad glint flashed in his eyes. With his civilian attire and his low chakra amount, no ambu paid him any mind. Thus he has many leverages to squander, and now laughing like a madman. Oh, who would think that the mighty ambus are so careless? Third Hokage-sama, this is for your betrayal. All hail, Yazashio. Bang a distinctive sound echoing for a while as if it was mocking the death of Hiruz and Saratobi. At the same time, the culprit placed his weapon back in the storage seal, and bland with the crowd, before made his way out of the village. Though a giggle kept escape from his mouth as he walked. Chaoji was on a date with Ino on the outskirts of Kanoha, while Shikamaru was suddenly called on an escorting mission issued by the Akamichi clan. Yes, Chaoji was conveniently issued a personal mission as the heir of the Akamichi clan, all in order to play the matchmaker between his best friend Shikamaru and his crush Tamari Dot. And coincidentally Tamari got the same mission. So currently Shikamaru and Tamari were on their way to the land of Bamboo. That was quite a distance away from both lands of fire and land of wind. Get laid, bro. Act as a gentleman would. Those were the words left behind by Chaji and Ino before the mission as Shikamaru stared at them with twitching eyes. Chaji and Ino were actually two or in a mission, a simple one actually. It was to help the people from a certain village to exterminate beasts from the surrounding. That threatened the villager. It was the same village that they visited as Team 10 and met a certain leech. That now has its part of consciousness inside Chaji. Though Chaoji purposefully chooses this mission, Mirasaki felt it was time for him to unseal his true body, and took Chaoji as his host, thus made him akin to a Jinchuriki. With Chaoji's unique trait, Mirasaki was sure that Chaoji would be able to convert all of his negative energy gradually into his own energy. Back to the mission, with their current prowess, Chaoji and Ino were sure that they would be able to clear the chakra beast on the forest outskirts in no time. After, Chaoji would be able to unseal Mirasaki's true body and use a few days to integrate with his newfound power. I hope nothing bad going to happen on this mission like before. Chaoji silently hoped as he tightened his grip on Ino's hand. Don't worry, we're going to be fine. Ino smiled as she softly squeezed Chaoji's hand. I hope so, Chaoji nodded silently. He sighed, his heart still filled with worry. On the far side of the land of water, the fourth Mizukage was laid on the ground lifelessly. Eight persons were seen around him, six of which wore a black colored cloak with red clouds pattern. This much is enough, right? One of the cloak people said, there were many piercings on him, 
and his eyes were bizarre with ripples patterns on them. Yes, with the three tail on our hand, we should be able to realize our goal faster. Thank you. Don't mention it, Ashina-san. I'm a Nuzumaki too. After all, I'm glad we can achieve world peace, along with the re-emergence of Yazashio village through the path I believe in, the path of pain. The cloaked person with the orange hair said as he gazed at the sky, that I promise you, already swore on my name that took after my late grandfather. I, Ashina Yuzumaki, will make Yuzashio great again, and enact a revenge on the world. Ashina said, on his hand he held a head-sized transparent crystal. On it could be seen the silhouette of the three-tailed chakra beast, Sambi, with its turtle-like figure and three tails on its behind wrapped with chains around its body. This all is inevitable, those who destroy should be prepared to be destroyed. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. No matter if the world went blind, no matter if the world is toothless. Through pain, all will understand. The orange-haired one clenched his hand tightly in front of his face. You're right, Nagato. You're right, everyone will understand that everything is inevitable. We are inevitable. Time has passed since the attack from the Sky Peoples, the term used by the majority of the peoples to address the attacker. Since they haven't been able to ascertain the real identity of the culprit besides few notions, because they did not leave any concrete evidence of their identity. In the three first days, Kinoha was busy counting their loss and salvaging things that could be salvaged. The homeless ones were taken to a shelter, the injured ones were taken to the emergency medic bays, and the dead ones were either buried or get cremated. Somehow, the means of communication to pull back the force that was on a mission were sabotaged and were unable to be used. Thus in the first week, many of Kinoha's shinobis that were out on the mission were clueless about the incident. It was only on the ninth day after Kinoha began to pull their force and properly recuperating their own village system as a whole. Chaoji and his companion went back to the village and arrived on the third week after the incident while Shikamaru arrived two days earlier than him. Their face was riddled with frustration and regret, they wished they were there at the time. After, the news spread by the wind and rain, along with the grief of the ones left by the deceased. Surprisingly, Kanoha was not the only object of the people's talk. Kanoha village was raised to the ground by an unknown force, the death rate of the civilian was high. Hot news! Here is in Saratobi. The third Hokage of Kanoha was found dead. The reason for his death was still under investigation. Soon a village was attacked by a terrorist organization whom they claimed as the Akatsuki organization at the inauguration of the fifth Kezukage. Hot news! After the death of the third Hokage, now the leader of Kiri village, the fourth Mizukage was found dead. Alert! The three-tailed beast Biju of the Kiri village was nowhere to be found. Kiri village blamed Iowa village for this incident. In the first three months, news of tragedies continuously rang on all land. Then after the first three months passed, suddenly there was not any continuation of the terror for nine full months. Just like the calm before the storm, the land became quiet, too quiet to be exact, as civilians and shinobis alike were haunted by fear. What if we're next? Then, as if the world played jokes on them, their fear proved true after nine months of silence, another series of news spread suddenly like a tidal wave. A man in the prime of his youth was seen inside a serene pavilion, his eyes were focused as his hand holding a riding brush and stroking the paper scroll before him. His long red-colored hair was loose on his back, just like a menacing crimson waterfall, that reflecting the dusk sky. Pa 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 hum. Hearing the sound of footsteps nearing him, the youth was out of his focus. What are you doing Ashina-san? Hearing his name was called, the red-haired youth turned his head to face the one who called him. Oh, it's you Nagato. I wrote a poem here. Come here and hear me recite it. Tell me what do you think about it? Ashina smiled as he urged Nagato to sat beside him. Listen well, okay? Ashina then inhaled a deep breath, his eyes gazed afar. It's not the moment that it happens. It's the moment right before. It's not the rain or crashing thunder. It's the calm before the storm, his hand raised as if trying to reach the sky then slowly moved as if he tried to stroke the clouds. It's that feeling that you get as the sky begins to cry. It's just you, the wind and rain, and you swear that you could fly, his gaze softened gazing at the horizon, and just like a man who sees his lover after a long time, Ashina's smile bloomed like never before. The stormy clouds demand attention, and the wind can't be ignored. It's the love of building tension, just before the violent storm. He turned his view to Nagato. His smile changed into a teasing grin, while his finger pointed at Nagato, before he opened his arm widely, just like a person who was ready to embrace the vast heaven. And if you felt like this before, or if it's all that you dream of, you'll know I'm not talking of rain, but that I'm talking about love one. How is it? Ishina proudly asked Nagato, waiting for his reaction to the poem he recites. Nagato nodded to acknowledge Ishina's talent in writing poems. It's good, but it lacks some feeling the feeling of pain. Hearing Nagato's response, Ashina's eyes twitched. What's with your obsession toward pain? Are you a sadist or masochist? Maybe both. Ashina sighed, he folded the paper scroll and kept it inside his storage seal. Anyway, get ready for another round of actions. Ah, and don't forget to always keep an eye on the masked man in your organization, okay? I got a kind of uncomfortable feeling from him. Nagato closed his eyes, his vision stretched to one of his puppets inside the Akatsuki base. Don't worry, he's still inside the base. Ishina nodded his head, he slowly walked past Nagato and patted him on his shoulder. Do you know why I add the last sentence to the poem? You mean the love part? Yes. 
That one. Ishina continuing his walk with the sunset on the horizon as his background. Do you know, Nagato the most painful thing in this world is caused by the most beautiful thing, and that is love. Love can make you feel happy more than the others. But love is also able to make you feel hurt. Ashina stopped his step, his vision lowered as he glared at his clenched fist. So... Hurt that it might make you wish you can die to escape the pain. But, there's something you need to do before you'll be able to do so. Nagato was silent. No words were needed because he too was able to understand what Ashina meant. He needed to realize his late friend's wish to make a world without a war, and to achieve that dream, Nagato chose the path of supremacy and power. He will make the world understand his ideal, through the thing he went through and understand the most the pain. Big news. I was Jinchiriki Roshi was almost got killed by Kakuzu, a missing nin from Takigika, along with his partner Haiden, a missing nin from Yugika which they both claim to be part of the Akatsuki organization. The daimyo of the Land of Water appointed Manjetsu Hoshigaki as the new Mizukage for the Kiri village. The Jinchiriki of the Eight-Tailed Beast Killer B of Kumo Village was attacked by members of the Akatsuki organization. Killer B was gravely injured while his assailants were captured by the Rakage. Alert! Kumo Village was attacked by the Akatsuki, Killer B's assailants escaped their prison and brought Merham along their path. The Rakage placed an astronomical bounty on their head. Iowa Village was raised to the ground by a member of the Akatsuki organization, that goes by the name Pain. Another year passed just like that, the peaceful days were back. In Kanoha, though most people were still felt fear, as time passed, slowly they came to terms with their current state, and they trying to live their life as normal. The law and order in the Kanoha were restored, the economy was once again flourishing, and happy smiles were adorned people's faces. Everything was possible because the noble clans of Kanoha lend a great amount of help in all sectors. With the Achiha was only left with one member, the Akamichi, the Aburam, and the Hayuga clan were the clans with the most contribution to the restoration of the village. Though, the Achiha was not spared as a part of their land was taken by the village to build another facility for its resident. Meanwhile, in a part of the village where one of the noble clans of Kanoha village resides, a rotund cocoon could be seen resided on a boulder between two bamboo trees, on a branch of a tree nearby, a small bird perched and chirped peacefully. A bit far to the east, inside a shack made of the same bamboo as its surrounding, two men were seated. And between them, a chessboard was placed with various pieces on it. Check. One of them moved the black bishop piece. He grinned confidently. This time, you're going to lose. With an impassive glance, the other one with the pineapple-like hair moved his white piece to block the black bishop's track. Oh, really? Three moves later, checkmate. The one with the pineapple-like hair declared his win. You're still not good enough if you want to beat me, Wuhai-san. Wuhai, still downtrodden because of his umpteenth loss, squatted on the corner while drawing a circle on the floor. Why do I always lose to you in this kind of game, Shikamaru? I'm just that good. Shikamaru leaned his back on the bamboo wall. He lifted his gaze and gazed at the fleeting cloud outside. How times fly, you guys still going at it. It's almost time for lunch. I bring these bentos for you. A woman in her early teens went inside the shack. On her hand, there were boxes of food filled with various kinds of delicacy. Her eyes darted around, not finding what she intended to find. Her gaze fell onto Shikamaru and Wuhai. By the way, is Chaoji still on it? Hum, they both nodded at the same time. Each time Ino came to visit, she always asked the same question for the past three months, and the answers were identical. The brat is lucky. I don't know how he achieved it, but he's able to garner natural energy and refine it inside his body. Making his body literally a nature energy tank, I'd kill for something like that. Woolen's face was full of longing as he said that. I don't know which one is creepier, your words or the face you make right now. Eno sighed as she shook her head. But to think the things that wrapped him until he looks like a cocoon are natural energies. I wonder how does he achieve that. And he hasn't awake since he's at it three months ago. Shikamaru shrugged his shoulder while wondering. Eno pouted. Her mood was never good, since Chaoji turned into a cocoon-like thing. Enough of that. Here, let's eat first. Ninpu. Cage Shikushu won amidst the dense bamboo forest, Shikamaru moves swiftly like a blurry phantom. One of his hands was clutching a thin long sword made of chakra steel. While he used the other to make a single hand horse seal in front of his chest, while he dodged the flurry of attacks launched against him. Immediately after, shadows congregated behind his back, forming a set of tentacles that moved fast and helping him to defend himself from the attacks. You're already this good. Huh, you're really frightening if you seriously put your mind into something, in front of Shikamaru was a masked figure, with one of his eyes covered by his tilted headband, Kakashi. He swung his tanto like a predator, hunting its prey swift and deadly comma, yet each of his swings was exuding a charm unique to his own. But, you're still thinking too much in a battle, swish with precise timing. Kakashi changed the course of his tanto's swing, to hit Shikamaru's weapon right on the base of his blade. Though Shikamaru managed to block his attack, Kakashi swiftly twisted his hips inward, and with the same hand that he used his tanto, he elbowed Shikamaru's jaw, followed by a leg sweep, and a solid blow to his solar plexus. And you're still not ruthless enough. Poof, I've improved Kakashi-san. Shikamaru's figure vanished into a poof of smoke, and another Shikamaru appeared on top of Kakashi, already in motion to swing his sword downward. Shikamaru smirked, he was glad that he was finally able to get a score against Kakashi. Oh! 
Are you? Kakashi's figure blurred. Then Shikamaru suddenly felt as if another weight added to him. Out of nowhere, Kakashi appeared on top of Shikamaru with his proud sacred book in one hand, and Tanto in the other. Ak, got you instead of being worried, Shikamaru internally rejoiced that his prediction was spot on. Saku, too Shikamaru exclaimed and soon after tens of tentacles made out shadows ripped out at almost the same time, heading straight for Kakashi. As the countless tentacles went after him, Kakashi immediately whipped out his Tanto. He then stomped one tentacle hard and retreated. Due to the special chakra that Kakashi imbued to the Tanto, despite the tentacles possessing extraordinary flexibility and structure, it was not hard for Kakashi to cleanly cut the shadow tentacles in a short period of time. Shikamaru was hunched on the ground and struggled to control tens of tentacles to attack Kakashi. The tentacles which were initially about 2 meters long, suddenly extended to dozens of meters and continued growing. How long can the tentacles actually extend to? Kakashi thought to himself in bewilderment as he continued continued to dodge and slash the tentacles near him. Intrigued, Kakashi slowly increased their distance to measure Shikamaru's control. Finally, the tentacles stopped growing at 48 meters. Feeling that he'd seen enough of Shikamaru's ability, Kakashi nodded. This technique really surprised me a bit. If you're able to control them more, it could be a good addition to your arsenal. Kakashi reached his headband and slightly lifted it, revealing his Sharingan for the world to see. Now, it's time to get serious. Inside a serene bamboo forest, there was a shallow pit that formed recently. Inside the said pit, Shikamaru could be seen buried up to his waist. While his lower body part was buried, his upper body was slightly burnt, and there were slash marks in many places. You're indeed already improved by leaps and bounds beside the pit. Kakashi was seated under the tree. His back leaned on the tree bark, and his clothes were drenched with sweat. You almost got me with that last move, but I still lost. Shikamaru said in frustration, Now I'm stuck, can't you free me first? I need rest and some healing. Wait, let me recover some chakra first. Kakashi smiled wryly under his mask. In the last few years since he picked his late father's teaching once again, he felt that he finally regained his worth to be called a genius shinobi. His overall ability simply cannot be compared to the previous him, though a flaw remains unable to be fixed in the meantime. Kakashi insisted on retaining a Bido Sharingan even though it more acts as a burden than a boon. As he's not a Rachiha, the Sharingan continuously saps a sizable amount of his chakra. Clap 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 whoa, you're so amazing Kakashi sensei. A sudden series of claps and shouts stole their attention and made them alert. Between bamboo trees two figures emerged. One of them was waving his hand, stars of admiration could be seen in his eyes. He had spiky blonde hair and three pairs of whiskers on his cheek. You're awesome too, Shikamaru. You can make Kakashi sensei exhausted like that. The blonde one gave a thumb up to Shikamaru. In response, Shikamaru gave an annoyed glare. Shut up, Naruto. Next time, he's the one that's going to lose. Though it's troublesome to try Shikamaru's side. Yo, Kakashi. It seems that you got your ass handed to you, eh? A spiky white-haired man chuckled as he walked toward Kakashi. Jiraiya-sama, please don't mock me. How long has it been since you got spent in a spa like this? Jiraiya's eyebrows wriggled, and a teasing smile emerged on his face. Probably since the first that test. I've got to rest a few days because all parts of my body were sore. That person then barged into the hospital to ask me which ones that beat me up. She thought that I've been bullied. Kakashi chuckled as he reminiscing his past, while he took a glance at Naruto. Jiraiya understood. What Kakashi meant was the special ambu test for him. At that time, Kakashi was just a kid, yet his opponents were at least a full-pledged chunin. Moreover, none of his opponents underestimated him because none were dared to do so. Why? Simple. Because they're told so by both the Sandame Hokage and Danzo. Though what followed was the Red Hot Habanero, beat the Embus Examiner black and blue, while the said person was not allowed to fight back by the Hokage. Let me fix you up, kid. Jiraiya approached Shikamaru, then released him and healed his outer wound with a simple Iijutsu. There you are all good now. Thank you, Jiraiya-sama. Shikamaru bowed slightly to thank him. No problem, no problem. Jiraiya shrugged his shoulder to brush Shikamaru's gratitude. By the way, Shikamaru, is it? I have a favor to ask. Please do tell, Jiraiya-sama. Um, can I observe that kid, Chaji, from up close? Jiraiya hesitated slightly as he asked. I feel like maybe I can get a breakthrough in my sage technique if I can observe him closely. I'm sorry, you should ask his father in that case. This whole bamboo forest is the Akamichi clan's property, and it's out of my ability to give you permission for that. Shikamaru scratched his head as he uttered his thought. Fair enough, Jiraiya did not push further after that. I'll talk to the clan's head then. It'll be easier to ask if I give Chaozer my latest masterpiece. Yosh. It's decided. Jiraiya smirked as the Akamichi clan's head is a fan of most of his masterpiece. Orochimaru-sama. I have something to report that might garner your interest. Inside an underground lab somewhere in the Land of Fire, Kabuto kneeled behind Orochimaru who was still doing his thing. And what it is, your previous target, Akamichi Chaji, had suddenly gotten himself covered by something unknown in a cocoon-like state since around three months ago, and there hasn't been any change since then. Hearing Kabuto's report, Orochimaru's eyes lit up. Huthet's really intrigued me, his long tongue licked his lips lustfully. Curious that makes me curious. 
Orochimaru turned his body facing Kabuto, revealing his new appearance that he got ever since he took Kimamaru's body. How confident are you to bring him to me? Less than 20% Kabuto was silent for a few seconds before he continued. Orochimaru-sama, your fellow Sanin, Jureya-sama, is currently there too. In addition, there are several Jonin ranked ambus that constantly guard the periphery of the area. Then I'll have to do this by myself quote as if he got enlightenment, Orochimaru grinned and his eyes squinted. Should I accept their offer and cooperate together? Orochimaru walked toward Kabuto, then patted his shoulder, yes, I should. My current goal is that Akamichi boy, they can get achieve their goal all they want. Lucky for me, our interest this time is in line with them. It's decided then. We'll work with Akatsuki this one time. Tell them we agree to do Operation Pain exclamation point charges POV. How many days have been passed? I've stopped counting ever since I missed my 10th dinner. It's not like I was starving or something. But, my tongue misses the tender taste of Ichiraku Raymond, the softness of Akamichi's beef yakiniku, the business district's fluffy dango oh gosh. I miss everything I even miss Guy San's youthful antique, not to mention Eno's irreplaceable hug. Coupled with her already grown juicy milky heaven he, that's on my top two list of things I miss the most. Don't even ask what the number one is, of course, it's pizza. Why do you think I popularized it in the first place? Yes, it's for the money. You're smart. After all, which imbecile hates pizza? And which idiot doesn't want easy money? Though I didn't exactly know what happened to me. I was always feel refreshed for every passing second. I didn't feel sleepy, didn't get hungry, nor did I feel anything uncomfortable from my body transforming. I was wondering whether I would be able to get fat again after this transformation. 3 what? A man can dream all he wants. Though the few things I can confirm were. 1. My body rapidly transforming from the inside out too. Apparently I can feel that my affinity towards some elements boosted 3. I was, I still am, and will always be forever handsome. I knew it, my parents from both lives can confirm that. What? Jealous. Oh, what is this? I can feel my body normally now. It seems like the transformation is already done. Let's stretch a bit. I can't wait for this thing to finish. Not long after, the cocoon was gone and absorbed into my body. I can't wait to meet everyone again. Where are you guys? Oh, wait why does everyone laid on the ground? Abu why why are those buildings ruined? I can't help to comb the place with my eyes to try to ease my foreboding feeling. Is this really Kanoha? What happened? Is that Asuma Sensei? Oh, you've awakened. That voice it can't be he. Long time no see Akamichi boy, Orochimaru. That morning, the sky was clear as usual. The birds chirped happily. The breeze blew softly, and the warm light of the sun shone brightly. Amidst the lush bamboo trees, four figures two humans and two small frogs, could be seen meditating peacefully beside a dimly glowing cocoon. On their face, you could occasionally saw a similar pattern that resembles a kabuki actor's makeup. A bit far from that location, in the same forest three figures could also be seen. One of them swung his wooden sword with weights attached to his limbs. The other one sat in a lotus position, with a white-colored snake slithered slowly on her body while the last one was stood on the side leaned on a boulder watching the other two, while he lit up a cigarette. Meanwhile, on the other location outside the bamboo forest two figures walk slowly entering it. Just remember, Kabuto, our priority is to take the cocoon, and that Jinchuriki boy, then will escape as soon as possible. That one called Pain, will commence his attack in half an hour at most, so we have to make it quick. Orochimaru appeared different from how he usually looks. Though his skin was pale as before, he now has vivid green eyes, angular facial features, two scarlet dots on his forehead, which all the members of the now extinct Kigaya clan possessed, and shoulder-length white hair. Yes, Orochimaru-sama. With that, they commenced their plan. At least that was what they thought. There were things that out of their calculation, which the first one was that the two little frogs were able to sense his presence, not long after they took a step into that forest, because they're in a very sensitive state after bath in natural energy. Shima one of the two little frogs whispered with his eyes still closed. In response, the other frog called Shima, nodded her head slowly and opened her eyes. Yeah, it's that snake boy. These two frogs were often summoned by Jiraiya, while he's fighting alongside Orochimaru in the past, so they're familiar with his presence. Hence, they told Orochimaru's arrival to their little student, Jiraiya. What is his objective this time? Could it be? Jiraiya then made two clones to immediately inform the Hokage and Team 10 that were inside the forest. Immediately, Jiraiya along with Fukusaku and Shima dashed toward Orochimaru's direction to intercept him. The battle broke out with Jiraiya's side seemingly in a continuous advantage. In spite that, Orochimaru never loses his wit, nor does he let a clean blow land on him. You look different, huh? Have you gotten tired of your sassy look? Jiraiya mocked his old friend as they exchanged blows after blows. And you look as ugly as always Orochimaru smirked, not losing in any way in both battles of fist and words. Another thing that they didn't know was a figure silently watching them in the air. The light seemed bent avoiding him as his figure cannot be seen with naked eyes. His illusory figure was draped in a black cloak with red-colored cloud patterns all over it, and a swirling mask covered his face. Hum. 
The fight goes on, and they continuously went into a stalemate as both Jiraiya and Orochimaru were reluctant to lay their ace on the table. Meanwhile, Naruto was confronted by Kabuto, and he fell into a disadvantaged situation. His training wasn't finished yet, and his understanding of natural energy was still all over the place, and thus, let's not mention him entering the sage mode. Fortunately for Naruto, Shikamaru and Asuma quickly came to lend him a hand, which quickly let them gain the higher ground. While Ino went to the nearest clan, which is the Akimichis, as fast as she can to request aid, Orochimaru then summoned his contractor beast, Manda, followed by Jiraiya summoned Gamabunta. That made the fight escalated to another level of destruction. On the far horizon, groups of Kanoha Shinobis were seen cautiously observing the fight. They were worried that they'll unnecessarily interfere, and instead of helping, they'll hinder the frog Sanin. All team, spread and surround the perimeter area. Secure the villager and take them to safety, all medics on standby. As a person arrived, she began to shout a series of commands. She's Tsune, the current Hokage of the Kanoha village, and the granddaughter of the god of Shinobi. Orochimaru, what are you doing? Tsune gritted her teeth in frustration, she was pissed and on the verge of exploding in fury. She was itching to jump in and bash the airy grin on that Pedamaru. Alas, she was aware of her current position, and had the village safety in mind as the main priority. Fuck that snake. Tsunade sama the civilians are already on their way being escorted to the shelter. Kakashi appeared as he kneels and reported. Alright, the barrier teams get ready. Hurry the fuck up. The time is up. A cloaked figure suddenly appeared as if he'd materialized out of thin air. It seems you failed, Orochimaru. Orochimaru clicked his tongue, his expression clearly depicted his annoyance. I haven't included the full Jiraiya's sudden power growth in my calculation. Maybe somehow it's connected with that cocoon. Though that makes it more alluring the dangerous glint in Orochimaru's eyes raised up by a notch, as he glanced at the now oddly fine cocoon, surrounded by battle-torn scenery. Hey, fine specimen indeed. Yeah, yeah. That just means either you're stupid or you're weak, maybe both. The swole masked person shrugged while spoke in an uncaring manner. Now, it's your turn the space beside him swirled. Then six persons appeared. They wore the black cloak with the same red cloud patterns as the swole masked person. What was your favorite phrase again? Ah uh, yes, let them know pain. The swole masked person eyed the six newcomers as he talked in a half-serious tone. One of the six person floats and faced when Naruto and the others fight against Kabuto. He raised his hand while still ignoring the swole masked person. Shinra Tensei, whom um, Naruto and Shikamaru were caught off guard, while Asuma and Kabuto with their honed instincts, warned them barely able to shield themselves with an earth wall technique to soften the impact. The cocoon was too caught in the aftermath, and blasted back a few meters to where Jiraiya and Orochimaru clashed, which made them cease their fight for a while. Not long after, it cracked and a figure emerged from inside. At the same time, several attacks were also launched by the Akatsuki. The target was all the big five villages, plus Takigaka. The main objectives were of course the Tail Beasts. The sudden attack caught the villagers off guard, which some of them can't even cope with the attack because of both the surprise factor and the scale of the attack that they used. Kumo was attacked by Itachi and Kisum. They lost their two tails Jinchuriki and a portion of their force. Itachi and Kisum, who suffered a grave wound inflicted by A while Itachi confronting B, had to retreat in an attempt to half-finish their mission. Get back here sooner was attacked by Sasori and Dadara. This time, no rescue operation was launched by their allied village. They almost lost their Kazakij which is their Jinchuriki, but he's able to kill both of the assailants. Though Suna lost a big portion of their village because of both Dadara's attack and the one tail rampaging, their immense loss including the Holy Grandma Chiyo, when they tried to placate then reseal the one tail. While Tamari was in a grave condition as she was the one who tried to hold the one tail in place, along with Kenkuro and the special puppet squad. WH what have I done? Iowa wasn't a Dak per se. They didn't lose their other shinobi. But, their four tails Jinchuriki was gone as he was taken by Haiden and Kakuzu, when he was busy adventuring outside of his village. Though that Tsusukiji's building had a big hole on it, as the result of a Tsusukiji himself blow his top when he heard the news. God damn it. Kiri was the simplest of all. The new Mizukic has gone like smoke without any ripples. Once again, they had to re-elect their leader before they plunge into chaos. When all this chaos and Taki couldn't even put up a fight, the Seven Tails Jinchuriki choose to surrender in exchange for the village's life, when Conan reigned the whole village with a paper bomb tag. The Taki village's so-called village leader, heaved a sigh of relief that his life was saved, instead of grieving for the village's loss. All is good as long as I'm safe with this, the Akatsuki confirmed to have six out of nine tail beasts. All that left was the one tail of Suna the Nine Tail of Kanoha, and the Eight Tail of Kumo. He, long time no see, Akimichi Boy Orochimaru. His stupefied face could be seen on Chaoji. He was surprised that the Snake Man was here as the first one to welcome him, along with the side of destruction. No, you look different. But, you're him. Chaoji growled inside, am I late? What happened when I was wrapped in that cocoon? Are you the one who done all these? Chaoji stared at Orochimaru with a gaze that promised a disaster. If his answer was not to Chaoji's liking, I want to say yes. But, unfortunately, no. Orochimaru smiled faintly as if he understands what was in Chaoji's mind, his head tilted slightly to the right. If you're wondering who, then your answer lies there. Following the direction where Orochimaru was pointing, 
Chao Ji caught sight of a group of six white cloaked persons. On each of their cloak was adorned with red colored cloud patterns, and they all have some black colored piercings on their body. Somehow, the swarmest person was nowhere to be found. Enough of them, you should focus your attention on me. Akimichi Boyarochimaru talked with a demanding tone. I have an offer for you. No, don't listen to him. Jiraiya immediately shouted, trying to prevent his former teammate to persuade Chaji. He knew that Orochimaru was as good as his sensei in influencing people. On the verge of snapping out, Chaji gritted his teeth and clenched his fist trying his best to rein his emotions in. If you are willing to follow me, then I can fulfill all of your desires. How's that? Orochimaru stepped up and gave him a smile, preparing to use anything to sway him and ignore Jiraiya. You said that you can fulfill any of my desires. Chaoji's eyes narrowed as he gazed deep into Orochimaru's eyes. No Jiraiya was panicked. He can't let Chaoji get tempted by this snake. He's just bluffing. Of course I can. Seeing that there's an effect, Orochimaru was overjoyed and chuckled proudly. Anything. Immortality. Strength. I can give you that. Orochimaru was over the moon. The fish has taken the bait. Come with me. Chaoji gritted his teeth as he took a deep breath. Then, I want the sky to no longer cloud my eyes. I want the land to no longer bury my heart. I want the ocean to no longer drown my dream. I want everyone living to understand my will. For the god and the devil to disappear. I want heaven and earth to rotate for me. After he finished his final sentence, Chaoji floated and waved his fist as it enlarged. He slammed it on the ground and roared with grandeur. Can you give them to me? If you could, then I'll follow you. But can you? The quotes made all that herd and experience a shortness of breath. They shiver in wonder. Just what does that mean? They don't understand most of it. But it sounds kind of bold and awesome. Orochimaru was agape. What does that even mean? Was he drunk or something? Inside, Chaoji was cringed by his own words. Too much adrenaline, too much cringe, forget it. Give me tacos, and we're all good. Chaoji coughed to hide his embarrassment. His mental state was seemingly in an unstable state. Excuse me. What? Orochimaru felt stupid. He felt that he can't follow Chaoji's line of thinking. Oh, you don't know tacos. Orochimaru felt that maybe there's no perfect specimen, as this one has also had a defect which is his brain. Poof, Chaoji's figure suddenly disappeared in a puff of smoke, and immediately after the sky went dark, as if something huge was covering the sunlight. Speed and wait. It was Chaoji who already turned into a humongous figure after using the trademark technique of the Akamichi clan. Chaoji was somersaulting in the air, and his giant foot descended onto where the six black cloaked figures stood. You insane Mothifica, you're destroying my clan's forest. Speed and wait. Chaoji used the substitution technique and the enlargement technique immediately after. He was somersaulting in the air and intend to slam his foot to the ground to turn his enemies into meat pulps. Bubenbiker. While he's at it, Chaoji channels his nature energy to enhance his attack. After being baptized by nature energy and went through a metamorphosis, he was very sensitive to all kinds of energies. He sensed that those six figures carried a dangerous amount of chakras, and the shocking part was their chakras were all interconnected and branched somewhere like puppet string. Buzz off. And let me have a big buffet. Boom the ground was caved in creating a foot-shaped hole. Meanwhile, two of the six figures weren't able to evade Chaoji's stomp. It's super effective. One of the six hastily makes hand seals and summons several abomination giant-sized beasts. A chameleon, a three-headed dog, a giant bird, and a ball-like creature. All of which began to assault him relentlessly. Though Chaoji was able to block a few of their feral attacks, some of the attacks went through his defense, and were able to inflict damage, albeit small to him. Meanwhile, another of the six cupped his hand and summoned a large head that sprouts out of the ground, surrounded by purple flames. The summoned head ingested the two damaged bodies with its tendril-like arms into its mouth. Then, after some time, the two destroyed bodies emerged from its mouth, completely rejuvenated. What in the name of stake is that? Chao Ji who was witnessed the head's ability felt intrigued and at the same time felt annoyed. This not gonna be an easy fight. Chaoji promptly made a hand seal, then slammed his hand to the ground. Kuchinus no Jutsu. He summoned his own beast to fight these beasts. Long time no see, Akamichi boy. How have you been? Along with a poof of thick smoke, a merry greeting could be heard from inside it. Now is not the time for chit chat, Wuhai san. Chaoji looked serious, his eyes signaled Wuhai to observe his surrounding. And as soon as he did, Wuhai's pupils got dilapidated. No way, hey, are you pranking me, Akamichi boy? Wuhai's jaw was agape, and he took a step behind. What's up with that? With a trembling hand, Wuhai pointed at the six pain puppets. What's wrong? Chaoji got intrigued with his contracted summon excessive reaction. What's so special about those eyes? As they having their conversation, a boar-like creature rushed towards them, which made them snap out of their own little world. With a twist of his waist, Chaoji sent the said creature flew horizontally with a high kick. Those are eyes of the Sage of Six Baths. So, you tell me, how special are those eyes? After snapping out of his reverie, Wu Hai immediately took a battle-ready stance. Well, fight first, talk later. Chaoji has no idea what was Wu Hai talked about, so he opted to throw those to the back of his mind. Meanwhile, Wu Hai who was half knowing about what those eyes represent, heightened his vigilance to the utmost. Doton, Ganchuso, won one of the six pain made a series of hand seals, and slammed his hand to the ground. After that, rock pillars shot from the ground aimed at Chaoji and the others. Not wanting to waste his chakra, Chaoji chooses to dodge instead of blocking the attacks. In return, he shot a technique of his own. Woke Katen, Goku Mikyaku. 
Too immediately, a literal sea of flames that covers a wide range was summoned and surged towards the direction of the Six Bane. Surprisingly, one of the Six Bane stepped up instead of dodging or blocking the flame using another ninjutsu. He reached his hand as if waiting for the sea of flames to engulf him, when suddenly, Fujutsu Kaiyan exclamation point quote 3 charging POV. What the heck? That's a flame you know, a real flame. It's supposed to incarcerate him. But, no instead of burning them, it has suddenly gone like a Raymond's broth slurp directly from the bowl. Get it? It's clean. Is he even a human? Do you need a drink? I gazed at him with a confused mind, but of course, my hand moved to weave a series of hand seals. Suetan, Mizuboso. For with a thought, I summoned a literal sea of water rushing to my opponents. Anticipating their reaction, I heightened my senses and rushed forward along with Wu Hai. And as expected, that one figure absorbed my attack clean. Wu Hai, does he do what I'm thinking? Yup, he's absorbing the chakra in your technique. He nodded to affirm my question, so we picked up our speed and opted to engage them into Jutsu instead. Though it's possible that only one out of six that able to absorb the chakras, we can't afford the risk to try yet. As we rushed towards them, they launched their own techniques. One erected a rock wall, while the others launched various fire and wind element techniques. As we attempt to play it safe, we took a step back to dodge their attacks. We tried several more times which things resulted in similar ways as before. This made us able to pull a likely conclusion. They're not confident in their tajutsu. All my eyes focused on the point which their chakras entwined together and branched somewhere else. Or, they're akin to puppets, and their puppeteer is not confident enough to control them in a high-intensity battle. It seems like we need to take a risk, then catch a bunch in no jutsu. I summon five shadow clones, each rush to five different targets, while I target the one who summoned the weird head that was able to heal them, and Wu Hai engage their summoned creatures. I glanced at the far side of the forest, Jigaya Sama engaged in battle with that Orochimaru. And even further, faint figures of small troops situated behind a barrier could be seen which I assume they're the Ambus and the Barrier Squads. Jiraiya Sama looked like he fell in a disadvantageous situation as he was barraged by bones. Whatever, I have my own battle to win. With that, we pressured those six figures that I faintly heard that he said his name is Pain. A weird name, I know. But who am I to judge? His parent must have hated him to name him such. It may look like I slowly gained an upper hand in this battle. That was what I feel too. Until Shinra Tensei. One of my clones was suddenly obliterated by the one with spiky orange head one. The heck? He's way more dangerous than I thought. I glanced at the half-destroyed forest around me. My heart feels a bit sour. I shrug that feeling away. I can't afford to hold back any longer. It's my first time using it in battle. But Murasaki and Wilhai have told me several things about it. And gave a bit of guidance, although they can't do it themselves. Moreover, I estimated that I only have up to 10 to 12 minutes with my current control. Here goes all or nothing. Sage mode. The countdown begins. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.